up? Good God, you're coming through loud. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm trying to get fired up because I don't really want to be here tonight. What's going on with that brain of yours, man? How come? Well, I'm just not in the groove, bro. You got to get me in the groove. I feel well, like I, I feel yeah. like I blew my load last week. With what? Just overwhelming with those Nikos, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, intense show, man. Darius King in the house, man. Look at everybody. Everybody's here, man. The Adagram, Kale Fishing, the, Alex. Yeah, what? What the peeps don't know is, is? we shut the show off at ten thirty last week Thursday. I know, right? But we did not get off until 2.30 in the morning. It was the show after the show. <laughs> the yeah. most epic after show ever. And I was down in Florida doing that, wasn't I? Were you? Oh, yeah, that's right. Eating pasta and steak and shrimp. Yeah, man. People got annoyed at me for doing that. Was I? Yeah, I guess I was. <laughs> Seems like another another life, man. Mm. I like my, my water bottle shaping up the real shot. Small mouth crush Wisco. Yeah. You representing. How about, how about the bass lab? What's on the other side? Dr. Krakenstein. <laughs> that turned out great, dude. Goody Wolf knocked it out of the park again, man. I know. Always want, I was I'm so excited about this one. I've wanted to do that one for a long time, even more than <laughs> Bass Lab. Anyway, there you go, man. But yeah, that was an epic after show, and it went late. That it guy did. can talk. Damn. Wow. Smart. Dude, smart. Very smart. Good Dang. businessman. Definitely, you know, spent how many years in Japan? That was crazy. 20. Wrote a book on business consulting in Japan. And he consultant. Loves, he loves yeah. planting trees, dude. He was the Johnny Appleseed of his youth. Crazy. Yeah. He planted Saving trees. the bluebirds, the uh, blue jays. No, no, Bluebirds. You had it right the first no, time. No, it was all Blue Jays. No way it was Bluebirds. Eric, all you got to do is build a Bluebird house and they will come. No, it was want, Blue Jays. How much, he was how much, was, how much you want to bet? Eric? How much you want to bet? Let's just settle it. Just uh, okay. $1,000. Um, I'm coming in heavy. I'm not going to take your money. I, I want to do something different. Okay. 10 of no, your. Ten, I want to take ten, your money. 10 max cent bags. Okay. Ten bags of Max Scent, flatworms. Okay. Yep. It's bluebirds. I'm sorry. No, it's, I... <laughs> it's blue jays. He's saving okay. the blue jays. Okay. Okay. It's bluebird. Alex. But anyway. Al I win. I win. Let me bring Alex in. I win. Alex. I think, <laughs> Travis, I think you need to send Eric some flatworms. <laughs> yep. It no, it's blue, blue jays. <laughs> No. See, we didn't tape this. We didn't tape this section. No, but all we have to do is yeah. ask him because he's still alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely bluebirds. All right, Alex. Bluebirds. See you later. He's wrong <laughs> too. Okay. He's like trying it. to save the blue jays. Okay, so let's just move on. Ten flatworms. The bets on. We got a killer show tonight. I don't know how you topped last week's show, but we're gonna try. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to read the comments. If people give me some love here on everybody saying it's bluebirds, that makes the most sense. <laughs> Eric's bluebird makes the most sense, but the dude was saving blue jays, period. So, <laughs> anyways, again, everybody, last week, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, we certainly helped promote the brand for, for uh, Nico Bates. Uh, they did a great job. We're going to be starting our live shows on Mondays. So yeah. actually next week, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to be down uh, messing around down in Tennessee. And, and so it's just kind of time for that transition. Our next live show will be Monday, starting on Mondays at eight o'clock. So the next Monday show is going to be March 22nd. And Mike Murphy, otherwise known as Cuda, who's in the chat room tonight, Cuda. will be hanging out with us that night. Oh yeah, man. Uh, he's couple a, he's a he's a good dude, man. I'm stoked. I, I gotta get off my chest. I've been having a pretty great eighty four. Thanks for the super chat. I've been having a pretty tough uh, week dealing with YouTube. Actually, what happened? Well, 
my videos are not people are not getting notific notifications and uh my my last video should have went viral literally i i i did a lot to prepare for it it's the perfect the tags everything's there i don't even have a thousand views and it's thursday and i uploaded that on monday evening what was your last video uh it was about kids and fishing and my and introducing my son to bass fishing and i'm hearing a lot of people are getting well, I mean, no notifications it's, oh, it's an gotcha. epic video. The dude's crushing the four and a half pound smallmouth. The video starts with this two and a half year old just wrecking him in 50 feet of water like he's a pro. And then it just goes on and on. It gets better and better. And I got less than 800 views. So I, I actually got a hold of someone at YouTube and they're looking into it. Not only that, but in my actual video feed, some of the videos I've been posting over the last month are not showing up. I see them in mm. my creator studio. But you guys aren't. And so it's really, really frustrating right now with YouTube. Wow. That's so strange. Two what things are happen? going on. Either they see that we have some momentum, some some stability. We're serious about this and they want a little bit of money. You think so? I don't know, dude. Hmm. I don't know. I sure hope it's not what you're suggesting. <laughs> yeah. You want to grow, Travis? You start promoting and, and buying ads. Oh, you got to buy the ads. They're not yeah. going to put ads on your channel. I'm not sure what's going on, dude. You're on this double secret squirrel probation list. Anyways, enough about that. There's so much going on, guys. We have a big, big show tonight. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Well, let's just start. Our main guest, Michael Simonton, will be joining us later around the... Uh, a little less than an hour away. He's going to talk smallmouth fishing. He makes some sneaky little smallmouth baits. And he's cool, actually man. on the Smallmouth Crush podcast as well, uh, which will be coming out in June, I believe. So we'll be able to hear from him a little bit earlier. Now, are you holding that back till June for a purpose? Well, he does talk about a specific technique that we'll probably get into tonight. So, ah. uh, so the viewers are in for a treat. They're in for a treat. That's cool. I love when people come on that make sneaky baits that you can't buy, you know, that aren't readily available. You kind of hear about it. It's kind of like something different, you know, so I'm stoked. Not that I'm a big smallmouth guy. I really only smallmouth fish with you most of the time. Yeah, you can. You can. I you mean, can handle it. It. yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. I'll get it. Yeah, I, I'll so, dig it. So Michael Simonton will join us. Then we have a special, special guest. Double special guest. Double special guest. Man, that's crazy. We got Rick from Monster Bass going to talk about this month's bag, Bassmaster Deep. Classic Baits. Pretty crazy, man. I looked through it. I know you got one. We're actually yeah, going to give one away to a lucky, oh. a lucky viewer. I'm going to ask a question towards the end, and whoever gets the answer right wins it. First answer. Nice, man. So a gentleman by the name of Ken Duke, if anybody's into bass fishing, they're certainly aware of that name. He's been, he's everywhere. He's the great and powerful. He is the, the most knowledgeable guy about bass fishing history on the planet. Mm -hmm. Bar none. No one can even come close. Absolutely. He'll actually be joining us as well. Big, man. Big. And the tie-in is... The Monster Bass Bag is all about classic winning baits. And he wrote, actually, kind of the history of those baits so on Ken, the site at Monster yeah. Bass. And, and Ken walked through, you know, talking about which baits would be a good fit for this and some of the stories behind it. So real appreciative of Rick being able to get uh, Ken on tonight. Well, hopefully he hasn't popped in yet, but his time slot isn't isn't here for a little bit. So I'm not too worried. Okay, no good, sign good, of Michael good, good. Simonton either. We might just be hanging out with Rick all night. What the heck, man? I know. That ain't a bad thing. Well, Rick just had KVD on, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I got to talk to him about that. Like, how does he get a lineup of that? Well, you know, he's the uh, all-powerful monster bass, dude. Well, <laughs> you know, what, it's pretty. You, you tried for I, KVD and you couldn't get him? I was there. Uh, when he won that Bassmaster Classic on that 1.5 square bill, which we'll talk. I don't want to. So was I. I know. We didn't even know each other. Weird. 
crazy. Were you a, crazy. were you the guy in the Mercury booth with the hat on and the foam baton? Probably. That's crazy. I walked by that booth, man. I actually spent time in that. Booth. I was at the Mercury Pro Party. Where were you? Hmm. Yeah, I guess you didn't post up. I think you were out because it was New Orleans. I, no, I not. was gal. Yeah, I was definitely downtown New There's Orleans. There's no doubt, man. You're like Mercury Pro Party. Forget about it. you. Just ditched. <laughs> I talked to <laughs> Kelly. Jo I talked to Kelly Jordan for a, a long time. Good. Dude. Uh huh. Yeah. We yeah. talked to Kelly yeah. Jordan actually about two years ago in uh, yeah. Knoxville, if you recall. Yeah. And I was on center stage in a bass boat with Johnny Ingram. Fish Fishburn was like our, he got us everything. I, I was at the Champions Toast, dude. Did you mm. get to go to the Champions Toast? I, I've, I've always been invited. I've only made a handful. But that oh, time on a Sunday night after the Classic, I'm really, really drained and, and trying to get some sleep. I got gotcha. you. That was a joke. Oh, <laughs> you mean like the time I came to see at the classic and you really thought your, your body was shutting down according to shutting you down from, from no, really. Much, I uh, mean, guys, Travis was, was in a panic. He was like, I think I'm dying. And I'm like, well, dude, all you need is a nap. Just go take a nap. And he did recharged and posted up for the iCloud party. Yes. Uh, hour, hour and 15 was all you needed, bro. Whew. But you hadn't got to any sleep like three days or something stupid. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. It was an Jimmy epic big, party. Jimmy big time in the house. Yo, Jimmy's Jimmy. in the house. Listen, Eric, we got to stay on schedule. It's 813. We got some big guests coming up. So we do have to get to the real shot. Yeah. yeah tackle. Review. I thought that Travis was a Randy with that foam hat on to be truthful. So it was actually the reverse. Yeah, I was pimping. He was uh, just being a Randy with a Mercury. All right, we're just going to shirt on. We're going to get right into it. since. <laughs> Show line. Real shot, man. The real there it shot. Is. And small. So here's the crush. deal, guys. You guys know the real shot is the main sponsor of this live show, and they're bringing you 15% off your first order. Head on over to realshot.com. Enter code smallmouthcrush15. And get 15% off. We got to talk about the dual realis spin. Yeah, yeah. Crush. My, Ain't that right? Is, yo, bro, is my is my is my camera look? You guys, how does my You're picture not, look? Because I'm looking looking here and I'm looking there, and it's like bad it's like internet. But like, yeah. Anyways, hold the bait up. That's the next step, Eric. All right, we lost Eric. We'll wait till we get him in. Alex, you on this? Yeah, but I got bad internet too. I'm rolling with your parents. Where the heck are you, dude? The internet. Where's the uh, backdrop? The the largemouth bass backdrop. It's at home. I'm in Tennessee, man. Got a yeah. tournament going on. Kentucky Lake. Eric, give Best us a sign if you're back. Yo, buddy, I'm back. Him. There he is. All I'm right, back. back. All right, Alex. Me, what? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, the Realis spin. Here's the deal. I'm actually going to take it out of the package. You know I don't like taking baits out of the package, but we're going to do that for you here. And I'm going to be straight up with you. That's a sexy, sexy bait. And I've never thrown it yet. Uh, Eric, you ever hear of the, uh, the, the little George? Hold on, guys. Eric, you know what? Eric quit. He's, he's out. He upset me enough tonight. You know what I mean? He's got to stay on top of things, Alex. What do you think of this little deal? Uh, a couple things. So this is a great smallmouth bait, but it also will catch a lot of largemouth. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Eric, are you ready? Give me some signal down below if you're ready and you're not going to walk away again. <laughs> no. No signal. But I mean, yeah, like you were saying, that bait was what the – Toyota Series Championship was one on on Cumberland last year. I mean, it wasn't that color, but it was a similar tailspin type bait. He's sure. just pitching it around, and those things can be a killer when it's cold out. I mean, I'm sure you can testify to that fishing up north for those big smallmouth. It is a it is a smallmouth killer in those colder water temps. It does work year round. Doesn't really matter. Here's the deal. I actually got introduced to these types of baits for the first time years and years ago, but not where you would think. I got introduced okay. by a local stick down on the Harris chain in Florida. 
really? that threw these hardcore on shell beds hmm. and would wreck them. I think it's, wow. I think we can, I think we can take uh, Eric out of the timeout now. So <laughs> are you going to behave, buddy? Yeah, man. Look, I got one you don't got. Oh, geez. What is that? Look how old that is. You had to go dig into your stash. Only ten, Ken Duke can. That's why. That's what I was going to get. Only Ken Duke can name this bait. We'll wait for Ken Duke. I want to see if he can ID it. But Stacy King won, I think, in the last decade on this bait. Ah, Re reeling it through. I believe it was standing timber. How about that? Okay. So not only does it work on shell beds, standing timber as well. Well, why don't you hold the bait up that we're trying to sell to help keep this show on the air? I'll hold them both you up. Go. Just you, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> Some of my favorite colors: smoky shad, ghost chartreuse, prism shad. What do you got? Uh, smoky shad, which is definitely one I'll be throwing. This is a great bait too. Great schooling bait. Don't sleep on this for a schooling bait. I think that's why the little George was actually invented to catch the schoolies because okay. you can throw a little George, a country mile. Then they mm. had the super George, but these are the modern versions of the OG. Yes. Anyway, well, there you go, man. I mean, really good paint job. Uh, components are top notch. What you would expect from dual realis. This They've come a long stuff. way. It's crazy. The thing bends, that, dude. Yeah, it bends. It's soft. It's gummy. How many of Weird, those? Man. Oh, a handful. I got no. a whole box full in the back. <laughs> a whole box full. No, this is not a big George. I'm going to let Ken Duke ID this. <clears throat> He'll know that he's going to be able to. Oh, Ken know, Duke. Dude. Oh, it's going to be a good challenge. And Ken Duke will be able to tell you the history. He'll tell you where Stacy King won it. Oh, yeah. He'll be able to tell you. All I right. Promise. All right. Watch. Fair dude, enough. You, will, you will flip out. That's This is going to okay. be. Yeah. All right, we got to get into it because we got a big show. Michael Simonton coming up here shortly. But before we get there, let's talk about, of course, the Monster Bass. It's the second week in the month, and that's what we do. We break down this month's bag. They come in bags now. Pretty cool. Yeah. And here's the coolest part of tonight's show. You're actually going to be able to win this. One lucky viewer is going to win this if you, if you guess the correct answer to my question. That only... Ken Duke can tell us. So don't let me forget. I'm I'm laughing. Did I just turn my ears off? I'm laughing. At M Jones's comment. Sorry. We got a skate. We got a skater. We got skating going on in the background. We got Ken Duke. Welcome, Ken. How are you? The great and powerful Duke. Uh, you got oh, oh my god what's what's going on guys you guys are building me up way too much but thank you for no, that anyway Garrett, great to see you brother to i only see get to again, see you man. on bass university travis it's been a few years yes for, for everybody listening who uh wants to who heard travis say at the end of the classic he's got to wind it down because he's spent he's done <laughs> no on every night of the classic, Travis Manson is heading for a party somewhere. <laughs> I've seen him do it time after time after time. He's a party. I know so true. I typically He's a Randy. see Travis. I, tri Where do you I typically see Travis on my way to the expo. So I'll be heading out to the expo. Travis will be heading in <laughs> from the previous night. <laughs> very true. Very accurate. <laughs> Yes, yes, I don't even yes. know what to say about that, but it is what it is. Like Man, you <laughs> seriously, home run here, Ken, working with Monster Bass and Rick and putting together uh, a really cool piece of history when it comes to bass fishing. Never been done before, and I was so excited to get it, and I was like expecting all these unique, like, like I, in my head, I was expecting different baits. I didn't expect to get a, a plastic that was one and then the following year was thrown on the jig and was one on a con like it was crazy all these stories and so uh i don't even know where to start rick let's take over from this point man let's let's go yeah well you know about a year ago i had this idea you know I, I, we, we sit back in these monthly boxes it's you know it's what are the what are the best baits for october what are the best baits for november and so i sat in a meeting i said wouldn't it be really cool if you could just ship 
like an entire box full of baits that won the Bassmaster Classic. <laughs> And everyone looked at me and they're like, yeah, why, why not? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, great. So let's do it. And then we started, you know, we start doing research and you know, you're looking at bass fan and wired to fish and all these websites. And it's like, nobody could tell me what won because it's only, it was only after, after a certain point that we started keeping track of what baits won and what were the patterns that were being used. And, and so we sat back and, uh, and we said, well, I guess this isn't going to come to fruition. And I was talking with Davey Taff, who works for me, and, and he works with someone, called, someone named Doyle Power. Doyle's like, well, I know one person, one person that'll know this answer. And I'm like, well, who? And he goes, Ken Duke. I'm like, all right, let's call him up. And sure uh -huh. enough, like, he's the guy. And it's such a closely guarded secret that he wouldn't give us the list. He was like, all right. I'll tell you what, I'm the only guy that knows this. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're the only guy that knows this. He's like, yeah. So he would give like, he would feed like Davey, like three, four baits at a time. Davey would come back and be like, all right, that one's not in production. They can't do it. This one's a no, this one's a yes. And then he'd go back to Ken and Ken would feed him like four or five other ones. And it got to the point where it was, it, it was really difficult to do. I mean, so difficult that we actually brought back one of the baits that wasn't in production anymore just to make this happen so and, cool yeah the rest is yeah. really on ken so the rest is history as they say sorry to be so secretive about it rick and it's not that i'm smarter than anybody or have a better memory than anybody it's that you know i, I chased this stuff down for decades yeah and and you know travis you fished the tour you know how hard it is to get guys to tell you the truth sometimes sure. about the base yeah. that won so what i found in some cases were the there would be a report that this bait was responsible for a big part of the catch. But I'd kept, catch up to the guy 10, 15, 30 years later, and he'd say, no, well, the truth is it was actually this other bait. And uh, and, and that to me is hilarious. And I, I, I love that aspect of the sport. You can't get away with that anymore. There are just too many cameras everywhere. But um, it, it's 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 something I've, I've done for a long time, which is keep track of uh, classic winning lures. And when I worked for BASS, uh, at the Classic, we would sometimes have a, a big display in a glass case of the baits that I won the Classic, and that was my personal collection. Some of them wow. were game-used baits. But I think Epic wow. Eric would probably be able to put together a pretty healthy list <laughs> of those things. That would be a good list to work on with you, man, like expanded list. Dang. There you go, yeah. Oh. Or, or just the one you – know, it'd be a cool list just to have the ones – and I think I've got it, but just the ones that uh, were lied about. Oh, even better. Yeah. That would be yeah. the best list. <laughs> Fact this and fiction. A lengthy list. A lengthy oh, my lengthy gosh. List. That would be the best. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was convinced touchy, KVD touchy and Beeswax. subject. Star, sorry, man. I, I was convinced KVD and Beeswax Creek was like throwing uh, a handmade balsa bait from a maker that, you know, was unnamed. I saw him palm it. I, I saw him throw it over to the side. I got a glimpse of it on TV. I'm like, that's not what he said it was. No way. Anyway, it's oh, stuff like that. Like, get your, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just got to catch a little bit of the interview that Rick did with uh, Kevin on the Monster Bass show. And, uh, yeah, you mentioned Beeswax Creek. That, to me, is just one of the great examples of why KVD is the best tournament angler of all time. Sure. Nobody managed a crowd <clears throat> classic better than Van Dam. And, guys, in that mm. classic, as you may recall, he used a crowd – to protect his area. He did. He used the crowd to prevent anybody else from getting into the area where he was catching all those fish. Yeah. And it looked like a charm. What he was, was right behind that bridge. I was standing on the bridge and I was standing on the dock watching Crete throw a freaking Sabeel, you know, the, the liquid filled crystal shad. I remember he was, <laughs> he was, he was pulsing that along and I'm like, come on squirrel, get it done. You know, I was rooting for the underdog cause that's just yeah. who I am. But anyway, he won. Obviously. Uh, oh my gosh. I'll, you bring up all these names, and I, and I, whenever I hear a name of a guy, you know that I, I know whether it's Travis Manson and all the great stories I've heard from Travis and and Brody Broderick through the years, many of which would frighten you. Oh uh, sure, <laughs> then I've seen a few. But the Crete has the funniest line in the history of the Bassmaster Classic press conference. If you ever want to hear it, um, but yeah, Van Dam's a genius. What's really hilarious, though, guys, is as you know. There might be 100, 150 boats following Kevin at a big tournament like the Classic. 
and and uh, suddenly he'll he'll get behind the console, put on the life jacket, fire it up, and run. And then 150 boats right. follow him. And the only reason he left was to take a leak. And then they all come right back. And that that was happening in Beeswax Creek. It was hilarious. Oh, jeez. Something that Rick did not bring up in the show. I don't know why. No. But I did lead my, my leading question was this because I was like, all right, what am I? How do I how do I break how do I break the uh, break the ice with KVD? So I was like, all right, who wins in a cage match, you or Zona? Wow, <laughs> I, I, good I, one. I didn't know what to ask him. I was like, everybody asked the same question. Sure. So I started with that, and then it went downhill from there. <laughs> I, I don't think so. That's I, I awesome. Kind of to know it was it was a, it was a good show. And Kevin's a great interview. You know, he, yeah, totally he, was, it. he was really easy. I was un, it was unbelievable. Oh, sure. In fact, half the time he would answer the question and then answer my next four questions. So I'm looking at the list going, all right. Oh my God, he answered no. like, <laughs> you know, my questions. What? I'm I'm gonna run out of time. <laughs> or I'm gonna run He's out like of time. He's like a questions. mind reader. Yeah. That's awesome. What well, I've worked with Kevin for decades and he's he's one of the best interviews in the business. But he does get the same questions all the time. And and what I find is if I'm asking him one of the questions he's heard too many times. I'll get about halfway through it. He's like, yeah, 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 I know, I know. And he'll just start answering. So he's, yeah, he'll lose his patience with me sometime in my yeah. tedious questions. Well, yeah, that's we a good, that's a good way to, to uh, segment into the, the 1.5. Uh, because when I opened up the bag, this was one of the baits that uh, I resonated with. Also this chigger crawl, which we'll get into uh, why, uh, but he put on the show this really that that classic down in New Orleans 2011 I remember it I was down there really foggy a lot of craziness going on uh it was it was exciting because I think it really put this square bill on the map when it comes to uh crankbaits and and just the popularity what, do you agree with that Ken is that accurate statement it is because uh you know I think baits come and go Eric knows this probably better than anybody. They, there's a, they're cyclical. Uh, a bait gets hot, it falls out. You know, Jack Chancellor put the Carolina rig on the map, but only because Bill Dance finished second using a Carolina rig in the 73 Classic. You know, I think the first truly great square bill was uh, Fred Young's Big O back in the early 70s. And it was huge for a few years, but then a lot of people <clears> copy <throat> it. Other baits come along. You know, a spinner bait is effective in the same territory, but then a guy wins a big tournament with a bait and suddenly everybody's talking about it again. And this was a classic example of that. Mm. Is this the actual, like, is this the color that he was throwing? No, chartreuse black back. Wow, that really? was good. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Oh, absolutely. And he was <laughs> basically banging that into stumps triggering reaction bite yes or no i mean that's yeah, the story right? absolutely and 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 what he was doing that i think was kevin was so good with his electronics that he was finding these stumps and and this isolated wood and where it might take another guy three four five casts to zero in on it kevin was hitting it on the first cast yeah mm. yeah there was grass there too and hard bottom so there were three things going on in a mixture but the stumps were key for sure yeah, but mm -hmm. the grass and hard bottom was was critical, and he didn't catch a fish in practice. Oh, I'm he had sorry, water, water, right? right? The stories, um, media day, that classic media day is always the day before the Bassmaster Classic. It's on a Thursday. I'm in media day, and one of the things I was doing was I was saying, okay, walking up to all the competitors, I'm saying. Okay, other than yourself, give me the name of three guys who, who are going to be a threat this year. Should I should I call this guy out? Yeah. Should I use this guy's name? Oh, yeah. Please. Okay, I love this guy. He's the best storyteller in the industry. Uh, Mark Davis, three-time angler of the year, 95 classic champ. First guy to win AOI and the classic in the same season. I love Mark Davis. Mark, I apologize in advance of this story. Uh, <laughs> So I walk up to Mark Davis. I say, Mark, other than yourself, give me the name of three guys who are going to be a threat this year. And Mark in his Arkansas drawl says, well, I don't know who's going to be a threat, but I'll tell you who's not going to catch them. And that's Kevin Van Dam. Oh, no. 
Mark had seen Kevin in Katawachi, the area uh, around the Delta there. And, and Mark had been in there in practice and Mark felt very confident that there were no bass there. And he was right. But at that day, that day, but on Friday, the bass showed up and Kevin just whacked the tar out of them. Yeah. Water was warming. And that's what Kevin said. They're coming to me. It's, exactly. it's kind of cool. The guy, the guy that just wanted the Harris chain didn't catch a bass in practice, but he found the very little grass that existed in Harris chain. Cause they've been spraying. It was in 11 foot of water. And then the wall a wall of hydrilla. And it came up to like nine foot. And he, he was just so confident that that was the richest, luscious, greenest grass with bait. And he won the tournament 58 pounds. How about that? And that's, you know, that's one of those advanced tournament tips, you know, kind of guys. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certainly not an advanced tournament angler. Yeah. We've got to look to Travis and, and some other guys for that. And Kevin Van Dam, of course. But yeah, you got to you got to figure out not where they were in practice, but you got to figure out where they're going to be once competition starts. And, and nobody does that better than Van Dam. Although I'll tell you what, another guy. Especially pre-spawn, pre-spawn, yeah. right? Pre-spawn, right? They're coming or going. Or another guy who had a similar classic win experience in 2009 was Skeet Reese when Skeet was fishing the Red River. Oh he didn't even squat in practice. Yep. Once the tournament started, the fish showed up. He was in that pinch point, and they were just coming to him every day. That was a really cool classic, too. He was dirt shallow. He had a little ditch. I think he was fishing a ditch, wasn't he? He was. He was, of course, throwing a spinnerbait, throwing a chicken yep. craw. Uh, yep. and, and guess who Rick's got on next week? No! Skeet Reese. Skeet Reese. Cool. Come on, man. Come on, man. Dang. The California kid now. Dang, and that new Fresh Monster Bass t-shirt you got. You yeah, got the you classic like bag. You got game. You're peaking right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be on, I'll be honest. I learned a little more. I, I feel like, like, like Skeet Reese and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Byron Velvic, I think, yeah. you know, Travis, I think we probably would have been really good friends with those guys back on the oh, day yes. if we were on the tour. <laughs> probably. I, I listened to their interview on Ike and Ellie and oh, I was like, oh, dude, that was, was like, epic. These, these are my, these, these would have been my people when I was younger. <laughs> yes. Oh, no question about it. That was a great interview, wasn't it? I mean, that yeah, was class. Totally. They really got into the road stories. Totally. A little bit of um, a fight or two, maybe. Oh, man. The dancing. The, the dancing, the rule breaking, living in a van down oh by the river. God. Listen, Forget I was it. I was there in 2007 at, at, at Byron's house in Del Rio when he was dating uh, that chick from the yeah, Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. Mary. Wendy, uh, Mary, dude. I was there Mary. at their pool party. Mary oh, Delgado. Mary Delgado. Dang, Crazy. Dude. Yeah, anyway, man, another lifetime. Well, it's all over now, buddy. You got two kids and a business. Yeah, he, he's a funny dude. Were you guys at ICAST when it was at Vegas last? He was at the Livingston party and he busts out the worm like in the middle of the party. Nah, like, you no know, because Liv Livingston's having this giant pool, like this party at the, I can't remember the club at the Venetian where it's all the indoor pool party. And they've got the whole thing packed and they're dropping. Wow. So, you know, Livingston was just new, new to the industry and they're dumping so much money into the parties. And, and like, literally you see Skeet just like doing the doing worm. The worm. The oh my God. It was so <laughs> That's awesome, man. So the Chigger Craw, uh, One of it's, my been rumored, it's been rumored that, uh, I, I think Skeet Reese then won on the red with the crazy leg, correct? Exactly. Or that was crazy legs, trigger crawl. Okay, That's exactly right, Travis. So, the trigger crawl. When I opened up the bag, it brought back memories. It was actually the first classic I've ever I ever went to. Uh, saw in person live when Boyd Duckett won, and I don't know if he caught it. Can if he caught fish all throughout the tournament on this, or if it was just that one big kicker. I remember when he punched into a mat and and caught that one. So I'm curious to know the the, the story on that. Well, Boyd caught big fish of the whole tournament on day one. What he was doing, he was going out and catching them on a trap, a rattle trap early. Rattle trap, yeah. 6'9", wasn't it? A 6'9"? Well, well, he had a 6'9 on day three. But okay. what he was doing was he was catching his limit on, on the trap. And then he would go to some heavy grass cover, and he would, would flip and pitch with the chicken craw. And on day one, he had, I'm going off the top of my head, I think an 8'2", which was big fish of the whole tournament. And on day three, Eric, he had that 6'9", you mentioned. Okay. And those kickers really made 
obviously all the difference. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, was, you a phenomenal tournament. The guy was a rookie. He's the last rookie to win the classic, but uh, what an event. And he was, he was throwing and that. the only home state, state angler, right? Only home state angler to win. Is that true still? To, to, no, it's not true still. Uh, after that, you had okay. Randy Howell also from Alabama in 14, okay. Casey Ashley in Thanks. 15, Edwin Evers in 16. This is Ken so Duke, everybody. Meet, yeah, all right. <laughs> meet, meet Ken Duke, everybody. Meet Ken Duke. I told you. I told you. I was bragging on you before. So I told you. <laughs> um, no, no, crazy. Again, this is this is just the result of a misspent youth followed by a misspent <laughs> middle age and a misspent old age. It's really kind of sad. Uh, but you're in you Florida around bath, you're around bass heaven and you're still working in the biz, man. We we honor you. So yeah. Oh, I love you're, it, you're man. Way too I love kind, it, Eric. You know, I, I admire your knowledge of lures. It is unsurpassed. So, thank you, man. I appreciate uh, I look you saying up to that. You on that tremendously. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, and it's exciting to work with Rick and Monster Bass and to, and to be part of that classic box. Uh, this is a brilliant and, box, man. I want to see more like this. This is just a great idea. I got I got goosebumps when he announced it. And the Chigger Crawl, just for you guys, I know it's a classic winner, but this is my favorite swim jig trailer. I throw the three inch, not the four. Um, I threw it with Travis in New York and caught a couple of really big largemouth, big largemouths of the trip with Travis on the back of a dirty jig. So this is my preferred, especially grass rivers. It's got a lot of thump and a lot of action it produces. So you can carry this three inch or four inch in your box and it can be a punching bait, a flipping bait, a swim jig bait. You can really, it's a versatile, versatile lure and it still catches the fire out of man. Green pivot, pumpkin, pivot. and I'll tip the chars, chartreuse or orange, whatever you want to do. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, good point. No, pivot heads also uh, as far as punching goes. Oh, yeah, we did this that is, video. Yes, and, and this is a bait I'll gravitate towards. I bet you I pick this thing up 70% of the time uh, when I decide to do a little bit of punching. Uh, for some reason, it's just confidence. I know there's a lot of different punch baits out there. There's a lot of great ones. But a lot for me goes with confidence and just the history I have with a chigger cross. So yeah, I'm all yeah. in when it comes to a chigger cross for sure. Travis, I was throwing the crazy legs with you in that derby on the upper bay and caught the six three three on with, the back with the of the with the crazy legs on the back of the dem jigs. Dem jigs, yep. I remember that. And a four. That was yes. a good little that was a good little area. Yes. That was yes. nice. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I okay. know. Dude, oh, I'm intrigued by this. Right. This is so awesome. Sorry. Dude, first of all, I don't know how long has this bait been around and why have I ever seen this before? Oh, Look at the color. Oh, my God. Like, well, the bacon rind, of course, rose to prominence when Davy Height won the 99 Classic on the, uh, on the Louisiana Delta. But what a lot of people don't realize is that it wasn't the first creature bait. The uh, Zoom Brush Hog had been around for about a decade before that. What? A lot of track, not not gotten a lot of traction. Um, the bacon rind suddenly hit, and and of course, Gambler gets a lot of attention for that, and it was great. But I would say, and I'm kind of going off the top of my head here, but I would say that uh, the Zoom Brush Hog may have benefited more than any other lure that didn't win the classic from a classic win That's because. So crazy. Because the, the Gambler was not available as widely as some Zoom products back then. So not only did the baby bacon rind take off like crazy and do great things for Gambler, but the brush hog and the baby brush hog did crazy things for Zoom. Hmm. Wow. Oh, man. One of my I just love the fact. Time. So the curly tail, you know, unlike a Zoom that has the tail split, yeah, this is giving it a little bit of kick. And I believe that's what. Davey wasn't fishing it like a traditional plastic on a Texas rig. He was swimming. Is that correct? Travis Manson, you're good. You're damn good. Uh, he was doing exactly that. He was pitching it, you know, like, like you might pitch and let it go to the bottom and hop it or whatever. But he was pitching it and he was swimming it back around vegetation. And uh, and he, he had the classic record up to that time for winning weight. Uh, with a five fish limit with 55 pounds, he uh, absolutely destroyed. We won that classic by like uh, nine pounds, 15 ounces, something like That's that. Incredible. Just, just lapped the field. And and Rick, do you yeah. want to do the honors or shall I about your guest on the, uh, the 25th? Uh, you can do it. 
uh, none other than 1999 classic Ooh. champ, Davey Height. Wow. Dude, uh, you're gets, killing it. That's so good. It gets I'm going to better. Rick, listen, how you. can people yeah, wait, wait. follow and listen uh, to these – these interviews coming up what's the best way are you going live on instagram normally or how does that work yeah we pretty much go live on just about every platform on uh every thursday 4 p.m pacific youtube facebook we also like tonight when it was uh with with kevin van dam we streamed live on strike kings facebook and all their platforms as well so uh Crazy. we make it as easy as possible for you to find us all right two things there. about this bait that i want to point yeah. out the stabilizer fins they made yeah. these fins so the bait wouldn't roll over. Number two, who knew this about baits like this? So see how the tails are splayed? Pretend this is coming over a log. See how the tails splay out? If yep. you flip the bait over, mm -hmm. they don't splay out. Yes. So if you want more action, make sure you do that before Hold you that up it. a little. There you go. Splayed, right? See it? It's coming over yeah. a log. Ooh, look at that action. If I flip it over, it's coming over a log. Doesn't no happen. action. Not uh, saying you can't use it, not saying you won't get a bite, but when you're fishing a brush hog or a bacon rind, if you buy the bacon rind or use this, that's, bring that's it one of the first the first way for more action. Look at now, that, dude. That's one of the first tips Eric gave me three years ago when I pulled out my brush hog. Which side you got that rigged on, Travis? I'm like, I don't know, just like this. Well, I, I, how do you know if it's flaring or not? I go, uh, yeah, what, do you, what are you talking about? That is now, next level, Eric. That is next <laughs> next level. Now, did the bacon uh, rind go? Away, did the bacon rind go away for a while and then come back? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I know that, uh, like I was saying, I think that that win for height did as much for Zoom as it did for Gambler in a lot of ways. Uh, but but the bacon rind has always been a, a real viable thing, and Gambler came up with a lot of great other baits uh, in subsequent years you know, that, uh, the impacted classics, um, uh, you know, Chris Lane, was using an ugly otter when he won in, in 2012. Travis that was a big deal for a gambler at that time. Travis, right. don't you do it. That, I that's a, that, that's a Patreon tip. Okay. Sorry. All right. There's something anyway. about the ugly otter. We'll talk about it on a Patreon. Just saying. <laughs> tell, tell me more. How do I get on the Patreon? It's only $9.99 a month. Yeah, yeah, $10 a month. You guys get access to a free extra, if not free, if it's just an extra live every week uh, or every month. The next one is coming <laughs> up on the, I don't even know, guys. It's like the end of March here, and we're going to blow your mind when it comes to lipless crankbaits. Oh, man. Amazing. Should we Ken talk Duke. about this bad boy now? Ken Duke. Oh. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> toying with me, man. I think I've got two of those in my garage, Eric, and I'm not sure who made them. I uh, can make three. <laughs> I'll make it three for you, man. June bug. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. What's next? Oh yes. So, box. talk to me about the hail. I feel like I feel like it's a southern thing, right? Well, yeah, the hail stuff uh, and the Stanley stuff—they come out of Texas, and uh, you know they're. They're legendary brands. I mean, uh, John Hale and Lonnie Stanley have probably done as much for jig fishing through the years as, as any two guys. And, uh, you know, they've, they've come up with some really cool baits through the years, uh, some really great jig designs. In 92, uh, Robert Hamilton, who is, is his own uh, tragic story, Wow, um, yeah. Hell crawl worm for part of his catch to win that classic. And if ever there was a cautionary tale in the world of bass fishing, yeah, it is Robert Hamilton. Truly, it, there's a, there's a, um, they did a documentary 50 foot deep, didn't Matt Pangrak? And well, it's not quite um, that deep, Eric. It's only 20 feet, 25, deep. sorry, 20 feet, <laughs> 20, 20 feet deep. But uh, yeah, uh, on uh, you know Thanks. Mark Jeffries, Matt Pangrak, Dave yeah. Rush, the crew over at Bass Zone, they did it. Uh, it's, I think the subtitle of it is "Dance with the Devil." It's Hamilton poignant. is currently in prison. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, uh, do I dare ask what the what the backstory is here? But it's it's it's, it's, it's it's poignant, and 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 the story about his classic win and what happened, and what he felt going over this bridge will it'll put goosebumps on your neck. You gotta listen yeah. to it. 
Travis, especially you. But the dude's in jail now? Yeah. Yeah. He's in prison. And uh, or... huh. everything, <laughs> everything he's done has, I would say, all his transgressions have been uh, drug related. Let's yeah. leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is sad. It's a sad story, man. Did he get his classic trophy back? Because I know Jeffrey's tried really hard to make that happen. Did he? He no, never got it back. Never got it back. Uh, weird story on this. Um, I'm sitting in my office one day. Uh, a buddy of mine texts me a texts me a picture of a Bassmaster Classic trophy, and he says, "Is this real?" And I wow. zoom in on it as much as I can because I know bass usually holds a, um, a replica type trophy that's not quite as uh, nice that they use for display purposes. And I said, and I know enough to say, yeah, that one's real. He said, wow. it's sitting in a Jackson, Mississippi pawn shop. Wow. What? I said, what does the guy want for it? Yeah. <laughs> and Hamilton pawned it for $300. Oh my God. I know. Doesn't that break your heart? It does. Right. And, uh, no, he doesn't yeah. have it. The guy who bought it, and I don't know what he bought it for, but it was considerable because I authorized my friend to go up to 2000 on it. Wow. And, uh, and he wouldn't go there. He said it wasn't for sale. He said it was too good a conversation piece. Uh, Do you have the contact info for the guy that, that has it today? I don't, but Mark Jeffries does. Uh, by the way, uh, shout out to Mark. Mark has been in the hospital. He has, Yeah, how's he doing? Uh, I think he's doing okay. I hope he's out of the hospital today and, and not to turn this into a, a bunch of asides and, and sure. shout outs, but Mark's a, a great guy and a, a, one of the, one of the great thought leaders in, in the bass fishing world. Yeah. A lot of people were asking on the stream in the comments. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. He had, he had stabilized and I think he had, he was no longer in ICU. Okay, uh, I hope he's doing much better. Look forward to him. Good. Getting back and, and being okay. Good. 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 Great guy. Hey Travis, uh, you 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 um you asked about the crawl worm and 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 this is like one of the earliest baits that I fished with. Really? And yeah, and, and what's really cool to me is that those older classic baits. In fact, the simplicity of this is, I think, the secret of it. Right? There's you know you can bite it down to make it shorter. You can use it as a jig trailer. Right. And it's almost a do-nothing action. I mean, how many people remember the Guido bug? The Guido bug was similar in nature, but small. Zoom's got one. Man, they still catch bass. It's a finesse presentation, but a sizable meal. You know, I'm telling you, this would be great on a jig worm that I made. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about it. Go ahead. All right. What's next? <laughs> I'm well, rigging it up right now. I'm rigging well, it up right now. We also sorry. have this, the Stanley jig. Yeah. Uh, in the bag as well, which Does I guess was, rattle? was paired with this trailer, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Stanley Jig is just legendary. You know, Lonnie Stanley, one of the great jig fishermen on the trail back in the 70s, 80s, early 90s, a, a great gentleman from Texas. That head, that archie style head that he developed is still very much the standard in, in bass jigs all around. And, uh, Lonnie's got a, a lot of wonderful stories to tell. He'd be, he'd be, I know he's not necessarily a small mouth guy, Travis, but a uh -huh. cool guy to talk with. Sure. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And then I do see we have some Stanley jigs. Now I've never seen these before. Those are the, those are, are the some needle new hooks. hooks. Okay. Yeah, those are some, some new hooks that Rick is very savvy to pick up because those are, I think those are going to take off, especially with the support of monster bath. And the attention that monster bass can give them. But, you know, Lonnie Stanley is always Lonnie Stanley and, and uh, John Hale are always developing baits and coming up with new things for their company. And uh, this is one of their great new products. Mm -hmm. Wildly sharp, Rick. Tell us about this hook. It is really sharp. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, uh, we wanted to make sure that when we were putting together this box, right, like, you know, we always pair hooks and you can sit here and you can talk about all the different hooks that everyone's put in. But at, at the end of the day, we want, we, since there was so much that Hale and Stanley and, and Stanley had to do with it, they had these new hooks and we wanted to make sure that we just included it in there because uh, they were really excited about bringing these to life. So that's cool. Travis, Very have you cool. seen the Hale Gobi? Oh, I have not. <laughs> Dude, you got to look at one. 
But so yeah. on the on the Stanley website, there is a section of hail lures, and there's some super crazy, innovative lures that it just are they're very very unique, is all I can say. And one is a uber realistic looking goby, huh? And yeah. uh, again, you should check it out. Sure. You know, being a small yeah. mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't know if it would turn you on, but uh, it maybe just something. might. I just want you to see it. Yeah, yeah maybe we come back on. We bring Lonnie and and we when we talk about those. Mm. Oh my that gosh, Lonnie good. Stanley, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, how how does that pair with that shaky jig worm from the bass? I like lab? it. Oh I my like gosh, it. dude, that Love might it. catch a few. Are you kidding me, dude? Forget about it. <laughs> I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna catch me a big Potomac bass of that this spring for sure. That's awesome. Loving Berkeley it. Berkeley Trilene XL. My first line. What can I say? XT. Ooh, I don't you know. The backstory on this, it's like, it, I didn't believe it at first. And I don't know if this is in everybody's bag, if they have that information. But did I read that right? Yes. They banned oh. Berkeley line at well, a classic. They did. But oh, it's, it's kind of ironic because it comes full circle. They banned it. Ray Scott, the greatest personality in the history of our sport, okay? Hands down, one of my favorite people in the world. But Ray was always looking to make a buck, too. Well, that's how Ray keeps score. And uh, when Strand mm. came along, Strand, which, of course, now is owned by Pure Fishing, ironically, but Strand came along and said, Ray, we'll pay you X amount to be the official line of the Bassmaster Classic. And, and in exchange for that, we want you to ban um, any other line from the competition. And, and Ray said, how much are you offering? Yeah. And, and, then they said, <laughs> <laughs> and so Ray said, okay, done. And this was, this was done in 1981. And so guys were technically banned from using anything, but – you know, that's great. That would never fly today. Well, who says it flew then? You know? Yeah, right. Right. It's kind of uh, like you got to wear Nike if you play in the NFL. That, that's I mean, a similar thing, right? Yeah, exactly. My my guy, my eyes are okay, but they're not good enough to tell the difference between <laughs> right, right. and his friend. Yeah. And uh, so who knows what guys were really using, but yeah, it was what was really hilarious. And, and you guys aren't old enough maybe to remember this with the ads that would come out on behalf of Trilene or whatever after these classics where their product had been banned and the winner who was sponsored by them would come out and say, yeah, I, I, this is the line. I love Berkeley Trilene. It's my line. I had to use this inferior piece of crap product. <laughs> in the classic. Wow. Oh my God. Oh yeah, so I think one of the, I, I think one of the best stories that I heard in doing research for this was the one that you told me about the the flambo tackle boxes and the guy that put what was it like forty nine pounds worth of tackle. Rick, wow. that was Lonnie Stanley. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. In the earliest classics, the limit on tackle you could have, and it, this included everything: line, lures, sinkers, hooks. You were limited to ten pounds. They issued you a tackle box and. and <laughs> and they weighed it. And if you were over the limit, then Ray Scott and his tournament director, Harold Sharp, would reach in and start throwing stuff out. And what they were doing, Harold was a serious, serious fisherman. Harold would be throwing stuff out and he'd be keeping it. Uh, so he'd throw out original big O's and things like that. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Um, well, anyway, then the rule became there was no weight limit, but you had to be able to fit it in the box. And the box had to be able to close. And then the rule became, well, you had to be able to fit it in the box, but the box didn't have to close. <laughs> this is and crazy. Lonnie, who's a, a big jig fisherman, big spinnerbait fisherman, you know, that's what he's made for all these years, jigs yeah. and spinnerbaits. Those things are heavy. So yeah. he, he managed to get 49 pounds of tackle wow. in, a, in a box. That's unbelievable. That's crazy. There's a classic record that will never be broken, Eric. <laughs> I might be able to rival him with my uh, with, with my spider wire bag. There you go. <laughs> That's so crazy. 49 pounds, Travis. 
That's crazy. Know. It's Weird. like having a battery in your box. Yeah. It is. It's, isn't that right? That's, uh, that's, that's, what yeah. a great analogy. What a great I mean, analogy. that's just crazy. Man, that was some knowledge drop that just is incredible. It was. And now what I'm going to do is actually put all this back in the bag. Mm. And we're going to give it away. I love it. To one lucky viewer. But the problem is. You got to answer gotta a have, question. We got to have him answer a question. And since we have Ken here, I figured. Oh, yeah. Ken's going to ask the question, but it oh, has to oh, be yeah. something where people can't just like Google it. Like, Ooh. wow. I know. Oh. oh, time out. Let me tell you something. I have Googled the Ken Duke questions while I'm watching the Ike live stream, and it's impossible to find. So it's not that easy. Uh, Ken, you stand up. Your, some of your questions stand up to Google. It's crazy. Well, I've tried, Eric. I've tried to make them stand up to Google, but I'll you tell have, you. You have. You know, I'm here to tell you you have. Mm. The audience. I mean, it's been 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a stream with hundreds of people watching, Travis. And sometimes it goes 40 minutes. It's There's never been a – I don't want to build it up too much in case – Somebody oh, finds geez. it fast or happens to know it, but literally every stream, it is the most unbelievable thing. They are very hard questions to answer. They really are. Well, okay. Well, you're, you're kind. If, if you're kind to say that. They, um, they're hard, man. They're hard. Okay. Well, nice here's one that's that's Google proof. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> this is Google proof. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, and I've not asked this. Uh, I, I wow. regularly contribute the trivia trivia questions to to Bass U and stuff like that, and Ike Live and things, and and even some other places. So, all right, here it is. Name the manufacturer who has produced the most baits that caught the tournament big bass in the Bass Master Classic. Wow. Name the manufacturer. The number, by the way, is five. This manufacturer uh, made five baits that won overall big fish in five classics. Well, wow. there you go, guys, in the comments. The first one to get it right. And when you see it, Ken, let us know. Oh, wow. What, Let's see. What, was it a brand <laughs> mentioned tonight? Uh, yeah. Oh, you, oh, oh, come on. What well, happened? Makes it too easy. Well, I'm just asking. You didn't I have think to so I can see the comments. Can you? Uh, I'm I'll well, just start. Uh, uh, okay, read them off in order, dude. Uh, pure fishing. Uh, no, Prepco. that's the, in order. Okay, I'm trying. The first one was Rebel. Rebel. No. Rapala. No. Mans. No. Gary Yamamoto. No. Strike King. No. Berkeley. Yes. There it is, Travis Wise. Man, Travis, guys named Travis just know their stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> this is what I'm learning. Travis actually, Wise is the winner. If you guys look at my show notes, I wrote, I circled Berkeley right there. Uh, I thought that was in my mind. I thought that was how I was going to answer because I kept thinking, boy, duck it. And then I was like, well, did Skeet Reese maybe catch a? He did. He yeah. did. Well, and, and you know, one of the one of the cool things, I guess, going back to the the Berkeley thing, um, but but Skeet did not catch big fish in the classic he won. Uh, I, ironically, uh, Davy Height, Rick caught big fish in that classic, but on the Stanley Hale Worm Crow, right? Well, in two thousand nine, Davy caught his big fish on a Senko, if I recall correctly, which maybe I don't, but I'm pretty sure he caught it on a Senko. Um, that year, uh, but but Davey did catch his uh, he did win his '99 classic on that bacon baby bacon run. Anyway, uh, back in 2002, when Jay Yellis won the Bass Master Classic, he did the unthinkable. He caught big fish all three days. Wow! And, and all three days on a Berkeley jig. So that's impressive. That's yeah. That's that's crazy. You know, obviously Jay had a terrific tournament. He won it, but to catch big fish all three days—that's that also adds a, an element of luck. You know, he was just honestly, uh, extraordinary, crazy good, crazy, and also caught some caught some breaks there. But what a, what a talent! Mm. So hey, I, I can't fool your crowd. You know, Eric, see, <laughs> Eric is building me up too much. Eric's putting uh, in too much. 
pressure on me. <laughs> I told you. Well, I mean, Rick had to say, did we mention it tonight? And you answered the question, and there it was. Rick, you're giving away the, the hints well. are too much. Rick. We can't give it, we can't give an audience this smart. Hints. The rules, the That's rules of the road on Ken Duke questions is when Ken asks the questions, the, the hosts and co-hosts and guests cannot answer. All right, well. Or clue uh, give. Lesson lesson learned. We didn't know. We didn't know <laughs> the rule. If it's any consolation, if it's any <laughs> consolation, Rick, it's usually Pete Glusick who screws it up. <laughs> That's true. I love Pete. That's true. Pete, if you're watching. But what, right. But what you guys don't know is the second half of the question is now you have to name the bait. So you all think you're <laughs> so smart. Go ahead. <laughs> Ken was being easy on you tonight. because. I was, I was. We're not it's the old trivia anybody. question. How many people died in the wreck of the Titanic? And the answer, I think, is like 1,512. The next question is name them. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Travis Manson was one of them, he told me. That was a Edmund Fitzgerald, man. I know that. Shout out to Gordon Lightfoot. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great, great song, man. Great. We song. normally start the intro with a with the Gordon Lightfoot song, the theme song, but uh, the re I chose remade the, one. Remade yes, one, right? Yes, I chose the, the uh, uh, fun fact for all you uh, fun fact people out there. The intro to the song is me screaming the death metal. Yeah, co angler die. That is my voice. Yeah. I like it. Wow. Yeah. Show yes. them the crankbait. Do you still have the crankbait? Uh, it's in the crankbait box already. It's going to be used, dude. It's going to be put oh, to good that's use. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you guys for, seriously, uh, Ken, Rick, great job for the March box. And I want to just, I want to give a little a teaser out oh. uh, to everybody right now. Ooh. Yeah. So I recently made a video. I found a place where you can get some tungsten weight, some High quality tungsten weight at what? an amazing, incredible price. And that video will be coming up this week. Obviously, it's probably Monster Bass, but yeah, uh, saw your post on IG. It was very dude, that's nice. crazy. That's people good are stuff, mad man. Yeah, well, too bad. Yeah. Because we're exactly. paying through the nose for tungsten. So hey, Ken Duke, I got a question <laughs> for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up if I could get your contact information from somebody. Yeah, man. On this anytime. Show. So listen, the le I'm going on a Legendary Lakes tour. I will stop. You only live once. And I want your opinion on what are the most iconic Legendary Lakes across the country. I've already got one national sponsor interested. Travis, I haven't told you this, but I've got one signed up. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be big. I want it to We're be recorded. It. I want it to have good production value. I want to get the local flavor of tackle shops the the guide tackle tips that they use or pieces that they make like the guy we're having on michael simon to tonight makes a cool jig i want to interview the local sticks not the big name pros but the people that dominate on a local level like brent anderson kentucky lake you got to think of brent when you think of kentucky lake and i want to meet some smallmouth crush fans and monster bass fans that's what we're doing and maybe uh -huh. get an rv and put this giant ass sticker on the side yes like, are you interested, Rick? Ken I Duke, love can it. I, Let's do it. Can I come see you in Florida, Ken Duke, and take you to the Big O? And Eric, if you, don't, bass? if you don't, if you don't stop by and say hello, I'll be all right. Here. If happens, I'll give you my email right now, man. Uh, and and man. I don't mind if anybody else hears it and wants to use it because you guys will appreciate my email address. My email address is Ken at my What? Oh, my Cropterist. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, I bought that URL some time back. So no way. The, the genus, the Latin genus name of the black bass. <laughs> yes. <is> oh, <laughs> That's just so awesome. <laughs> This is why you're Ken Duke. Only Ken. That's how that's how bad the disease is, gentlemen. Oh my god, dude! If you don't think I got it bad, dude, I got it bad, man. Well, I, I just I know you got here. It. I'm in the bass it. lab. I'm making Doctor Crankenstein stickers. I can't stop. I can't stop. Oh, I love hey. that sticker. Can I see that one, <laughs> dude? Look at that thing, dude. That's the hottest new oh. sticker. By, uh, isn't that awesome? That Somebody had cool. to do this, right? Is, you know, is, you know is, who it, I call Doctor Crankenstein is uh, I've always called Lee Sisson Doctor Crankenstein hmm. too. But you are certainly Dr. Krankenstein. And uh, yeah, guys, the problem that, that Travis, you have, Rick, you have, Eric, you have uh, with this bass disease, the problem is that the poison is the cure. 
Yes, it's true. It's There's true. There's a t-shirt for you, man. The poison's the cure. Oh, <laughs> dude. Oh, dude. Dude, I got a guy. I got I got a guy. <laughs> just just make me one in extra large, okay? I got I dude, I got you, man. I got you. XL can do. Got it. Coming to see you. What part of Florida are you in? Because I'm coming back soon. I'm in Orlando. Oh my gosh, I rode through there. I was at the Harris chain. Damn you got to ride through Orlando to get much anywhere, but pretty much, you know, honestly, yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. You guys, if you guys will come down and visit me, I will take you. Back. Florida is the fishingest place in the world. Totally. And as far as America is concerned, guys, did you know that twenty-five to thirty cents out of every dollar spent on sport fishing is spent right here in Florida? Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Makes yeah. sense. I will take you on a crazy tour of, of cool bass fishing people, cool bass fishing places. All you got to do is get here. All right. All right. It's on, man. Can do. I, got, awesome. I think I should fund that and uh, uh, make that happen. Well, yeah. Rick, we'll Ken talk. Ken at mycropters.com. <laughs> That's so awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, I got a feeling we're going to have Ken back on at some point in the future as well. So, uh, again, good. Ken, thanks for taking the time out uh, this evening to – Say hel hello to our little tiny live, but uh, amazing, amazing followers that uh, that tune in. So we really appreciate it. Hey, I'm a Travis Manson fan, have been since I met you, you back in your days on the Elites, Thank brother. Uh, I can't hang with you at night. You're too young, <laughs> got too much energy for me, but I'm with you all day long. I'm a fan. Awesome. Uh, Rick, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks, Eric, sir. come down and see me. Enjoy it, guys. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank Man, you. Thanks. Give it up for the great and powerful Ken Duke. Thank man, you. And Rick Thank from you. Monster Bass with right. this amazing bag, man. That was awesome. Dude. Sorry. Thank guys. you, guys. All right. See, See you, Rick. You. See you, Ken. See you, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Wow. Wow. Whew. Goes on in that dude's head, man. Like, dude, it's incredible. How? Right? How? How do you I, do it? Unreal, dude. It's, it's people like that that fuel the passion, man. Yes. Yes. Um. Hmm. Where do we even start? Uh. Well, you got Michael Simonton. You got Michael Simonton. I know, but we need like yet? the we need the intro, and I'm looking over here, and I don't have my I don't have my intro ready to go. So you don't got I'm it. I just have to wing it. Well, I'll just do a PSA announcement then. How's that? I think you do have a, to make an announcement about. Is that okay? Is that okay? About if, Kane. Uh, I think now's the perfect time. Okay, guys, you probably have noticed that I'm wearing a Kane fishing hat, and Travis asked me before the show, and I wanted to let him know. Uh, this is not about selling you anything tonight. This is about uh, me wanting to give back. So, Kane Fishing, uh, he's a vet, and he's connected to a company called Operation Tackle Box. So, any purchase you make at Kane Fishing, Kane Fishing, a portion goes to Operation Tackle Box. Operation Tackle Box takes wounded vets and vets suffering from PTSD fishing. And, you know, I think we all know that fishing can be a cure. Uh, certainly uh, all of us understand the feeling uh, that we get when we go in the water and we, and we fish for bass. And so they've got uh, a group of guys that are dedicated to that. So I'm going to put together a big box of tackle uh, that I'm not using anymore, and I'm going to box it up and ship it down to Operation Tackle Box. I'll make a post on Instagram if you guys want to check out how to help donate or purchase something from Kane Fishing. Great, do that. If you've got old gear you're not using, they could use all, all that you can give them. So the vets mm -hmm. appreciate anything that you got that you're not using. So, And uh, as you know, guys, there's plenty of tackle around here that I'll never use, and uh, it's time. So I couldn't think of a better cause because we're free to fish uh, because those guys help keep our, our country safe and women. So men and women of the, of the military. So there you go, guys. That's Very what it's good. all about, man. Cane fishing and Operation Tackle Box. Sweet. Yep. I like that hat, by the way. Yeah, thank you, man. He makes a good, he make, and it's I love it. It's quality stuff. He sent the hat and the shirt. And so I thought I'd rep it and uh, talk to you about it. And Travis, thank you for giving me the time on the show to, to do something. Absolutely. It, it, Absolutely. It's time. It, we all got to remember to give back sometimes. So, well, good stuff. Our next guest, Michael Simonton, uh, he's fished on the Elite Series as well, way back in the day. He knows how to put some big smallmouth in the boat. He's actually on the Smallmouth Crush podcast that will be airing in June. So, you guys are going to get a little sneak peek. We're going to get into his head tonight. 
when That's it comes awesome. to smallmouth fishing. And he did a really good job uh, on the podcast. I'm excited to to bring and and share with you guys some of the information, but we'll probably dig into it a little bit tonight, I'm sure. So just like that. Just a second. Hey, take your oh. time, man. You've only been on last the stream for the last 10 minutes. So I'm going to try them again. Yeah, there you go. Okay, here we go. Man, good to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, um, you guys were really getting into the baits there that, that last session. Yeah. We oh were. man, dude, we go deep, man. We're, I mean, just look behind, deep. I I've watched your videos. I I'm I get it's bad. To zoom in on it and see what's. <laughs> <out there. laughs> it's it's bad when people go. What is that bait on the top shelf, third over? And I'm like, oh, let me go look. Is this the one you're talking about? You know. Yeah. It, it's fun. Man. I hear you. For sure, it's fine. I, yep. I can't wait to see some of the tricky stuff you make, man. I love a I love a do it yourself for man. You know the do it guys out there that are yeah. crafting baits, the tackle crafters in the world. I I tip my hat too. I, I goof around with it in the in the lab, and I and I absolutely love it. So Travis said you got some sneaky stuff you might share with us, man. So he does. He does. Yes. I want to definitely get into that, but before we go any further, Michael, give oh, us sure. a little bit of background about yourself and a little bit about what you're up to <clears> now. I know you. You do a little bit of guiding, uh, obviously, on Lake Erie, and you know how to catch some of those big smallmouth, and I'm sure you're excited for the season here. Are you able to get out there right now? So I live about five miles from Lake Erie, more towards uh, the Huron area, so just east of Sandusky. And right now there's still some ice blowing around out there. You know, it really depends on which way the wind's blowing. So if it blows out of the south one day here in the last week, uh, the ice leaves the shore, but then if you get a north wind, it pushes it all back. So it's kind of just being shoved around out there right now. You know, my wife and I and the, you know our our little son and our dog went out to you know by the Bass Islands last week to get lunch. There's icebergs floating out there, and there's some guys in their you know, smaller aluminum boats out there walleye fishing. You know, out out in the ice. So it's starting to break up. You know, usually, you know, last weekend in March, it's you know, the canals, you know, around Lake area for the guys like the largemouth fish and the, you know, and we normally have our first bass club of the year, you know, when I was growing up, you know, that last week. So, you know, we were still a little early, but the walleye fishing is going to start picking up here in the next couple of weeks, you know, and they'll be getting out and, uh, you know, and then, you know, first week of April is when the bass really starts going. So. But, Respawn. Yeah, I know. It's, what do you like? It's, what's going to be your first uh, technique? Uh, you know, you go out for the first time this spring. What's going to be on your uh, deck for these mm. Lake Erie smallmouth? Probably like a tube, tube and a hair jig. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, and a few oh, areas, nice. maybe a blade bait. You know, it's it's real rocky mm. out there. And I get hung up a lot. And I, I, I have not a whole lot of patience these days to be getting hung up on the rocks. So I don't throw a blade bait <laughs> as, as much as some guys do, unless they're really in there biting, you know, and they're going to – you know, jump on it a little bit faster, but I like the tube, um, and a uh, hair jig mostly, you know, that time mm. of the year baits more on the bottom, you know, um, and then I move into a drop shot once the season starts moving in, you know, once we get, you know, third, fourth weekend of April, early May, then I'll, I'll start adding that to my lineup along with swim baits, jerk baits, you know, you know my favorite's jerk bait fishing. Is it mm. in the springtime? Yeah, it's for us on around the Bass Islands. It, it's not a real long season because the water warms up so fast around there. Oh wow! Um, so it's not like St. Clair where you get a fresh flowing, you know, nice water coming year round where they bite it longer. Seems like mm. it, it's for me. You know, once you get to towards the end of May, it seems to really slow down. It's and you can get a few followers, but there's other baits that get a lot more bites. And it's you know that's all just my style. Someone's probably yeah, right. like, I mean, I fish the islands and we crush them until the middle of June. <laughs> <on a dirt laughs> <day. laughs> but for me, you know, it's just what you have confidence. And yeah. what is your number one jerk bait of choice out there? Brand. So I got the, uh, the Stray King one. that has got the three hooks. I'm not sure the size on it. And yep. I like the Spro McStick a lot. Really? Um, really? Yeah. I, yeah. Cool. Crazy, dude. I really yeah. like that in the pro blue dude. color. Oh, that's, that's my color. Yep. And then, uh, they eat it on Smith one. mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, on the, the Spro McStick, the 95 or the 115? Uh 115. The one? Okay, gotcha. Uh cool. it's either 115 or 110. I'm not sure what they call it, but it's their, I got their one. larger on. one. I want, I want to look. Yeah. And then the you know the mega bass. I seem to, you know, I'll throw the mega bass once the fish are, you know, water warms up a hair, but when the water's in the mid 40s, upper 40s, I like the mixed stick. 
a little bit better. I feel like it's got a wider action on it, keeps it in a smaller area. Um, and then 115. Is that what it that's is? It. 150. Yep, that's it. Pro, that's my favorite blue color you, right there. If the water blue if you're is interested. fairly clear. Okay. You know, and then the clown one's the second favorite. Have you dabbled in the, the deep mix stick? I have not bought any of those okay. yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. You? It's called it's called the McRip. I have one in, but I haven't thrown it. I'm usually in that three to five. I don't fish real deep for the large. And they've got a walleye going. bait out now too. That's kind of like a jerk bait style, I think, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. But mm. yeah, those are the ones I and I started getting into the jerk bait craze where I started just buying just everything because I was just, mm. you know, there's just so many colors and you want to try new baits and but if it's you know and I did start throwing that Rapala perch colored one, the shadow wrap. Oh, that yeah. was a pretty awesome one. bait. Yeah, I was, and I don't know why I was surprised by it, but I, I was, I mean, it hung. I mean, I have a lot of confidence in that one now. Wow. How about that? That's cool. Perch. Yeah, I but, mean, that's a big piece of their diet, right? So, yeah, yeah, perch, and mm. they're eating, like, I'll, you know, I catch a bunch of small eyes out there now that are spitting up baby walleye. Um, what? Yeah, and little white perch, and but I mean, I catch multiple small eyes every year now, spitting up baby walleyes, and I'm saying like you know, mm. three inches, four inches long, and they just get up shallower. Some you know, some of those bass areas, you know, it's shallow like 15, 20 foot, and I think they get in those little, like, like little nursery areas, and they just get in those rocks and and just eat them. Yeah. Wow. Sure. It, but, can you go back to the hair jig because the, yeah. the, the, the hair jig always fascinates me. Travis, he, he put on a pretty much a clinic for me on super high sun, flat water, casting it as humanly far as he could. He put his whole body into it. And that was critical to him catching these smallmouth. And and he and it was really cool to watch. But there's so much hair out there. Like I've seen some really cool jigs, and but mm -hmm. I always see the same one for the smallie guys. It's the marabou one. So mine aren't well, I, I mean, I do throw marabou ones for myself. You know, I have yeah. a little website called Venture Lures, and I don't sell them on there, but I do have okay. the ones I'm tying are little bucktails like this. Oh, you're talking hair jig, yeah. bucktail yeah, hair old, jig. Yeah, old school bucktail. And I've got a, Whoa. a little custom football head that I put. So my crawl ones are like an olive, olive orange. Oh, and, and, no, and no trailer on that. That's just exactly how you're I fishing. just throw it just like that. Where's my Three sixteenths or is that a quarter? This is a So I got a quarter and a five sixteenths. Okay. Usually, I mean, I, I fish a quarter all the way. I, you know, it depends on the wind and the waves and all that. But I'll throw a quarter sure. all the way out to, you know, mid-20s, you know, because there's so little resistance with the hair. It just totally collapses sure. along the hook. Yeah. And it just rifles to the bottom. And I can feel the bottom real good with a quarter inch. Wow. So, um, And that's just deer hair, man. That's it. That's yep. bucktail. Yep. And Straight I just up buy bucktail. Them in, and I just buy them in uh, bucktails like this. Yeah. And I just cut off the bottom ends of the bucktail are hollow. And when yeah. you tie them, they kind of flare out. So I kind of stay yep. away from this bottom section. I kind of start uh, great here tip. on up. And yep. that's what I tie mine with. And some of them you, you get, they're, the tails are like all curly cued and they're not really that nice. So I kind of just throw those out and start fresh. But then, you know, I got some that are chartreuse and lemon. Oh, oh wow, here, man. It's a 5 yeah. Then I yeah. got this is a cool color. It's like a gray and um, olive. Oh yeah, color. like a minnow, like like a walleye almost maybe. Yeah. Hey, Tackle Craft wants to know: Did you harvest that buck yourself? Well, that's <laughs> the only way to do it, right? I mean, if you're going to tie your own buck, <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah. I mean, I live out here in the woods. I mean, I go out and slaughter a couple deer. Yeah. And you dye them. your own hair. That's so cool, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. My wife does that for me. I I got her out in the garage with an apron on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and here's like a white and gray one but yeah what's that hooks looks really good to me what is that hook man that's a gamagatsu 604 thank you very so much Ga that's, gami is only one so there's they have the 111 i think it's the 111 it's the light wire mm -hmm. version but mm -hmm. it's not when you look at the hook it's not much different in thickness and yeah. diameter but the strength of the two hooks is incredible difference yeah, I this mean that doesn't of, flex, man. No, it doesn't flex, and you. So, I mean, this is like premium bucktail, a good hook. I mean, it's epoxy coated, and a lot of you know guys will tie a bucktails, but they'll use a, a inferior hook. And those smallies in the springtime when their jaws are real hard and bony, and you start 
flexing on those hooks start flexing. I mean, you can get maybe one or two fish out of it. Wow. So that's great. Great. So I put that heavier gum of God. So it, and it's not a, like a flipping style. I mean, it's still a light wire, but it is very stout and it does not flex much. Eight pound, six pound test. I mean, what yeah, are you I throwing use, this on? I use, usually use eight braid to fluoro. Uh, so right? I use straight floral. So if I'm fishing, fishing, uh, anything that's Time. on the bottom, yeah. Time out. Why? It's, what? It's, what? What? Well, because there's so many rocks out on Lake Erie, I would constantly be retying leaders nonstop. Oh, oh, I got you. But okay. I also like when I'm pulling a tube across the bottom or a hair jig, I like that feel that stretch a little bit because I can feel ah. the rocks or I can, I don't know, I just, maybe it's old school from fishing floor yeah, carpenter yeah. mono all year. I can, I can get it off the rocks better with the sure, floor carbon. Sure. Oh, oh, absolutely. So, so, so what brand floor carbon, man? Now you, you got me like technical here. I got to um, ask the question. For years, I used the Berkeley and uh, okay. the hundred percent. I had no problem yeah. with that. And part of, so I'm with Luz and I got hooked up a strike King also with the combination there. And I'm going to try their floor carbon this year. Oh, and we'll see how cool. that goes. So, okay, cool. Um, but you know, it's just, I think as long as the line goes on straight, if you spool it on, where it's not coiling as you put it on. Sure. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And you'll, and if, I mean, I'll have, to, and you know, if you use a heavier enough bait, I mean, it rifles to the bottom, whether it's a yeah. tube or a, I mean, and you keep it straight, it doesn't get a lot of chance to coil, you know, okay. unless it gets real bad. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I just want to say on these, on these bucktail jigs, uh, which I've, I've used quite a bit in the past, especially mm -hmm. around uh, Sturgeon Bay and stuff back home. But, when I fish Lake Erie, or I'm sorry, Lake Ontario and some of that clear water, I really prefer the marabou and swimming it through the water column where with these bucktails, this is great way to present a bait that's very uh, amazing in cold water. Yeah. I mean, really, colder temperatures. You're able to drag that now almost like a tube or a normal yeah. football jig. Right. And so, and you have a little bit dirtier water. Is that why you're using that over, say, a one eighth ounce black marabou jig. So I look at the, the hair jig for me as an alternative for a tube. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Like I don't view this as the same as a marabou jig at all. Okay. okay. Like I view, view a marabou right. jig as something I would reel through the water column, you know, when the fish are up around the spawning area, you know, when the fish are just starting to move off the water is real shallow. Like I'm looking to mimic, and this is like, you know, like, like you said, Travis, this is cold water bait. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or, and I've read articles, you know, uh, um, uh, what's his name in Connecticut, Paul uh, Mueller. He said he's done real well in the middle of the, you know, the summer fishing uh, bucktail mm -hmm. jigs in the bottom and those high pressure situations like you would fish, you know, old school guys might go to bear hair in the summertime on the Potomac River or the Ohio River for those real fickle bass. Um, but for me, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, just a cold water bait um, right. only. And then, yeah, there's not a, uh, I mean, there's no rules out there that says you can't throw that in the middle of the summer. It's just everyone yeah. has in their head, well, this is a cold water bait. Uh, should I throw it? You know, when I first started throwing a marabou jig, so in like 2009, I was kind of told that this is what you throw pre-spawn. And people still didn't really know because it, so, it wasn't really mainstream back then. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really know, or at least I didn't know, is this marabou jig going to work in the summer? But I ended up going to Champlain, had a bunch of schooling fish that I could not get to react to a topwater bait. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try this eighth ounce of marabou out there and reel it through the water column. And sure enough, it worked. And now I think we know that a marabou jig is year-round application. Absolutely, yep. Where these could certainly, why wouldn't they work? I yeah. mean- you know, like in the cold water, I was going to say why this is so good. You know, if you're to fish a tube on the bottom in, in the plastic and, you know, in the waters in the 40s, or upper 40s or whatever, it's going to get real stiff just based off of what plastic does. And that's why I got, a lot of guys would flip with pork, you know, in the early spring is because they said, you know, the, yeah. the plastic chunks would re be real stiff in the water. So if you have this bucktail on the bottom of the water here, this hair comes to life in the water, no, no matter if it's 35 degrees or 55 degrees or 65 degrees. So if it's down there laying on the bottom and the waves are coming and your lines and moving around, this hair's down there just moving around and it's just coming to life and it's just sitting on the bottom. And I think that's why the, the bucktail jig is so good in the cold water is because no, with that cold water, it still looks alive. Deer you know, hair is hollow, right? 
So th that that bottom section, from what I'm hearing, is the like hollow that bottom one, right? third is the hollow, and that's mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of the I think the fly guys like to use for their yeah. their, their their dry flies to keep them up. That's right. Yep. You know, like that. Uh, I don't even know the real famous one, but <laughs> I mean, we, you know, we've all gone into like little motels I, I and used, seen one I, on I the used, side there. Oh yeah, I used to tie. What the hell was it called, man? I can't even remember. Uh, hey, let me ask Caddis. I think Caddis fly. Yeah, 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 that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Michael, if someone wanted to get into tying their own uh, bucktails and, and jigs like that, is it a big learning process? Like, can a newbie learn the process and then, say, within a week, be able to put together something that looks decent? Yeah. Or is it complicated? It can be. The hardest part, you know, you, I mean, you can, like, I'm, where's my vice? I have the oldest piece of shit vice. That's like twenty dollars <laughs> that I've been uh -huh. used. I have probably tied two thousand jigs on it. I mean, flipping oh, jigs, sure. hair jigs, just I mean, and that's probably a very conservative number, probably way more. Oh, but I bet you have. You can, I mean, so the tr the biggest thing was finding a thread that when you pulled on it, it didn't break. Wouldn't break, but wasn't too heavy when it sat on the collar here. It didn't look just look like a big mess. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've settled on a, it's called Danville and it's, uh, I forget the size, but it's, it looks great. So if you zoom in here, you guys see, yeah, that, mm -hmm. you can see how tight it is right there and how clean it is. Yes. Um, yep. but your collar, I got a jig head here that I tie them on. Well, see, that would drive one. me crazy. I would want to have it precise, snug. Just like my soft plastics, if one's half crooked on the hook, right, I, I'm out of the game. Me too. So, because for guys like us, you know, and I think there's a lot more people like us getting into fishing that are have the same type of thought as us. Like when we're going to cast something, we want it to cast and and be proud of what we're casting and be confident with it, right? Heck yeah, man. You know, I mean, that's this is such a cool hobby. You know, it's but. This collar right here, it's perfectly round. If you were to go to like get a bunch of different molds, some molds they kind of angle down. And I've made yep. a mistake years ago. Um, and what happens when you tie is that thread wants to slide down the shank, and then you're eventually the, the hair is just going to call off. So you want to start off with a flat collar, and they do make some, you know, molds that are ha have the flat collar right here. So you got to start with a wrap. So I usually lay it on there and I wrap it around three times and I pull it tight and now my thread can just hang there. And you take it. So I just take a, so like my bait fish patterns, they're a little bit fuller and these are like a four inch, but when they get wet, they get much smaller. I keep on messing up which direction to go, but no, you're doing good. My crawls. I like to, this is about, I think three, three and a half. Um, but I like them to be a little bit less full. So you just take a pinch and if it's too much, you know, you really have to wrap and it gets kind of, but if you just take a little pinch and then like a pinch would be like maybe a quarter of an inch wide of bucktail. And then I take a pair of scissors and I just cut it. So it's nice and flat at a little bit of an angle. Cause when mm -hmm. you wrap it, it wants to correct itself and then go straight on the collar. But so I just pop it on there. I get my thread and I go around five times with all of it on top. And then, what I, and then the real important part of getting so this bucktail never comes off is to smash the bucktail. This is the way I do it all the way around the collar evenly. So the hair is distributed evenly around the collar. So that means there, so that way there's no weak point of hair on the collar when you go to pull. So what would happen if I would left a big chunk of it on top and I cinched it down, the top part's going to get all the pressure and it's going to be the weak part on the bottom and what hairs mm -hmm. down there, it's eventually going to pull out. So you want to distribute the hair as evenly as possible. And that seems like big pain in the butt and it kind of is, but you know, I can, this little one, this little olive one right here, I can do about 13 to 15 of them in an hour. That's awesome. So I, that's, I love your football head, man. You pour yeah. those yourself. So I got a, a little company in, or it's not, it's actually a big, big company in Illinois that pours them for me, but they, there's a guy there that I worked with to make it. You know, mm. he sends me prototypes. Um, if you can see on it, I had them drill really small holes. I saw so the holes, I, man. So, so when cool. I poured the powder paint, it goes inside, and then it's going to want to stick and hold on to the head longer. And that's why I put those uh, holes on oh, the football. Very head. smart. Very smart. And 
the barb's the same thing. There's double barb top and bottom, just like my uh, see that. just like my uh, ball head. Mm -hmm. But so David, David in the comments goes, uh, looks like a football head instead of a round head. What's the best time to use either? And what's your so, theory behind that? If I'm so, if I'm going to be using the olive colored one, looking to imitate a, a crawfish, I go with the football. If I'm using the minnow style one, like the five sixteenths, where I'm going to want to be able to move it more, you know, um, and maybe kind of swim it real slowly across the bottom, I go with the football. Um, hmm. In the past, I've always done it. I, I've done a bunch of runs for friends and custom customers. Um, and I would do whatever they want. Some guys wanted a football that had a bait fish head, but um, I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal if you move it fairly fast across or, you know, at a, some sort of pace. I think this uh, round ball is going to be fine, you know? Mm. So that's kind of. So, so you make those for your personal use, but do you have those for sale on your website? Yeah. So I, I've no. tied up about a hundred of them. Um, they're kind of a, all these hair jigs I have, I mean, these are unique colors that I think smallmouth guys would like, you know, I've scoured all the online stores, you know, and there's none of them on there like this, you know, um, especially with a Gamagatsu hook. So uh -huh. I did, I, I made up a special run of a hundred of them for your, uh, for your fans. Nice. Um, so, and what doesn't get sold, you know, I will be using What's yeah, the right. name of the What's the name of the site? Yeah, how can people want to uh, know? Yeah, how can people yeah, find you? It's uh, VentureLures.com, and I did I did create a discount code for your for anybody that wants to purchase anything. Okay. Um, and it's just MSC fifteen, so Smallmouth Crush fifteen, but it's just the initials MSC. Cool. Yeah. You I mean got SMC or MSC? So SMC. Okay, cool. Yep. SMC 15. We're going to try to get that up on the screen here. Yeah. Yeah, cool. But Man, you know, those the, are great things, man. I love it. Yeah, they're – I mean, I've been a long-time tackle crafter. I've got a – you guys probably heard of Jan's Net Craft. They were – growing up, they were only like a half hour from my house, so I'd go up there all the time and just – Oh, wow. <laughs> spend all my money looking at lure building supplies. And, um, you know, I've, hair jigs are now – really nice looking where i feel you know really confident selling them um you know no, they, they look start off, they, they look sorry. great i just i just want to say one thing i'm i'm gonna be straight up i i i feel like i'm pretty good at catching smallmouth mm -hmm. I, I haven't thrown the bucktail man seven eight years i'll be straight up and honest yeah. with you guys uh you got me fueled up to try and you know give these a try uh, i'd like to know particularly like where are you throwing these? Uh, so it's cold water staging areas. Or is it? I mean, what's the deepest you'll fish those, and what's the shallowest, and and what are you looking for? So just pretty much your pre-spawn area. So I mean, I'll if you know I got some stuff in super shallow water, like I mean five seven foot of water when the water is like you know 47, 48 degrees, you know, and I'll throw one of these little uh, olive footballs right here up there. Oh, nice. So, but then, you know, at, you know, that, that time of the year, you know, you kind of watch, you know, the moon phases I do and to see what type of groups of fish are coming in you can, there's different groups everywhere that time of the year. Um, so if I go out a little deeper, you know, off a break out in front of a bay or something where they stage, you know, I'll use a bait fish one or I'll use the, you know, and I mean, I've got five sixteenths in the football uh, ones too. You know, they're not on the site yet, but quarter ounce is a really good one for, are you, are you throwing that on a bait cast or a spinning? Maybe you answered that already. Spinning. You are. Okay. I think, but I am going to start playing around with the bait fish one, the five sixteenths, you know, um, with a bait caster though. Okay. Are you, this year. so are you fishing it just like you would a tube on the bottom? So your, your crayfish yep. patterns, are you, is it a drag and stop? Yep. Drag and stop it, you know, and just kind of, I mean, I fish tubes a lot unless I'm snapping it just kind of like a, like a slow pull drag. Uh huh. Um, and I fish my olive hair jigs like that. I'll do it sometimes with the, you know, the bait fish ones, but then I'll even like slowly crawl them, you know, like, you know, a lot, you know, you know a lot of guys like to slowly crawl up, you know, Kytex swim baits across the bottom in the early oh, yeah. Same thing with this, but I mean, it can be the difference of like struggling some days and 
<laughs> putting some fish in the boat. I mean, it's wow. <laughs> okay. You remember like I'm... 10 years ago, whatever, when you, the word of the black marabou jig started getting out and everybody up north has been like, it's not a sea. We've been doing this for years and us down here, we're just kind of catching wind of it. I mean, it's the same thing with the hair jig, uh, the, you know, the bucktail one. The bucktail. But dang, you know, but I mean, but I mean, I, and I'll say this. I've looked at prices on all the sites. You know, I sell mine, you know, the five six five sixteens for four fifty a piece, you know, and there's like VMC's got one that are similar, you know, but and they're three ninety nine. There's some that are three twenty five. But I think with the Gamagatsu and the hook styles, I mean yeah. I think mine's yeah, I think the the price is right for but I also look I hate losing a hair jig that I tie. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. Eric, you're probably the same way with the bait. You know, you paint and work. Oh, and like, it's nothing, like, nothing worse, it's man. Like, man, I just sat there and spent five minutes tying up that hair jig, and it's on the bottom now. It makes me it mad. kills me, man. Yeah, I tied up this little shaky jig worm. I and know, man, I, 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 lo cool. I lost a couple in, in, on my last trips, but I man, I, I caught the big fish of the trip, which is kind of cool. Hey, so. Sean, yeah. Sean, uh, in the chat says he only sees the five sixteenth ones on the website. Is that correct? The, so. I haven't figured it all out. If he goes there, he'll have to play around. There's a little note at the bottom there. So it will say five sixteenths will be in the bait fish, five sixteenths. And then I've also got three sixteenths in some bait fish patterns also. But okay. the olive crawfish pattern ones are quarter ounce only. I think so, maybe you sold out on the football heads. I'm on your site. They're gone. On the, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't that. Look at your website. Well, I, I don't see any. I don't see any I just, crawfish. I did just get an order. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at hair jigs. I'd be I'm buying seeing, up some right now if I wasn't stuck here in this live stream. Oh, I see him. You got to use the scroll bar. Sorry, Michael. Sorry. Never mind. Never mind. False alarm, everybody. He's not <laughs> sold out. Well, the olive hair jig ones are almost. Are but they? For I mean, I'll be adding more. I just tried Please. to get a bunch for the show. Okay. Yeah. You know? So, um, but there, uh, no, I'm, I'm fired up because like I said, I, I, Eric, you've, you've always talked about bucktail and messing around with stuff like that. And, um, I tell you all sorts uh, of crazy stuff with, how about this guys? Think about this. Be how many times have you guys read an in fisherman magazine in the last 15 years? And they always have like four or five bucktail jig articles in there uh -huh. Happens oh, every year. Right. Yeah. They had a whole article. They had those, a whole section on hair jigs. Why don't more guys try them? Like those articles are not full of crap. <laughs> I'll, no, I'll say that it's it's legit. Yeah, but I'm wondering why. Is it because all the phenomena of all these Japanese and this high tech tackle coming out, where this old school stuff is being forgotten, and they want to? I mean, the fishing market is flooded. Yeah, with tackle, like you could never ever use everything you wanted to do in ten years. Not even close. Mm -hmm. So, but no. Nope. I would say this. I mean, if you, you, you spot you're throwing tubes in or whatever you like to throw and then you're not getting bit, I think you guys that are really, really serious about smallmouth fishing or, you know, in spot of bass, we this too. I think you'd be crazy not to throw a hair jig in there before you left your spot. Okay. <laughs> but some days I'll, they're not. But I'll say this also, you know, I mean, some days they're not biting it and it's just, but it, it's, it can be that good. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Like Travis, I mean, I've watched your videos on some of those dark colored waters you fish in New York in the early spring. Yes. For smallies. Like, I yep. think this olive with the orange in there would just slaughter them. Oh, yeah. yeah we're going to try it this, this spring. I promise. <laughs> Let me know and I'll, and I'll send some over. I love it. Uh, God, I had a really good question about that. And now I lost my train of thought. Think, think, think. It'll come back to me. I know you do a lot of plastics too. Can we kind of talk about some of those uh, yeah. those plastics? Because you are a drop shot and fool. You do like to uh, trigger a bite with the mm -hmm. old drop shot, just like me. Yeah. I'll and say. I know it. you have. Uh, no, I, I. You sent me some of your baits, and uh, they truly do work. I I used them last summer. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Matt from Bass Talk Live called me up. It was probably a year and a half ago now. He's like, dude, Michael send you any of those yet? I go, I don't even know nothing about it. He's like, man, <laughs> you got to check this out. I'm like, okay. And then we started talking and I'm like, yeah, this is, uh, 
this is the deal. It's uh, I know you you were trying to really kind of use it more for yourself, and it kind of you know grew into what you're doing today as as a uh, a guide as well as I guess a manufacturer of these baits and kind of yeah. crafting them in your at your house, but. They're catching on. They're they catching work. on, and they're it's 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 never going to be anything more than guys that are probably looking for tack or craft tackle. You know what I mean? Okay. And there's yep. but there's a definite underground. It's kind of like the guys that that paint your guys' baits. I mean, there's oh, yeah. guys that are just into the, having custom painted crankbaits. There's guys that are in that buying hand poured baits. You Big know, time. and there's always going to be that niche side market of of bass tackle. You know. Um, and it's with the internet and everything, you know, to the learning curve, you know, is, is so fast now with YouTube and, you know, and these, you know, these forums you can get into and just find your answers and brainstorm. And tr tr it is, it's, and it's so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, fishing is almost like a, an expensive cult to be a member of. <laughs> yeah, it's very you but, know very true man but it's awesome but it it has i i my first bait that I ever came out with is a swim bait and it's called the steady swimmer so the idea behind the steady swimmer was i wanted a bait that put off a lot of action in the water and i mean it it looks kind of stupid it doesn't look like a kai tech and i get that but it's got a thicker tail on it and a thicker midsection so People think it's a it, it's a slow rolling bait. You just kind of you know slow roll through the water column or crank across the bottom real slow like a Kitek. And this is not that type of bait. This is the one you're going to want to get close to the bottom, and you're going to want to kind of re reel it to a medium medium fast retrieve. And th this I've for people that use it have tried it on. They said they've never felt a swim bait that has this much action for how small it is. And this is less than three inches long. Wow, and cool. and it is. And I've got a video on my uh, on on the website with it under the water, and it kind of slows down and shows how much action that it has. Um, and it's it really does with that braid to fluorocarbon leader on it. I mean, there's nothing. That, I, I mean, I shouldn't say it. I've not tried them all. It has a lot of action for how small it is. And um, it started off, you know, taking them on my guide trips and just just as a hobby. You know, the first first uh, first or second time out on a guide trip in the springtime. You know, I caught a, a six pounder, multiple five pounders. And these are just like bogus colors that I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And, you know, <laughs> and then I started making some more colors, you know, and customers want them. Um, but they're all I pretty much use now. I, I have made a new swim bait that is for slow rolling. It's right here. It's called the Bonneville. And it's got a thinner tail on it. And you can creep this one extremely slow across the bottom. So now this is the one I'm using in the early year you know you know the water and the water's real cold um i've got five or six colors on this one and you know it works extremely good it's got a nice little shimmy to it and you know they both have a shimmy and i think it's got something to do with the flat top on it yeah know, where i pour but they don't roll you know we've all thrown skinny dippers on jig heads mm -hmm. those have a real hard roll like they, they almost really go do. like 180 on both sides oh, absolutely you know both of mine they only roll about a quarter but watching the, my smaller one is less than three inches, and I've got a three and a quarter inch. The smaller one, it does something totally cool, and that's the one I like the most. Watching it on on the on film underwater, it kicks, and all of a sudden the tail stops for a second, and it starts kicking again. So it stops kicking, and, and then it glides, and then it starts kicking again. And I think that's why it's probably so good, is because it's you know when that fish stops or when that tail stops kicking and it starts gliding, that's something different um, that the fish don't see. So, and if you watch my video on my website there, you'll be able to see it where it stops kicking and then starts again. Oh, very cool. But good looking I, color there, man. It's a nice looking perch. Those yeah, are hand she, pour, right? You're open yep, pouring those, right? Right. I got a, I got three different perch colors. I got a, this one's pretty cool. I actually, yeah, I got three different perch. This is chartreuse perch. Mm -hmm. And I got clear water perch right here. Nice, yeah. And then I got another one that's called party perch. It's got chartreuse yeah. lines in the middle with a chartreuse tail. Oh, yeah. Are you uh, are you throwing that just on a ball head, your football head, basically naked? Yeah. Now, do you I'll, know your naked I'll, football head? 
so I'll throw it with my ball head mostly. And I like oh, a, okay. So I've got a bunch of different ball head sizes with different hook sizes. Um, mm-hmm. If you use my favorites is the five sixteenth. Yeah. Um, but if I'm up shallow and the water's you know if it's flat out, I go to the three sixteenth. Um, dude, dude, I caught one of my biggest bass two years ago on Smith Mountain Lake, tight lining on the Gamakatsu ball head with you, you know three sixteenth mm-hmm. ounce in a three inch freaking spark shad. It was a seven pounder. And then turned around and threw a big glide bait and caught a four and a half. My partner's like, what are you doing, dude? Like, yeah, make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> On my ball head here, what I did is I, I have, you know, when I designed it three years ago, I had them dual flat keeper. in the back. Dual oh, keeper. That's on it. so smart. And that's, a, and that's the same hook. But then it's got a flat back on the back of the ball. So that bait snugs right up against the back. Really you know, snugs up. So usually when you, you know, it goes all the way around again. It makes it set back a little bit, and there's more yeah. of a gap. So now that the bait, and it doesn't matter. I mean, a Kitech would fit awesome, Her. snug Her. up against that. Are those on your website for sale as well? Yep. So these are five fifty for five. They're expensive again, but you know, when you go to the Gami. But I have purchased. Now I'm selling them also with Hayabusa jig heads. Yeah, I saw that. The Hayabusas are very, very similar. Big fan. The ga- but the gauge is a little bit heavier than the Gami. So. Mm. I would think, you know, if you want to go with a little bit heavier uh, line on it, or I think it'd be better maybe for your for your A-rigs than these yeah. from, you know, throwing it on 20 pound or whatever. I think those, the Hayabusas would be a better choice than the, than the uh, Gami. Very um, similar to the shooting ball head, the Hayabusa. I mean, it, yeah, it, I, yeah, love their little, yeah. I love their little shooting ball head. Yeah. So, yeah. Mike, I got a question. So, I have my little Venture jig box yeah. right here, if you can nice. see that. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you got in there, Travis? Show well, us. I, I'm just going to stick with the swim baits because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Okay. But my favorite, and I don't know if you have that on the website. Yeah. That's a Gobi plus, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my best seller right there. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So I'm going to give you guys a quick, and, and actually I'm, I'm now, did you at, buy those from him before you did his podcast? So you knew about Michael, you were buying his lures. I've had these for almost a, two years now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I reached yeah. out cool. to Travis maybe two years ago and, and sent him some stuff. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Hey, thanks for sharing those, Travis, with me. <laughs> you don't come up to me anyways. You're always down there at the Bojangles. So shut don't up. you worry. Don't you Bojangles. worry. Man. Go sit I, that, there, your Bojangles, and go flip. Michael, fucking, I'm so, I'm so glad whole, you showed me flip, that and that you called him, flip, man. He's sneaky. At the You're hearty. sneaky. Go flip Cypress Cypress stumps you with freaking scoots, all right? You and sneaky, Scooter go. You're so sneaky. Uh, it's just another nail in the coffin. Why I oughta. I gotta you're say off. something before oh. we get any further. Before we get into d- too deep here, I just you're had a guess on. Me, brother. I had one of the best Alabama rig slingers in the history mm-hmm. of this planet. Better than Kyle Carpenter, by the way. Oh, well, Kyle, if you're watching. I'm just saying. Uh, I no, I went. I mean, Kyle's way of throwing a rig and how he does it is a lot different than what this guy's theory is. So there's two different. Uh, Larry Mazer, I had him on the podcast, and that show won't come out probably until August as well. But I want to drop a couple hints and I want to talk mm-hmm. to Michael about this. Uh, Larry throws an a rig all the time. And I'm actually going to try to get him on. I was so impressed with the podcast. I'm going to try to get him on a live stream way sooner uh, before before his actual podcast comes out in August to talk about it because it was mind-blowing. Again, like, like I keep saying this, but it really was. I'm taking notes in this podcast. I'm ordering stuff, you know, behind the <laughs> scenes. And uh, <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous. But, but Larry... Uh, He's big into the the standard swim baits, but he loves a two inch swim bait as well. He loves a tiny swim bait, mm-hmm. and it got me thinking because I mean, like on a rigging, on a rigging, and wow. it got me thinking. Mm. It got me thinking because I'm definitely going to do what he's been telling me, and we're going to share this with you guys in the future here. But uh, one nice thing about the podcast, I get first dibs and all these new ideas that I'm hearing about. I think this would be the perfect 
set up on an A rig? Do you guys throw this on an A rig? Have you seen it? Have you used it? Have you heard about it? So I've not heard them. I've heard a lot of guys talk. There's so much action. They're like, they're like, that would be awesome on a Kitech or on a A rig. But this is what they're thinking. It's got so much more action. They're mm -hmm. thinking rigging them all with Kitechs and having that be the one different. They, ah. they said, they said, and I, I've never caught a bass on an A rig. <laughs> There's a disclaimer. Wow. I've never wow. caught a bass on an A rig. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know, but all, I mean, I, I know all about bass fishing. So everything you guys say about it makes sense to me. But I, I, the, but the one thing I hear repeated is that the bass seem to buy, bite the one bait that's a little bit different, one different color, a different size or something. I mean, is that true? Is, is that what guys are saying? I've heard no. that often. Okay. Well, his theory is he's got, a, he, he runs, he has three A rigs on his deck full time. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Year round. And this dude catches them. Doesn't matter if he's on Oneida, the Great Lakes, Lake Erie. I've heard. That. Yeah. Yeah. Dude throws an A rig like you would never believe in places. I'm talking from five feet out to 60. I learned so much on Monday. It was crazy. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Yeah. Dude, I'm I'm throwing that bad boy all summer long. But what really intrigued me was the downsizing approach that he uses on not all the time, certain situations. Mm -hmm. Is and, it like a match the hatch thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. It certainly is. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> why am I keeping it a secret? It's, he's on my freaking podcast. He throws that. <laughs> he throws that when the bait, uh, you know, so you're going to get the emerald shiners, things like that early in the season uh, from ice out, you know, until just after the spawn is when he's going to a two inch bait quite a bit on mm -hmm. his A rigs. And these are standard, these are full size bad boy looking A rigs, right? With the big ass yeah, wires. Yeah. And I mean, it does, it looks like a mismatch. Yeah. Like he's going big when he does it, right? Yeah. On the A rig. Yeah. It's not some little, always a little finessey one either. You know what I mean? And so I, I think something like this mm -hmm. four, and then maybe your, your middle one, yeah. that chartreuse steel. Uh, that's how I see it. I think you definitely would want to experiment and perhaps that Kai tech idea with, yeah. with the Kai techs. And then he actually mentioned, um, thankfully I bought a bunch. So you guys, I'm not going to be sold out on them. Uh, there was another company he mentioned. Oh, here it is. The Opti shad, uh, makes well, a two inch. Is that the company name? Opti shad Optima. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the Opti right. Shad he likes to throw. So uh yeah. there's a little there's a little uh teaser for you guys for an upcoming podcast, but it really got me it got got the wheels turning. And I think mm -hmm. that would make an excellent A rig bait so as too. well. Yeah. Yeah. And I got I'm surprised. No A rig fish. No, for you, I, I I need to. I just uh, I don't know what it is. I just after you listen to this guy, if you actually listen to Larry, you're gonna be like, Yep, that's all I need the rest of my life. Like, right. <laughs> like that, like he was that convinced. Travis, dude. I, look, dude, every podcast you're saying the same thing. You're going to have so many different techniques in your brain. You are dude, screwed. I got like the best Carolina rig guy. Like I'm <laughs> committed to Carolina rigs. Now I'm committed to A rigs. The jerk bait shit. Oh my God. Dude, there's, there's so Kermit many good to me, man. And there's so JP many good things. Yeah. Oh, JP throws on these jerk baits, on these jackal jerk baits. Like, dude. Yeah. An enough is enough. How much have you I spent so far this year, dude? You're, I would not want to die it over there. Yeah, right, right, Michael. Oh, it dude. gets it gets in your brain. Like it, it's like I know. I there's so much I but I've kind of like backed off that. Like I went through so like I would buy like as a kid, I would go to big lots because big lots would get all the stuff Walmart wouldn't sell. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of old like blue Fox shyster. Yeah. And all this yeah. Stuff. I would just go like, if, if I got five bucks, I'm like mom, you got to take me to big lots. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. I just go in there like that's it, 50 cents. And I would just walk out and I just wanted to build an inventory of tackle. I didn't care what it was. Travis just did that at fleet farm. <laughs> I did. <laughs> he, was, he was live. I, and, he was live at me. I'm like, Travis, the, what are you doing? The he goes, worms any good. I'm like, Everything. Yeah, I got Berkeley Max in for dollar ninety seven a bag. Those That's are pretty so tough to crazy. pass up. Yeah, you yeah, had to I buy had everything to. there. You had to. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. only did I go to one flea farm, everyone. 
I went to six in about a week span. Hey, Sometimes you definitely got my tight. you got my order on that stuff, right? You got my I stuff. I gotta ask you guys a question. Okay. I got a question. Five for you packs. Guys. Ten. You owe me ten now because you lost the bet. Anyway, go ahead. All right. So here's my question. We got jerk baits and crank baits all with different actions, right? Yes. Okay. Why don't we ever talk about swim baits that have a different action? Because is it because everything is compared from a Kai Tech that's moves at such no. a slow speed? Hey, dude, before Kai Tech, the, you mentioned the skinny dipper. That was my first right. like introduction. And and by the way, the action that you described, that rolling, that yeah. kicking action, that's a special action, man. That's, that's I feel like it's an under, but it's, it's not. Time. I think swim bait actions aren't talked about a lot. I would agree. About, but they are very like, different. Like like crankbait actions are. I mean, like the uh, serious crankbait guys will have five different actions sometimes on, on their deck. I agree with that. I, I agree. I, at, at the same time, I think that the southern guys with their plastic swim baits probably focus and, and have a little bit more emphasis on, a, on how a swim bait tracks and swims. Versus us northern guys who really, I don't care what part of the country up north you live, when you think swim baits for smallmouth, you you instantly go to Kai Tech. Right. I would I would agree. Yet I th Travis, honestly, that's all I see you throw. Yeah. True. I would say probably. And believe me, I'm digging around in your Kai Tech box when we go. I ain't bringing my own. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'd say probably <laughs> seriously. 95% of the smallmouth guys that are just exclusively smallmouth are fishing high techs only, exclusively. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis is. And he's got the right colors, man. So I'm digging yeah. around his box when I go up north. I mean, and, and, I'm and yeah, trying to compete with that. I mean, and Michael, what I what I love about this is we can have a serious talk. You know, obviously, Michael wants to sell baits, but we love talking fishing and we all use multiple brands. That's why I never understood how someone can just be paired no. with one company. And be like, this is the way you do it. Right. Where no, it's uh, you know, look at I agree. Nico. Nico was on last week. You don't think I'm gonna be trying that winnow swim bait? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to be. Yeah, like if I'm gonna go like fish a tournament or whatever, I'm gonna have my swim baits tied on and kitex or another one, just because I mean I like to present different actions to the bait, but I mean mine is so different of an action than all the others that I've, I mean, I mean, I've never even caught a fish on a kite tech, but I know I need to start incorporating that because they're not going to bite mine all the time. Yeah. You know, and I think for me to sit here and tell people that they're going to bite this all the time. And that, I mean, that's insanity for me to say that it's just uh -huh. not the case. But I think, I, I think your bait, if I'm thinking about your bait and I'm looking at your bait and I'm going, man, you know what? I'd rather be dragging your bait on a football head or a round ball head with that big tail kick action. That's very different than a kite tech. A Kai Tech, I don't, I don't, you know, it's just a different action. It's like a crankbait. It it's totally different. It's like a Killer B2 that's got this crazy action or a, a BDS3 versus, you know, uh, uh, a little Nori's Worming crankshot. They're all different profiles, different actions, subtle, super aggressive, yeah. roll, pitch. I mean, and does it matter? I pro I think it probably does. But I'll say this also. I mean, we all know those work. I mean, that, that, that's not what we're here to dispute or anything. But I've had two guys tell me that they went out with mine, a Kai Tech and another brand. And one of the guys said mine caught more than both of them. It's so crazy. But it could have been that type of day where they just didn't want that. You know what I mean? And sure. that's why yeah, right. have different jerk baits, different different crank baits. And you're like, man, they were eating a 1.5. So like this is how I tell people when I'm trying to introduce. So the Kai Tech is like the Strike King 1.5. Everybody's got yeah. them in their box. Everybody knows they work. You know? But you on the Potomac or whatever, you got your 1.5 or whatever you use, but you also you know you have a Zoom uh, uh, balsa bait tied on yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, And you go down I the same I, I rarely throw the 1.5 because everybody's throwing it. I'm, I'm yeah, always throwing something different. That's kind of like my philosophy is it's mm -hmm. they're two different baits. You can go through the area, and they're both yep. going to work. So I agree. Michael, these are the three colors that I have a lot of in my box. Mm -hmm. So what do you call that one? So put, banana, bruise put banana. that one away. That's like an old one. And I, my system is so much better now. Like I'm embarrassed okay. by that one. <laughs> well, I like it. Yeah, but it's. I'll so, catch them on that. Yeah. So that one is this one. This is what this one is turned into. This is the chartreuse perch. Okay. 
So that was like a early original one for us. All right, I like that one. Is this a bad one? Then I got two. No, no that's it's not. that's Gobi Plus. Okay, Gobi Plus. This one has a little bit of a uh, flake in it. And that one's called Holy Moly. It's okay, got a green pumpkin belly and a shark. Holy Moly top and Gobi Plus. These yeah. are these are what I'm going to be throwing. I'll be good. Yeah. So my number one, you know, Gobi Plus works all the time. I use a this one right here's. I use in the springtime if it's a little off color. It's called Mossback Shiner. It's like Gobi Plus, but it's got a oh, wow. green green prism in the center of it. Oh shit! It might be hard to see, but I like. Then that I got one. another one. I got another one called Casino. It's right here. Oh. It looks like this. It's. It's just as good as Gobi Plus, but for some reason people don't buy it as much. It's a little bit oh, yeah. lighter green pumpkin, and it's got violet mm -hmm. flake in the bottom. See it there? Yeah. Got violet and silver oh, yeah. flake on the bottom. And then it's got a, a blue hue up there blue on the hue. green pumpkin. You can kind of see it there. Hey, in the comments here, I saw a good one. Okay. Punch fishing goes. Can you explain how we should be fishing the venture swim baits versus how we fish like a Kai Tech or a Spark Shad? Uh, I want to kind of take over on on that real quick, and then let Michael answer. Uh, the Kai Tech and the Spark Shad. It's so it's such a versatile way. I think you can fish these swim baits the same, where it's either a straight retrieve through the water column. Or, you know, depending on what depth, you know, sink rate and, and, the, and the, the head and stuff like that. You know, if you have fish that are suspended in 20 feet of water, eight feet down, uh, a quarter ounce, make a long cast and just kind of pendulum swing that bait back to the boat through that water column. Or get down on the bottom and just tick the bottom. A lot of guys are ticking the bottom with a swim bait. Or... Uh, Another approach is actually dragging that bait continuously on the bottom, but then you can get into, do I drag and stop and, and then inch it along and then another big drag. I mean, there's so many different ways mm -hmm. um, to fish that. And I think the same goes with, I don't think there's a difference between the brands as far as how you fish it. I just think experimenting with the action and see what's working on that particular day. Yeah, right? I totally agree. I do know with mine, so normally when I'm fishing mine, like with the small one, I'll go in, you know, less than 12 foot of water, and I'll either use the 3 16th or the 5 16th. But, you know, if this is the bottom of the water, if it's fairly clear, I like to keep my swim bait about a foot above the bottom for as long as possible. So, um, mm. and I can reel it at a constant retrieve because if this is, if I'm looking to drag this across the bottom, this tail is going to stop a little bit and it's not okay. going to have that action. So I like to keep medium fast retrieve and that tail is just going to, I mean, you'll see it in the video and it really starts moving. Um, so early in the year, I probably wouldn't go with the steady swimmer when that water's in the forties, you know, I'd go with the Kai tech, you know, if you're looking to try something different, I got a, my Bonneville one is real uh it's got a real small tail on let it me make you your screen big for that let's see that yeah so here's my bonneville uh -huh. it's more of a bait fish style it's got little fins on the side but you can see the little tail i mean it just creeps across the bottom super slow or through the water column so if you're looking for a bait to slow roll it's you're not going to want to go with my one i call a steady swimmer you're going to want to go with the one i call the bonneville do you have any more chartreuse perch somebody says it's sold out on your website um I don't. I got an order I'm getting ready to ship out to a store in Michigan, and so I didn't have any more of those. But okay. I do have clear water perch if they want that, or party perch, but um, no. Okay. So. But, Dang. you know, the, the cool thing about fishing, I think, is like, I think new ways of fishing are constantly being discovered. There's no, I, mean, I, I think as soon as you say this is the way you fish something, you're going to be made a fool out of by somebody i mean mm -hmm. there's no written rule in fishing you know and there's always new ways being discovered to catch them so agree i just i just want to i'm i'm responding to a comment here via text 
so so your your bait your baits should probably be moved faster to keep them off the bottom. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. Well, the whole idea with my bait is to get the tail to move. So when you cast it, okay. you know, if you, if you just flip it on the side of the bank, if, you know, if you don't have a boat or go out in your boat and kind of just see what speed makes the bait move. I mean, but the tail absolutely moves. So it's not like, man, I got a bogus bait. This tail doesn't move. I mean, all the tails, move, <laughs> you're not, you're not going to get something like that. But right. if you're looking to like the whole, everybody thinks a lot of times swim baits, it's just like, Kai tech first is what they think. And it's an awesome bait, you know, and then they're just, it seems like that slow retrieve, but this is a bait you want to. So how about this wiggle wart crankbaits, mm -hmm. a lot of action, catch them in the mm -hmm. cold water. And that thing is just going like this and hunting. That's kind of what I think of with my, with my swim bait is you got to get that bait moving to get that action out of it. And once you find that nice retrieve, I mean, I mean, you can burn it back too. And that tail is just going to go crazy. So, but it gets to a point if you go too slow that tail will stop, and that's what and that's the fine line of picking it up and going. But sometimes I'll be reeling it in, and I'll just let it coast and let it just and just kill the bait because the tail's not going to move then, and so it's just mm -hmm. kind of that, that gliding action. So, who's making smart ass comments, Travis? No, I I just <laughs> I, I I I took a peek at Alex. You know, he's down in Kentucky. Our, our intern still don't have a name for him, nickname. It's been you know four months. We're just call him Alex, I guess. Uh, he's down in Kentucky Lake practice for a tournament. And so uh, he was up at O Dark Thirty. I just I, I got a glimpse of him taking a yawn. I so I just picked him. Picked him. Oh. <laughs> um, but so and with the swim baits, you know, they all started off as a piece of wood, and I carved them and sanded there's a lot of sanding but i originally wanted something just different you know that's what i was kind of after but the original thing was i wanted a bait that put off a lot of action lake area on the islands can get kind of dirty in the springtime you know and i just felt when okay. i originally started doing this i didn't think that a kai tech with how subtle that tail is and the action was going to put off enough vibration, vibration in the water where, sure. where it would have been effective so i wanted a bait that still put off a lot of vibration to water it's kind of what i was after and Looking back on it now, I wish I would have done a few things differently <clears throat> just for the, for what it looked, you know, for appearance, but I'm real happy with how it turned out. You know, and I, I almost feel like I got lucky <laughs> because it does what I wanted it to do. And it was the first attempt that I did it. So it's not like I, I mean, took, but you the know. swim bait, I mean, it's color profile and tail action got to be the top thing. You right. know, so it doesn't oh. really matter that it's not a sexy profile bait and, per se. Like, does it catch fish? <laughs> I take out. Yeah. I take, I out take the guide bait over like the the retail bait. Well, I, and Eric, that's where I want to uh, transition this conversation a little bit. Because uh, Michael, you do make you also make one of the dumbest looking uh, drop shot baits on the planet. Yes. Absolutely. I'd like to talk to about that, if we dude. Could. I I agree. <laughs> I'm not here to say that it's not. So he just knows a, it catches them. It does. Like, so it's called the dropper. I mean, what Travis, I, think about the Ned rig. That's about the dumbest looking bait that catches the shit nah. out of it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. So here's what the dropper looks like. So really what I wanted is when I marked the fish on the graph, the bait went straight down to the bottom and didn't spiral. So I wanted to get down to the fish as quickly as possible. Very interesting. And the bait does it. I mean, it rifles to the bottom and there's no spiraling at all. But what I found about the bait also is that, so do you guys ever be out drop shot fishing and it's just a real flat day and there's the fish aren't biting. There's not a lot of action to this bait because it's kind of just like a plate straight piece of plastic. There's a few ridges in the back, but they don't really do it. It's just pretty much for looks. And this ball, I was just kind of trying to make a, like a tail looking thing. And this is how it turned out. But I think, with it not making a lot of action in the water and just kind of sits straight on those days where the fish aren't really active, they're more subtle, you know, they're more willing to come up and bite this thing. It, and it's floating plastic, so it's not going to fall down the side of the line. It's going to sit straight out and it's just going to sit there kind of just straight and you can dead stick it. And then in it, one guy, so I had a, was at a show last year, sports show, booking trips and selling baits. And when guy came up to me, he's like, man, I bought some of your baits last year. He goes, I got out to my truck and I'm like, he's like, man, fucking Michael sold me some shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came back up to me and he goes, he goes, I thought you sold me some, some baits that weren't going to work. He's like, I took them up to St. Clair. He's like, and I caught their butt with them. So, man. but you know, 
Dude, you can't argue. And these with are the and you use base. these on a regular basis when you're yeah, out on Lake Erie. I tried that since I've started making baits three years ago. Like all I pretty much use exclusively before I used the Strike King, Elastic Text and S Worm. I use the Golf Fry, the three inch fry, and I use the Z2. Mm. That's all I use on Lake Erie or anywhere I went for smallmouth fishing. I haven't caught a smallmouth on a, on a commercial bait since I started mm. making these. That's so cool. So good for you. You know, and it's, it, but it's, it, it's all fun. I don't have any really ambitions to ever like do this full time. I'm a teacher and I, and I run a guide service. Guiding is my favorite to do right now. That's um, awesome, man. But hey, so you know, you're an eerie guy, right? Yeah, I live, you know, just five minutes from it. So let's talk about Steve Clapper for a minute. Yeah. So, like, Steve Clapper to me is like, so I've been watching a lot of like flip palette YouTube yeah. videos lately. Yeah. Like, love him. Steve Clapper is like flip palette of Lake Erie for us up here. Wow. I mean, he is just Legend. that type of guy. I mean, he's the the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He'll just good luck finding somebody to say something bad about him. <laughs> was he was he like the, the 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 originator of offshore fishing on Erie? Yeah, him and he had a partner, Larry Williams, and they were just and this is like when I was a kid, I didn't uh you know fish tournaments back then, but I guess I hear from all the guys. I mean, these were the guys that were out going out in the middle of Lake here before anybody went out there. I mean, making right. trips to Peely with no GPSs and they were just crushing it. Steve was, I guess, going over to fish in the Canadian pro circuits from Ohio before people did that. Wow. You know, hey, you know, by the way, Steve's Steve Clapper is going to be on the Sunday Smallmouth crush podcast. So this Sunday, yeah. actually crazy. Yeah. No, he's, you know, and he's, you know, brought a lot of the things we use on Lake Erie, you know, to the market, helped companies with, you know, him and a couple other guys. I mean, he's just, That's awesome. yeah. Top so did he guy. make the original list, Travis, or was that through some of the <laughs> comments that you heard recently? Steve? Yeah. Oh no, he was, he's always on the top. That's awesome, man. Yeah. He came out. I, I probably interviewed him back in January, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's up there in age, right? Uh, I think he's 73, okay. 75, something like that. But he's, uh, you know, he's, I ride big waves for 30 years, 73, you know what I mean? Correct. Uh, yeah. So he's, uh, you know, his, his wife doesn't let him go out by himself anymore. He's got a life jacket on every time he goes out there. Uh, you know, he's getting to that stage in his life where he still loves it, but he just, uh, you know, you got to be a little more, you know how it is out there. It's, it's uh craziness sometimes. I text him. I send him a picture of some new, new uh, baits, you know, my, my ball heads or whatever, or my footballs. And he's like, I'll call you back tomorrow. And he, he's left me a voicemail. And he, first thing he says, he's like, Hey man, I can't wait for spring. So, I mean, he's just <laughs> itching to get out there. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's cool, man. That's super cool. nice guy. And I got some other baits here for some large mouse, Eric. What you oh, got? a hand forward rib crawl. Yeah. For, for like punching. Oh, look at that, like man. That. Goes straight through the slop. Yeah. So I got this. This one I'm not selling yet, but okay. I got some uh crawls that I've been that I got on the store now. My buddies up in Michigan, they fish just a crawl with like they've got a special head they use that I'm not gonna say, but if you just use a ball head or whatever, they use yeah. like a real small crawl, like less than three inches, just on a ball yeah. head. In the early spring, like places you throw a tube or whatever, and they sure. just crush them. So this one is less than three inches, and I got a three and a quarter inch. You know, show, me, I'm the really top, show me the top of the bait, Steve. I mean, um, Michael. Okay. No, the, the with the ribs. Other side. Oh. Sorry. Flip it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice profile, man. Yeah. Mm. So I'm real Dang. excited about these. Um, got a two-tone crawl. Ooh. Like the bass out of the Mississippi River. Dirty. Be, Eating this, eating they that. get the bass, they get so orange out there. The bass on the uh, Potomac and the Upper Bay would be eating the fire out of that, and any tidal river system around here. Yeah, Do you sell the, uh, those too, or no? Yeah, Are they're those... on the website. Yep. Okay. And I got this uh, double trail or what size hook are you putting in that one? This guy right here is going to be pretty awesome on the back of a jig or a swim jig. Oh wow! Sure. Um. So that would be awesome on a Ned, you know. Also, but. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna look to flip this little guy, I yeah. put it on a hook. It gets right to the end. Okay. I'd probably throw it on a Ned. You know, yeah. 
but you can definitely punch with it or flip it, but you'd want to go with a super line, the small super line Gamagatsu hook they make probably or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe that Trocar V, the V flipping hook. Would There's so nice. many different stuff. I mean, I remember like just 10 years ago, I mean, the hooks were so <laughs> the slim choices on hooks to use. Now they have like literally every size hook for anything you want. So true. But yeah. Um, I don't know. It's fun. I mean, it's a good hobby. Gets th gets me through the winter. Yeah, man. man. No doubt about it, man. That's <laughs> awesome, Michael. Good lineup, man. Yeah, yeah this is uh, dang. And I got that tube head, Travis, I was telling you about for snapping. Oh, tubes. yes. So I got it's whoa, inside whoa, that tube whoa, and it's not coming whoa, up. Whoa, 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 what was that? Well, I didn't want to talk about that yet. Oh, okay, okay. Well, nothing. No. So no, we'll here's the deal. So, he's so uh, let me give you, let me give you, listen, I, I full disclosure, guys. I I rarely crack a tube like some of these studs I've been interviewing do it or on a consistent basis. So Michael was the first guy I interviewed on the podcast and we got into this conversation of cracking a tube and I was instantly sold. You remember me drilling you yeah, on yeah, everything yeah. from line to rod it and everything? On, it went on after the show even. Yes. <laughs> Taking notes. Then two weeks later, Steve Clapper comes on. Guess what he's doing? Cracking a tube. Cracking a tube. But the, they all crack the tube the same way. Zona did a Zona Pretty did much. Zona did a YouTube video on cracking a tube. Uh huh. Did you yes, watch it? A number of years ago. Yes. And, but, and, and but are they cracking a tube the way Zona? Why I didn't like? Tube? Why I didn't? Why I didn't like feel compelled to like explore that? Yeah. If I recall right, that video was more about grass and cracking a tube. And, Correct. Right? Correct. Ripping it through Correct. grass. And so well, these no, guys. No, no, it's not ripping it. Meaning he's cracking the line and it's hung up in the grass and he's cracking uh, yes. like slack lines. That's, so it's so not like did, ripping it out of the grass. Yes. What didn't resonate was just that. Like I don't fish a lot of smallmouth in grass. I mean, maybe she, okay. I, I know there's areas. I just let it. I sat on the back burner, right? Didn't pay okay. attention. Fair but when Michael started talking about open water and cracking a tube and Steve Clapper and I mean there's uh, probably three or four guys you, that are I watched heavy your Dobson hitters. show. Dobson said the same thing. He he caught a key fish at that ever or that uh, what is it called? It's not a strand anymore. It's called a uh, I don't know, whatever it's called. He caught a big fish snapping a tube that helped him win it or something he said. So can you just explain to the guest really quickly, fast, yes. the difference between the Zona video? Because when I watched it, I thought about largemouth. You know, there's grass. A lot of the Minnesota guys will throw that money head from, yeah. um, you know, the fighter head for, that they use for the, yeah. the marabou jig. They'll, the jig worm, the jig worm on grass edges. And I'm thinking, oh, tube. Hang it up in grass for largies, crack it like that. It'd be something they'd not seen. Eric, it certainly that. would. It would work. You bring up a good. That's a great question, Eric. Like, so, so let, uh, can you just like really talk, quickly explain? Just, to yeah, me? tell us like if nobody's ever heard of the technique for open water smallmouth yes. fishing with a Thank tube. You. Walk Thank us you. through just like you did with me on the podcast. Just, just a taste of it. Uh, he doesn't have to go in depth. I'm just dying to hear the difference because that was my introduction to cracking a tube. I used to do it with grubs a little bit on the Potomac in grass and had some pretty good success. But I so never I know seen it with a tube. There's a technique. I think it was started by a guy, and I think it was his name's Greg Mangus from indiana northern indiana so these guys in northern indiana and, and the only reason i know about this is because i got some buddies that are really good over there and they kind of give me the lowdown on this techniques that are there usually there. but and i think it's the one you're explaining about what 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 zona does so you act like you're moving the bait like this you're just moving the slack line that's right but you're only moving the bait a little bit yeah is what i think what you might be explaining that zona was saying what hundred like percent. What he was doing in the grass. Yes. Yeah. And he was going, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. But the bait wasn't going anywhere hardly. Yeah. So I, it's almost like the way you would fish a jerk bait on a slack line to get it to move a little bit. Yeah. It's similar to that, I think, what the way Zona yeah. was fishing. But like the way, like for small, he's cracking a tube like I do it. So you throw it into an area, this tube, 
rifles at the bottom real quick. I mean, it's a half ounce tube. I mean, you see, this is just a three and a half inch striking tube and look how <laughs> silly that looks. That's crazy. But it goes to the bottom real fast. And I usually let it sit there for, a, I mean, just a second. And then I just go <laughs> with it. But then wow. as you're moving it, I'm reeling in the slack so I can keep snapping it and keep moving the bait. So I'm looking oh, to move crazy. the bait, you know, a lot versus a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And yeah. so what that is, I think what the fish thinks, I mean, everybody, you know, we all know smallmouth's personalities, but this bait goes to the bottom, it's sitting all of a sudden, and now it just comes snapping off the bottom three times real yeah. fast. And they, yeah. so usually when you go to snap it like the second time, then sometimes third, but mostly it's the second time you go to snap it again and he's on and it's, he's on and, it. and I, and I make a big long cast. So it's usually in the way end of the cast. Wow. You know, and he's a seven and a half you, foot. Michael, weren't you saying that you, you do like, you'll fish that back a couple snaps and then you're reeling that long cast yeah, back so, to the boat. Was that you? Wow. Yeah, that was me the way I fished. Yeah, so I didn't even finish in a cast. No, wow. I, I make it a big cast. I snap it three times. If I don't get bit, I reel it all the way back in. That's so, crazy. And I got to so figure you're counting out. on the getting their attention on the fall and then yep. the cracking, and then if they don't bite, they don't like respond. Yeah, so I'm looking to get a reaction crack. bite off that bait falling and then snapping. Yeah, it. yeah. And so basically, once I got the fish corralled up in an area where I know they're sitting, I keep my boat way up off them and I cast into them. Mm -hmm. And when that bait falls, and so what happens? And so th this is my whole point of reeling it in. Once I get that bait out of the zone of where they're in, it, yeah. it's like this for you throwing your bait up by a spinner or by a log. Once the bait gets three foot past the log, you know, when I was a yeah. shell, I, I mean, I'd get the bait back to me so I can make What's another cast. Point? Sure, right. makes sense. So once that bait gets out of the zone where the fish are sitting in, I just crank it back and I get back in there as fast as I can. And I do it over again. Very cool. Get Eric, remember, right. remember when we left Lake Ontario back in November when that wind started kicking up and you were going to die of hypothermia? And we okay. were on that, and we were in that area where you could see them on the, on the, on the, on the graph and we're like, there's, a hundred smallmouth on that little ledge there. Remember that? He froze. He'll come back in a second. That's a good look. You should screenshot that. Yeah, I know. I saw that. <laughs> but Travis, like sometimes, you know, the smallmouth will go over there and grab it before it even gets to the bottom. Before you even yeah. get to snap it. You know what I mean? It's yep. a, but same thing with a drop shot. If you're going to go, sometimes when you go to engage the reel and you, they're just there already. Sure. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. It is awesome. It intrigues like, me, man. I bought I bought a rod off your recommendations just for this mm -hmm. technique. Like I'm gonna have a rod designated for this uh, yeah. this coming season for sure. It's and it, I mean I hardly ever work a tube across the bottom anymore. Hmm. I it's just I I just I mean I just feel like I've got other baits where I can and but that's my personality. I am so uh, I mean I'm a caster. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I got to get yep. moving. Yeah. I, I just, I was intrigued by all these old school guys that were doing it. And for me, because I, I kind of lost, I don't even drag a tube that much anymore. Yeah. I, I, I don't fish a tube as much as I used to. Lost. Mm -hmm. And I want to definitely get back into it. Welcome back, Eric. Sorry about that guys. That's fine. You got some issues tonight, dude. What's going yeah. on? I have no clue, man. I came back from Florida and my fucking one gig internet's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> my megabit, whatever. Uh, and then tomorrow. I got a no, question Michael. for you. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, Screenshot him. This is insane. What, the, what in the F? What's your question, Brohim? Okay, so there's this Western Maryland smallmouth fishery, right? Michael and Travis. And so I read an article in, in Fisherman. They have the best in-depth, like, Michael, you were talking about the hair jig articles yeah, that they yeah. write. Like, it's no bullshit. I think they deliver the juice, right? And they give you a lot of variety, a lot of perspectives. So um, they're like, try a jerk bait on braid. So I'm like, that sounds crazy. So um, I had the biggest smallmouth that I've ever seen in this lake. Because it's notorious, it's Deep Creek Lake in Western Maryland, for 12 to 14 inch smallies, right? So I went to a deeper, steeper bank. I, I felt like I had located some better fish. And I pulled them off a ledge. And I could see them literally two and three fish were like 
swirling around and like wanting to eat the jerk bait, but wouldn't do it. The harder I snapped, the crazier they got, but I couldn't get them to bite it. It was it color cadence. What could I have done to trigger those fish? Cause they were in the three to four pound range. And on that, I wasn't fishing a tournament, but if you bring four, four or five small mouth in that range, you're killing everybody in a tournament. And this is a tough time yeah. of year. Summertime, a lot of boat traffic, a lot of pressure. How clear is the water? Ultra gin. They, I mean, they probably see the boat and know you're there. It sounds like God. So maybe a longer cast, if you will. Yeah, but okay. I've heard guys throw jerk baits on braid, and they say they can get their jerk baits to do some super wicked things over throwing it yeah. on straight fluorocarbon, like wicked. Yeah, wicked. So, so JP DeRose, I had on the podcast. Crazy. His show didn't come out yet, but he was big time, and he got me ordering a spinning rod for jerk baits now as well um oh, oh, oh I know. Shut up. you owe me yeah. an apology if you I'm if sorry. i see you throwing a spinning rod on a jerk bait i'm gonna punch you in the nose i did say that to you didn't it I? feels so yeah, weird did. to throw a jerk bait on a spinning rod to me it does and it, it does like so my arms start hurting and but hey frank scalish said the same thing what? at times i believe okay you gotta uh, tell me like what's the deal because i was listening to randy blaukett and I was expecting when we were at Will's super cold water, and I was going to finesse jerk bait. You made me throw that big ass Vision One Ten. I didn't have any finesse jerk baits. So, so my plan not, not in the cold water. It, it's oh, going to okay, be more. So tell me what it is. It's going to be more for in the summertime when you got to get that that jerk bait to act like crazy when you're oh. doing some serious jerking. Well, that's what um, I was doing up at Deep Creek. I was telling you, summertime, boat yeah, traffic, yeah. ultra clear water, spooky fish. And I I pulled them off, but I could not get them to eat it. It was driving I, I me know. nutty. Anyway. I, that's, I mean, I think everybody um, runs into that too, though. Okay, you know? so, gotcha. Not, I'm not alone. Nope. It's just, like I said, it's just crazy all these different, everyone's got their like bread and butter technique, all these top I've, small month guys. Eric, you know? I have done this and caught them. Follow them in on jerkbait. And I've had yeah. a, a, a weightless tube, like a smoke colored with like a worm hook on it, cast it no out there. And that way. thing just kind of like just goes like this through the water. And, no and way. Because smoke purple up there is like the god. Yeah, color. that would work. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, something like yeah. that. Never I mean, even thought like, about that. Just like okay, a weightless. Cool. Yeah. Hook. Okay. And, and that thing just kind of just goes like this in yeah. the water. And, and it's they'll just, just eat an it easy then. meal. So like yep. six pound test. Or, I mean, do I have to step yeah. down to five, four? Does no, it matter? You could probably do eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll try it. I, I've noticed like that if I'll step down on my leader for drop shotting up there to six, um, you know, I've done four and it's I mean, they're not really giant smallies. I'll I bet mean, you back off those fish and throw a heavy tube on them that that thing to you could probably catch some. Well, I'm, I'm, I want I can't wait to try some of the things that I've learned tonight and obviously watching some of this. I'd love Travis to come up because I my goal is to catch the Maryland state record on a trout. Swim bait, not smally, but that might yeah, happen yeah. too. But uh, largemouth because they stock it every year with trout, rainbow trout and brown trout, and uh, they're they're trout eaters up there. And cool, I've, yeah, it's it's a goal of mine. So I want to hopefully do it. We'll see. How long do you think it would like if you set out to do that? Is it an attainable goal within like ten years or? So I think I think that if I went up there during or prior to the spawn when the females move up. They're on the secondary points. Everybody puts their dock in. It's all floating docks, no permanent docks. So this is something I learned from Austin at Dreamcatchers Fishing. A lot of those females, they'll, they'll sit up under the docks with the black floats because it warms their belly. They're getting ready to move to the bed. So yeah. they're, they're coming in off the main lake or deeper water. They're moving to secondary points. And I know the spawning coves that they use. I'm real familiar with the largemouth section of the lake because that's what I target when I go up there. They're small as there too, by the way. and um, so I feel like I know the areas and um, yeah, man. And, and if you can coincide it with a trout stocking, so, you know, it, you, you could probably have a good shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I don't think many people, I mean, I talk about it on this podcast. So anybody watching it might have that bright idea, but you know, I've got a guy that did my dock system up there. He lives on the lake. He's a bass fisherman. Oh, actually he lives off the lake, but he's got a bass boat. We did some Wednesday night tournaments up there. We had a little max and experience Travis, which I told you about. Mm -hmm. And, um, Anyway, so he's all down for it, but I want to film it because you know if you catch a if you catch a, a yeah. giant, or, or if you happen to be lucky enough to break the state record or break the, the lake record, that would be pretty cool. 
but it's yeah, attainable. Sure. And there's a Virginia Lake that Steve Chaconis, he's a, he's a bass guide on the Potomac and I've known him forever. Uh, he's got uh, a lake that he fishes. It's a trout stocked lake. He's done a map of the lake. Uh, they've had the West, West Virginia DNR out there and they shocked up, I think one uh, that was 14 Jeez. and they're trout eaters. They're trout Man. eaters. Yeah. So I've got some, I've got some um, rigged up HUD 68s. It's standing timber. So it's uh, yeah, I've got some soft and some hard glides that I'd like to throw up. And you know, you're you're probably going to lose a fifty dollar glide bait trying to do it. But who yeah. cares? You wouldn't at Deep Creek, but on this lake, I mean, you got to have a really good lure retriever to get them back. But uh, I, I don't care. I want to do it. I want to yeah. do it. So then that's uh, that's that's my big bait quest, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now I learned a lot. I learned a lot, uh, especially. I mean, Michael, with the with with all the techniques that you use on Lake Erie, everyone, and, and listen, Lake Erie's the hub for these top smallmouth anglers. No doubt. Like you're around good company, all those Lake Erie boys. Then you get into Canada and you got like another little niche group up there. Um, I mean, it's been learning so much from these. We got Curtis Richardson. Uh, I'll be interviewing tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Simon Frost. We'll be uh, talking with him. Cool who's name. Yeah, it is Simon Frost. Uh, <laughs> heck of a I mean, almost there. good as Michael Simonson, man. I mean, right, you got Simons right. in the house, man. <laughs> there we go. Simon Frost, Michael Simonson. Dang, man, these dudes are. But special. these guys bring the heat, man. When it comes to smallmouth and and Michael, man, I, that's why I wanted to have you come on the live show uh, here. You know, listen oh, to your podcast. Awesome. I mean, it's what we talked about. It was. It's good. Damn. It's awesome to talk with people that just had the same brain thinking with you that just i mean if somebody would listen to us talk like what are those idiots talking about get me out of no, here no 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 like, they, 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 they love it man More. they love it hey michael so so yeah. does eerie travis you i think you've told me this is this true mm-hmm. eerie like literally has the biggest and best population of large smallmouth or no is that not true uh, well let me i, I believe the eastern basin of lake erie has the most numbers of four to four and a half pounds and a little bit, I mean, pushing that five pound range. I think they have the biggest population of those fish out of all the great lakes from what I've experienced. Now, every lake, every lake has their ups and down years. Uh, I truly do feel either last year was a fluke or Ontario's in trouble right now. And I'm hoping. Yeah. You talked about that. Yeah. We talked about that quite a bit earlier. Yeah. I heard so your Travis, show, you were saying does, about that. Does Erie is Erie on the legendary uh, lakes all, tour? Every single Great Lakes is on our legendary lakes tour. All right, is Michael Simonton going to join us on Erie? He might the as legendary well. lakes tour. Oh, I'd love you that, be, Yeah, you want to be part of it, man? Yes. Oh yeah. It it comes with a free sticker. <laughs> then sign me up. Sticker <laughs> for the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dang. Dude. Hey, by the way, Dave Mercer joining us uh, in the chat, and he definitely hey, says Mercer. braid to fluorocarbon leader on his jerk baits, and he says you're a fool. If you rod? Throw, he says you're a fool if you don't throw it on a spinning rod. Yeah. So for all you haters on the stream, including <laughs> you, Tackle Craft, making fun of me for throwing Andy, a jerk bait on I a spinning. I made fun of you too. Dude. Well, I feel like tonight I'm getting redeemed a little bit because I tried to introduce something new, and Travis roasted me. I did. Roasted me. Hey, Michael, I was Yo. in the back of the boat, literally, literally doing this. Finally, I was going because he's on live scope. So this threw me off. I, we're both up front. I don't want to be up front. I don't want to even be throwing a jerk bait, but he's making me do it. So I'm looking at the jerk bait thinking it's my jerk bait. And I'm like snapping the jerk bait. And I'm like, I got the bite. But I, it, Travis is the only one looking at the fish. I was like outside the cone. And yeah, so yeah. it was this dirty joke he was playing. So I'm in the back going, I'm going to get a bite. So I made a super long cast, and I, I have all flora on mine. I don't have any braid to it, right? So I have a 110. I didn't oh. have any of my finesse jerk baits. I forgot it. So I'm going like this. I'm going, literally, I'm taking my rod from the front of my body, and I'm going, snapping it, rotating my body all as hard as I can. I hooked two fish and didn't get either one in. Oh, I was Oh, I was pissed. But literally, you that's the wimpy, only way. You had a wimpy spinning rod. That's why you well, couldn't I, move that I, bait properly. I wanted a finesse jerk bait. I wanted to do something different. Well, you had the wrong jerk was bait. Was there a on video on this? Did I yeah, see yeah. we got I into I, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got yeah, pissed. It almost caused us to break up, man. Yeah, I fucking, yeah. I hated it. 
I didn't want to fish with him anymore. He's a dick. Seriously. I've never, I've never roasted him like that when I'm whipping his ass. Yeah. And there've been many times where I've put the scorch on that guy up front there from the mm. back of the boat. All right. Big oh, plants. Do you got anything else, Michael, in your little uh, arsenal or? He's got uh, a good one. Well, shoot and shit. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I got to get, well, we, we, we talked no, about cracking I mean, the two, but we didn't really talk about the two jig heads. So remember in the podcast that we, that yeah. we taped, we got into what tube head to put in the tube. And you said, well, I'm working on one right now. I'm like, Ooh. I need some. So what is the best tube insert that you found for that technique? So I just want it to be the weight up front. So if you guys have, you know, you've probably seen the big bite one. Zona's got one that he's got for it where the weight's all up front. He's got a flat eye, 60 degree one. So here's, this is what mine. It's, it's a, pretty much like a ball head with no collar on it, but a lot of the weights up front here. So I'm looking mm. to get it to fall straight down faster. And I got a hole in the bottom of it, and that's where, what? and that's where the hole's too big. So I got to send it back for some reviews. But then I'm going to epoxy the rattle in there. So and then you smart. can, then I'll get. So when you snap it, you get that crack of the rattle also. And I'll sell them. Oh. So, so I'll get them with, with rattles and without is what is how I'll sell them. And I'll All right, is that the same Gamakatsu hook? So this is the O'Shaughnessy one. Yeah. And I like the O'Shaughnessy for snapping. Um, tubes. So I think this is, this makes totally sense to me. I feel like I lose a lot less fish with this one on tubes, he heavy tubes. So when you, this hook gets in the fish's mouth and it's rotating like this in there, it gets to a certain point where this, because of the bend and the fish is locked up in here where this hook goes up against the fish's jaw and it can't rotate anymore. So if you were to use a round uh, ball, I guess I watched the video on Ski Reese talking about the straight shank flipping hooks that they use. What kind of those are the, uh, yeah, but, and it's the same philosophy behind it. So this brown bend, it could rotate longer and it has a better sh shot to roll out of the fish's mouth. Very so that's, and that's why sh people think the Shaughnessy is a better hook. Cause you'll throw so, less because it can't rotate so, as much. So one of the, one of the swim jigs, that's one of my favorite and it's not really well known has a, has a Gamakatsu O'Shaughnessy. And I've mm -hmm. noticed my strike to catch ratio has gone way up last year when I started throwing that. swim yeah. jig. I've tried them all. I've tried literally do almost you, every swim jig out there. Do you remember back in the day, all, a lot of spinnerbait companies had a Shaughnessy hooks on it. They that, sure did. Must add made. And that hook yeah. went away for a long time. Yep. And I, I've still got a thousand, three out of Shaughnessy Mustad hooks to make spinnerbaits out of that I haven't got into yet. That's so crazy. Yeah. So How about that. But yeah. That, the, the hum, the hum dinger, I think yes. still uses a uh, uh, Shaughnessy hook and it's yep. a badass little river spinnerbait, man. That hook I, is bad to the bone for spinnerbait. It sure is, man. No question about it, but that yep. swim jig that I throw now, it's a bullet head comes through the grass grate. It's got a Gamakatsu O'Shaughnessy and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm telling you it locks the fish in. I, I don't lose them anymore. I, I, and I've thought about that a lot. I really think it because that hook, like if you think right here, my yeah, he can't see it, but I it can. rotates down and it stops. Yeah. I guess the philosophy is then if you were to use a ball head or a round bend, it would be able to roll more. Yep. You know, I mean, that, that's probably overthinking it. And I've caught him snapping with round bends, but that is Shaughnessy is my favorite right there, that gold one. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I think it's the it's, 114 is what the number it, is. What color is that? That's the gold one. You got gold on that? Gold O'Shaughnessy, yep. Damn, I like it. I'm going to have to get some of them. Yeah. Um, Jeez. But, and like when you're, I don't know, like Super Shark <laughs> 2 hooks are real, are real important. Dude, I got so much crazy shit. Joe Fonzie was on the podcast last week. Now I'm buying Steel Shads up the ass. <laughs> uh, you bought Steel Shads? No, you oh, didn't. Oh, I did. What'd you buy? Come on, oh, man. Steel Shads, yeah. You did not buy a Steel Shad. Dude. After what talking to Joe, you blade better blade? have some in your boat. Uh, it's sick, dude. Do you think the steel shads would work on the upper bay? No. Better than yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Not for, not how we pitch the pilings for largemouth. No. Why not? Uh, it just it won't work, Eric. Okay, I was just curious. Hey guys, are talking about guys are talking about the uh, the rods for cracking the tube. So I went out and, and uh, purchased. Uh, 
you know, I'm big into spreadsheets. Here's my uh, spreadsheet list of all the rods and techniques that I have. But uh, <laughs> let me try to find it. I know it was in the St. Croix Extreme. So I got the 7.6 medium fast for cracking a tube. Good? Yeah. And I don't know. I, I've never fished a St. Croix rod. It depends what, what their medium's like. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, somewhere between medium. But you want to – I mean, I want a fast action. The Extra reason fast or fast? Fast is cool for me. Okay. And the reason, you know, when you go with that medium, it's got more of that parabolic, you know, in the middle of the rod. And when you're snapping that tube, it, it bends too much in the middle of the rod, and it absorbs what you're trying to do with that bait for me. Mm. So when it, you know, that fast action up on top, it's more stiff in the middle of it to pull that bait. And then on that long cast, when you go to set the hook, you know, you're able to set that hook mm. on you know, a long yeah. cast. Is I got a Loomis that might be good for that. Mm. So there's an old Loomis number. I think it's what is it that they a lot of the guys up north. It's for like a seven and a half, like a nine oh two. Is that the number? Mm -hmm. That sounds I like a Dobbins number, but it might be it might be a Loomis or nine. I don't know what it is. Was it a GLX? I don't know the or, or was it an enough, NRX? But okay, it was a it, it was not an NRX. I don't think. No, it wasn't because okay. they've been using Probably it for twenty this. years or more. They've been uh, using my, this rod for have, twenty thirty years. Might have been their G GLX. Yeah, hmm. it was. I think that one. Yeah, it, it's definitely not the NRX, the one that these guys were using, but yeah. it was like the ultimate tube route for those guys in northern Indiana, Very southern cool. Michigan. Very yeah. cool. Hey, Very real cool. quick, I just I have a couple things that uh, that came up uh, while we're having this Ooh. discussion. I I want to give credit where credit is due. So Travis Wise, we are gonna we are gonna give you that uh, that pack, the the uh, Monster Bass Classic. But someone else was a little bit before you, and we missed that. Uh, Ryder. And so I sent him. He, he, he reached out to me on Instagram. Ryder actually did get it correct, although he spelt Berkeley wrong. Uh, so we're going to send a uh, Monster Bass classic winning baits bag, handpicked by Ken Duke, out to you as well, just to make it right. Because I think Alex, the intern, was sleeping on the job or something. <laughs> uh, so big things coming up this week, guys. We, we don't have a show next week. I'm going to be heading down to Tennessee, check out Lake Chickamauga, do a little smallmouth fishing on Watts Bar, and oh, maybe dude, sling, Watts sling, a, Bar. Sling, sling a few uh, true bass swim baits down on Pickwick. You going with Salzy? So Salzy's like, yeah, I'm guiding every day, Brohim. <laughs> oh. So you're just gonna go to the dam and roll around? I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna fish should, right next to him and yeah, explain. just follow him around. Yeah. Oh, that's now, that's awesome. We're, that's actually we're gonna try to we're gonna try to get it together. But the main goal is to go down there and do a little scouting for that Ray Scott Championship deal on Chickamauga. I'm gonna spend two days down there, Was and then ABA? I'll get my back buck, get my butt back up here to PA. I start guiding full time on the Chesapeake the week after. And uh, then it's going to be nothing but craziness. So the reason why we're moving our lives to Mondays is just because of traveling tournaments, things like that. Monday works out best for Eric and I. Uh, Kuda's coming up. Monday Next. night fishing, dude. That's uh, what we're first, calling it. Yeah, Monday there, night. There's Monday night football and there's Monday night fishing. Mo and I coined it. So don't even try to steal that, Travis. You're going to have to buy it from if you want to sell this month. I Monday promise. night fishing. I'm going <laughs> to type it into the comments. Monday night fishing TM. So, guys, head on over to VentureLures.com, SMC15. Get 15% off your order. I know we, I know a lot of you guys blew your wad last week. I apologize. Uh, it was some insane stuff. Uh, I seen the numbers. The sales were off the charts for what, what you guys did to help Nico out and Scott, a uh, great guy. Uh, that's why I felt bad for having Michael on because I'm like, dude, we're draining <laughs> these guys' bank accounts left and hey, right. And, uh, Travis, I got the codes up good until midnight on monday perfect love it if that helps anybody else out yeah absolutely we get a lot of views after the fact so tomorrow and the following day um you know the weekend's pretty strong too so guys will be checking out your baits i'm gonna throw them a little bit more too dude that that swim bait really intrigued me your do yeah. nothing ugly uh <sighs> ugly ass drop shot bait need to maybe start implementing in some situations where those smallmouth get real fussy uh, do nothing we... doesn't have to be ugly, Travis. Do nothing is do nothing. That's all you need to say. <laughs> say it. 
Say it, Travis. Say just say Michael Simonson makes the ugliest drop shot dates on the planet. And you just say he makes the ugliest, most effective drop shot. Do nothing. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that go. might be a little kinder and gentler. Yes. Yes. Seeing how he was nice enough to reach out to you and send you a bunch of free baits that you never threw, you slacker. I threw them, dude. Are I've never joking? seen you put anything on. You never come in the boat with a mouth jack and a big smallmouth, you choke. You're li you lying Get sack of shit. Here. I'm calling you out right now. That box is intact. Show him the box. He'll remember every bait he put in it. There won't be one missing. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, what is that, that sneaky thing? Uh, uh, uh oh, Chess. Hmm. It's my little spider jig I'm working on. Hey, how mm. big is that creature bait that you have? Three inch. Huh. Okay. I got a little jig coming out soon that, that might be a really good uh, trailer to pair that with. Yeah. It's. A nice little compact trailer, and it's got little tails at the end that really kick on it. It's mm -hmm. I'm real excited about it. Is that for sale right now? <clears throat> yeah, those are on the site. Why did you even talk about it? He just I did. did real fast. Oh, let's I'll go over it. real quick. Also, my I've got a little my little <laughs> favorite Ned bait is called the Hector. Uh -oh. It's a little goby bait, uh -oh. and I love this what? on a Ned rig. <laughs> Travis. Get out of here, dude. <laughs> Thank God I don't smallmouth fishing a lot. <laughs> but, I mean... Well, what the hell is this thing you sent me? That's called a supervisor. <laughs> I, that was kind of what I... <laughs> that out, that's is upside that, down right there. That, that that's upside outdated down the way you No. Here's, well, what the hell is that you sent me? I don't it's know another supervisor. <laughs> Frame them, dude. Those are going to be famous. The supervisor. Yeah, that was like my replacement of the Z2 because I liked ah. it so much. So I wanted like a four-inch minnow-style bait that floated, like the like the like that bait did. Mm -hmm. but, so, I don't know. Growing up, you know, I was going on hand-poured websites, and it was fun to buy something different that you couldn't buy from all the big companies. You know, and that's just keeping the hand-poured craft tackle alive dude you're 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 killing it i'm uh i'm serious though i i i'm definitely gonna put your baits in rotation this year those jigs those bucktail jigs you had me at hello and then we're yeah. talking about that new swim bait or well it's been around for a while you've been making that for a while you said it was one mm -hmm. of your first baits you made mm -hmm. um Can't bt uh, not i was gonna say btc brian, Car BTC, where's brian where carpenter where's brian carpenter i man. talked to him he earlier this week he misses us. He misses us. Tell him to get on the show, man. All bring right, him I'll in. Take him back. We're right, in after hours. Let's, open let's lines. It, All right. Let's, let's bring some people on. No, but Matt took that my little swim bait down to Amistad. I sent him some, and he, it was the only bait he said he could get bit on. Uh, like, hmm. I mean, it's yeah. I believe it. Alex, we're gonna we're gonna bring you on real quick. If you got anything to add to the stream, wake up there, Brohim. I've been awake all night. We're having I know a good you. time learning a lot. You go do that. I gotta grab another white claw real quick. <laughs> so um, let's talk about hand poured baits <laughs> versus other baits. Michael. Yeah, I mean, so I think one of the biggest misconceptions about hand pours is people thought is that they're always softer. <coughs> I got some salt in my throat now. Yeah. <laughs> I was just... Take a drink, brother. Yeah, no, that's not I, uh, the truth, man. You can make the density of the plastic any way you yeah, want. Yeah, like, you know, so I buy different blends. Sure. And, like, my swim baits, a certain blend. My you know, my drop shots is a soft. And then my craws are, are a medium blend. So, you know, so, so I kind of pour my baits on what I want them to do, which – you know, the hmm. big store or big companies, they all go into an injection machine, they're all the same blend of plastic, yeah. whether sure. they're pouring lizards, crawls, their drop shot bait, whatever, you know. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do with them. And then in my drop shot, I pour uh, uh, flour salt on them so they don't stick in the bags then. And they all Very stay, cool. yep. stay separated. <laughs> and then there's a company out in Massachusetts, Row Innovations. Yeah, you know, so I um, send all my masters out to them. <coughs> oh man, that salt got me. 
I know it's got you good, man. Yeah. Take your time. Grab a grab a drink if you need it. So I send my masters to Row Innovations and they 3D scan them. Yep. And, and they send me the files, and then I make different sizes, you know, of my baits. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And so I can make them wider. You know, let me go get another bait. Here. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool how he was talking about. I never thought about that making different type of a mixture for a different kind of bait, whether you want like a harder swim bait or a soft swim bait. Mm -hmm. That's there might be yeah. something to that. Yeah, with with uh with with plastics you could do dual density, you could heavily yeah. salt the tail and and light the front to make it a backsliding bait. I mean, yeah, there you could really get exotic with it if you got the time and energy to figure it out, right? That's so here's my yeah. here's my bigger crawl. So these are the same crawl, but they just been scanned and I make different molds for different sizes so like yeah this is I, love one I throw on a, like a ned and yep. this is a three and a quarter and that i would like you know flip with yeah and it's got the ribs nice. on the side yep yep so yep i don't know if everybody knows it but yamamoto's putting more sand than salt in their baits right now really yeah is man that, they switch they switch there's a lot of sand in the yamamoto senkos is that, now you think the same really? money is salt expensive or yes well sand is cheaper than salt i had no yeah. idea true hmm. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, man. Isn't that crazy? So I wonder how they like mix all that up in those inj injection machines, you know, to get it from settling on the bottom. It's crazy, they... man. I think they probably have a stirrer as they're like, you know, they're shooting it, out of a, uh, you know, I don't know how big the drum is, but I, I'm sure they have to continually mix that plastic and the I salt. Would, because They would yeah. have to because it would yeah, just yeah. Gets... sink all the way to the bottom. Then That's I probably bet... the secret of the Senko, right? To get that even distribution of yeah. salt sand yeah. throughout the bait, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's probably the single is the best soft, soft plastic stick bait. Like Yamamoto's brand, I think, is the best one. I mean, I love I think that it, one. It's it's hard to argue with the results, right? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm counting on the uh, the Berkeley General to come through since I picked up about 500 packs for dollar ninety seven at Fleet Farm back in Wisconsin. Well, well, oh, well here's what I, here's what I'll tell you about that man. There is no question. There's something to that scent. I agree. Mm -hmm. No question. The catfish on Lake Erie love gold. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they they eat that stuff up big time. Man. Everything does. Yeah. Yes. I Is keep Matt saying my... the same with catfish and other things. Well, I haven't I haven't used it enough. Um I fought that whole craze for a while. And I'm I'm on board now, but my go to drop shot bait when things just were tough. And I've said this before was the three inch gulp smelt. They catch yeah, that's a good one. Speckled trout too, man. But like I crazy. hate how they would get bent in the bag, and you'd you'd pull it out and you'd be like, "What in the world is this?" Well, <laughs> you, they don't have a long shelf life. I like the ones in that container that are free yeah, swimming. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, those are nice, man. That. Yep. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can so, recharge your baits. Do you think? Let's. All the smaller tournaments that were won, and everybody was using Max Scent, and Max Scent just blew up. Do you think guys were winning tournaments on Max Scent because it was X, or do you think just so many more guys were using it? Because Polinick won on a X Zone, the guy on St. Clair won it on a Z2. Great I mean, question. I, I, I think that's why I fought it, it, Michael. That's why I fought it. Yeah. Because, all right, how do you explain? Berkeley made a big push. Mission. How do you explain? I'm going to tell you two stories about Max Scent. And this is just look for my limited small mouth experience. Very has me on I know where you're going with this. Well, oh, just listen. <laughs> oh, go. I'm going to tell you my two. I'm going to tell you three. I was stories. in the boat. I I know your story. You whip my right. ass on it. All right. Yeah. So what's it? You're, <laughs> way, but you're a way better drop shotter than I am. So how do you explain <clears> it? And you're looking at the electronics, and I'm not even seeing anything. No. Of a lot talking. of times, I was being nice and allowing you to get on you those fish lie. he was yeah, guiding you it sounds like he was no, a good guy Travis has never done that for me he's never like drop now dude no way not how oh, you never on, stay Eric, dude. you have never helped me an inch when i'm with you are you kidding me you want to beat me all the time there's and one right there drop yeah that's what i, I do. never heard the words come out of his mouth next time we're on you turn to the camera and go eric drop first no, bitch, you're trying to drop first every single time. I know you, bro. Don't even try it. Anyway, so that was a max scent because he was using just a regular plastic injected bait, and I was using max scent. So that got my attention. Number two, I was uh, 
I was at Deep Creek Lake, and I'm using a regular injected. So is my buddy. We're looking at the fish on Mega 360, Michael. These are not big smallies, by the way. And we're in a tournament. Mm -hmm. We're trying to catch. Like, we were, we're trying to win. Yeah, and right. So, it's uh, real. So so we were in a barred boat, and my buddy goes, hey, man, this guy's got a bag of, uh, of flat-nosed minnows here. We're, we got to try it. So he literally breaks out of a pack, and the guy was like, don't get into my flat-nosed minnows. And we're like, <laughs> we got We're to. getting in them. So he put it on first. I continue with the injected bait. We're both casting to where we can see the fish. I mean, he's letting me up front. And he's showing me. We got a group of smallmouth. Literally, his first cast, boink, second cast, boink, third cast, boink, three in a row. I'm like, dude, give me one right now. He gave me one first cast, caught one, second cast, caught one. We had a limit in 15 minutes. Yeah. I, 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 how do you argue that, right? I mean, and there was the same profile baits. I'm not going to tell you what I was using, but. You know a flat-nosed minnow, what it looks like, or a worm. Mm -hmm. We're using exactly the same length. It's not like I was using a 5-inch or a 3-inch or a 4. These were the exact same length, same color profile, right? Smoke purple's the deal. Anyway, uh, the the other experiment that I did was the General Travis yeah. on the Albemarle Sound with Scooter, who's a way better fisherman than me. He knows the cypress trees better than me. He knows where the knuckles are on the cypress trees. He can name the bass he's going to catch. He can tell you when he's going to catch them. And we're both throwing tail spinners in our Senkos. I'm using the general. He's using a regular Senko. Mm -hmm. I literally can't keep fish off my line. And I'm not saying I caught a bunch of five-pounders. I caught ones to twos to threes, and maybe one made it in the well for the weigh-in. Yeah. And we're looking at each other going, and I didn't even realize it because I started to think back on, well, why were they eating my tail spinner Senko way more than his? And he tried it the next week with a tail spinner, but not with Berkeley Max, and he did not have nearly the result. It's something about it. I think I'm going to find out this spring when I'm out there every day on the flats. Yeah. Chucking stick baits. And I'll try that. I'll try the general in, in uh, the Max scent and see what happens. Yeah, I would say give your clients like the Max scent. You throw the Senko, or you give one guy a Max scent. Don't. Well, I'm out, dude. I'm out every. Up. Here's the cool part about me being in the back of the boat. I'm on the remote control. Yeah, direct yeah. where we go. Got the power pull button right here. Yeah, and so I get in areas. I drop down. If we're finesse fishing with plastics, if that grass is good, we're gonna be out there slinging all kinds of stuff. And I have a couple cool ideas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I, so to compare, I get to right? I get to experiment. Listen. Yeah. You know, last year I found out that because I was looking for perch mm -hmm. while my clients were fishing largemouth baits. Well, I mean, obviously this bait I'm throwing, I threw a 2.8 Kitek. And yeah. I was, dude, some big large heads were jumping on that little Kitek on the flats. Yeah. Uh, and that surprised me. And I actually started using that a little more often. And so I learn a lot because I throw a lot of different baits. You know, of course, we talked about the giant TRD. That sure. puts fish in the boat. I got another giant bait by Z-Man that I don't feel comfortable talking about just yet. That's going to wreck them. Yeah. Uh, if you guys do any work, you'll find it. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's not what you think. It's but a it's, crab. It's not the crab. <laughs> I got the Nico, but it's giant. It's the by the way, I it's talked to Scott man. earlier today. I think we got some crabs coming our way. Oh, Ooh, I uh, can't wait to try that, man. <laughs> Most we people are disappointed remember? when we get crabs. Yeah. <laughs> Travis, remember remember when we tried the big squids and we couldn't catch a fish on them? Oh, yeah. So one day, so Eric and I, so on Instagram, I, I come across this ad of this company that sells these squid baits. And they got this big-ass squid just gliding through the water. Looks so <laughs> sexy. I'm yeah. like, shit, I'm buying that, right? So I order a bunch. And then I find out they got more stuff. So I buy these crabs. I can see them on the wall over here. Yeah. And so I'm like, Eric, we're going to go out there and we're making this video. It's gonna be crazy. We're gonna catch yeah. big largemouth on this squid. Yeah, but you threw the squid. I threw the crab on a jig. We didn't catch shit, by the way, nope. all day. Nothing. But it was a we. It tried. was a wrong time of year. I agree, but we had to try. We're so excited to try. We tried at the wrong time of year. I know that squid it was, was hot, dude. That the was colors of this funny. squid. Squid yeah, is so I, ugly. Yeah, well, not this squid. Oh, did you show Michael Simonton the squid bait from Nico? I put it I on. Think I got on their website and looked at all their stuff. We stopped talking about that. I'm taking the Nico stuff down uh, tonight. Yeah. No more comments. I'm sorry. Michael, the Instagram this... squid. Yes, that's what I bought. I bought the Instagram squid. Yeah, Michael, this could be this could be the next generation two bait. I don't know, man. It looks pretty cool. I don't know what the uh, smallies, if they're going to react to it or not. 
What? I'm sorry. I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to drop shot that thing. Yeah, you could do so many things with it. I'm going to top water it. <laughs> I'm going to use it as a trailer on the back of a freaking popper. Hey guys, the... <laughs> yeah, you guys want to make a buck, just get tra- – Yeah, guess what? I had to buy some shoes today off of Instagram, and then I found some really cool – Uh, Actually, that JB Langley company – Uh, yeah. They make some good shit, guys, and I, I reached out to them because I wanted to work with them as a partnership because their clothes are excellent. Like, like it fits my style. They're super comfortable, and uh, go check did them out. Reach, Tell us. Did you, did you reach out to them? Yeah, they don't get back to me, dude. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, nobody gets back to you. <laughs> We're busy over here, right? I guess. <laughs> Anyways, they make some good stuff, but I'm a sucker for Instagram ads. Um. <laughs> I do this bad. Eric, you should make an Instagram ad that says like how cool it is to send your co-host all the free baits you get or something like that. You get all of them. I'm gonna hook you guys up in the future. You know, I'm starting to think more uh, logically about this, and uh, I'm working with companies. You, you'll get your stuff. Don't worry. I believe you. I mean, Eric, we had some very productive phone calls this week. I think Travis has a lot of good plans. And I think he's gonna oh, do. Good. Wow, oh yeah very interesting stuff yeah Good. listen between Good. what eric has going on and what we have coming up for you guys um I, I, you know I, i'm really start starting to take this more as a it, this the youtube channel what we have created here i enjoy it a lot more than guiding i'm just going to be honest um and it's a lot of fun and it's definitely working out and so i want to continue growing this whole portion and bring more content to you I, again i want to thank you guys because without you i there's no way without the followers that we have you know to have almost 300 <coughs> live views right now still uh, on this channel and i've seen the numbers that you do with bait companies uh you know when you purchase their products it, it'll blow your mind and so i'm just really thankful for everybody that watches us you know we don't get shitty comments from people there ain't a lot of hate mail you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i just wish that little right then I, I wish that little technical deal with youtube would get fixed because i got that viral video that never went viral that i put out on monday and it pisses me off michael so. michael would you throw this little would you drop shot that man with that little yes that yeah. tail that can't be like this tail will never wear out and it will hold that down some. eric I can't. I can't. It's my ever. We're I saving that ever. for a Patreon, you tard. Well, who's going to make it? I can't tie these up in volume. I got the hookup. What? Well, you're yeah. going to have somebody tie a thousand of these up? Sure. Just no put problem. That man. Down. Yeah. You mean this one, too? Travis okay. is going to add that to his arsenal. <laughs> I already throw something like that. I've been for years. Uh -oh. You don't have anything uh -oh. like to throw. You got what, nothing. What kind like of tail that. is that? Like, is a, I can. A that's the secret. That's a secret sauce. Okay. Secret sauce. A zonker? Is, is that a zonker tail? Is that what they're called? It's not oh. a zonker. Guess no, what I bought rabbit. off of Instagram the other day. So I'm going to put this on oh, my for phone. The phone. Your phone land. When I'm in my boat. <laughs> you guys, my this die. thing listens go. to you, man. And then it just tells you everything you want in life. All you got to do is just look at the ads and just your life is complete, dude. Just hit <laughs> buy. I got so point. sick of ads on Facebook, so I quit. Like, well, the Facebook ads are retarded. Yes. <laughs> like, I hate Facebook so but much. But now, dude, like, I'm totally getting into. It. Listen, I I'm trying to save up about thirty-five grand so I can become a Walmart drop shipper, and uh, so I got involved big deep into this YouTube video from a Walmart, Instagram. A yeah, dude. I'm hey, my iPad's that. gonna die, guys. So I gotta go. I'm like, starting all these businesses. You're all right, man. Stick with us, dude. It's just all getting right. good. Well, when it dies, you'll know why. Just gonna die. <laughs> when I go off into the abyss. Anyways, we are on the after hours portion of the show. Michael, thanks for coming on in case we yeah. do lose you. Um, we'll, all having me. Thank yeah, you, we'll let you go, dude. Um, shit. Keep in touch, dude. For yeah. real. I'd like to have you back. Yeah, Great shoot stuff. me a text if you want some hair drinks or whatever. I'll let you know what I got back or I got left. and I'll, Or if I want some more, I'll tie you guys up some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yes. Wait. Great thank stuff, you, Michael. Man. Thank you. Thank Michael, you. I, I, I ordered some, so I ordered 70 bucks of his jigs tonight, and I'm going to try them out. Yeah. That was good, dude. 
Dude awesome. knows how to catch fish. No. Well, yeah, you, you were pretty enthusiastic. You must oh, be going man. crazy with all these great podcasts, dude. I don't know how you're dealing with it because it's not, it can't be healthy for your brain. I, I want to hear, I have a, I have a business expense sheet. I'll pull up right here for you. Okay. I'm not saying this to brag. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm sharing this with you. You mean what you've spent of what on, I spent on tackle on new month. lures this year, this month. Cause, Cause I don't even want to go into March or I'm sorry, February, February was ridiculous. <laughs> so what 26, I'm curious to hear, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to 26, interrupt. 25, 402, 261, 116, 171, 423, 20, 228, 96, 238, 95. So far in oh, wow. March. All right. Let me ask you a question. Done with it. Wow. And do I well, dare say $3,599? That was Don't for, get me started on that. All right. All right. So, so the, you got to qualify some of that. So how much of that expense was things you didn't plan on buying that were all a result of, it. of oh I have everything I need. Oh my God. You guys know I work with the real shot. I call the real shot and tell them this is the order I need. You guys know I work with Z man. I get the order of Z man products. I need for the summer, for the year, all this extra stuff is doing the pot. Every other podcast I record, I'm spending money on these baits these guys are talking about. And I, I'm not like that. Like, I wouldn't, if I didn't believe, like, see the passion of these guys. And because, uh, you know, I downsized my collection here. I don't, I don't want to get over bombarded with stuff. But there's a lot of things I've been missing in my arsenals. Because I was so simple-minded. Yeah. Dude, when it comes to catching smallmouth, you, you mean you're finally starting to see things my way? Ooh. I'm addicted, dude. Uh oh, uh oh. So Travis, Sean brought it up too, and I was thinking the same thing. I mean, a teacher can write off their classroom supplies on their taxes. Are you not? I mean, you're a fisherman. You're a guide. Can you, Rohim? I, I take a loss every four years or every. I take a. Uh, no. Yeah. 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 So listen, uh, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't talk tax. Well, yeah. I pay my taxes. I support what the government's doing. In Never case mind. there's an IRS, right. you got me going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to talk too much about that. Anyway, you take every legitimate expense you can. I like that crawl worm. I think that's going to be money. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can shorten it down. That's pretty cool, man. Man, I'm Absolutely. pretty cool. Glad I got a pack of those. Nice. Hey, and here's another thing, guys. So like. I, I when when Larry talks about uh God, not only do they talk about a rigs, but then after the show we start talking about spoons. Like you should see these conversations. So so Larry is a huge spoon guy. So wait, me uh, you and Larry spooned? Yeah, so we spooned. So now <laughs> he's telling me how to rig this thing up. So he's sending me pictures of that hook on the top. Is that a Hopkins spoon? Yeah, you see that? Yeah, Shit, mm -hmm. man. dude, like. So the conversations after the podcast don't stop. Damn. And then it's just, then we just get into it and it's more and more and more. And it's like, wow, that dude brings up a really good point. You know, uh, it, it's just crazy. So like when, when, when Fonzie came on and talked about the steel shed, Eric, there is definitely a time and a place for that bait in my Dang. mind now. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got a few. Do you have the right colors? Um, well, I, I wasn't thinking about it for smallmouth. How about okay? Let me ask you this, Eric. Yeah. On an Alabama rig, what size willow leaf would you recommend, or would you gravitate towards, or have you ever well, not thought about it? That's a great question because if you're a spinnerbait guy, you're always thinking about blade size combination. Mm -hmm. So just like Michael said. You know, with swim baits, people think swim baits, but they're not thinking about the actions. You could you could take Alabama rigging to the art of somebody who really understands spinner baits and blade combinations and colors, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Is there I mean, I learned I learned from one of the top smallmouth anglers. What configuration of an Alabama rig is he throwing when it's cloudy? Yeah, and what is he throwing when it's sunny? And this guy has tons of success. So 
of course I'm going to look at it hard, realize I don't have the right stuff and go spend money on getting the right stuff. Right. Isn't that crazy? Uh, <clears throat> when does it end? Do you guys think there's a technique that you don't have to go down a rabbit hole on? Like, where if you just throw three baits, that covers you for everything. I mean, something like, I mean, I'm sure you could find certain baits that cover about 95% of a technique, but I mean, for, I mean, especially people like Travis, they need a hundred percent of that, every possibility covered in those big tournaments. Is there a bait or a technique that you no, can do that? I don't think you, I don't think you do. I think Travis got along just fine. Look at, look at the trophies on the wall, keeping it fairly simple. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the best tournament fishermen I know is Scooter Lily, my partner down in Carolinas, dude. It's I've seen his gear. I've seen his setup. He's got confidence baits. He's looking for active fish. You can keep it absolutely simple if you want to and do extremely well. But it is exciting to think about these techniques and how you would implement them. Oh, yeah. sure. You know what of I mean? Course. Like That's what I'm digging with these podcasts and learning. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I, know. Man, I mean, you're, you're speaking my language. I, that's the magic of fishing for me is exploring new techniques, baits. Mm -hmm. But I, look, I've got my confidence stuff I go back to. You know, when the money's on the line, I know what I want to throw. I know the baits that put yeah. fish in the boat for me. So, you know, but but there have been some like eye-opening experiences learned from other anglers, things you watch on YouTube, things that I found on my own that nobody threw that I thought of that, you know, I bought and said, hey, I want to explore like the whole bladed crank category. I've told you a bunch of these anecdotal stories. I know you call bullshit on them all the time, but I think you're starting to see that it ain't bullshit. And sometimes there are some really specific things that are different and unique that are, that can get, get fish in the boat for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, fish get, fish get conditioned. You know, talking to Brett Anderson <clears throat> really blew my mind. Hmm. Kentucky Lake, best ledge lake in the country at one point, right? Kentucky no, Lake has changed. Those big schools are still out there. They're still on the ledges. He says, this is flat out fact, Panoptics has changed the behavior of those schools of fish on ledges. Wow. You can no longer go through with the techniques that you used to and wreck them. You've got the finesse them up now. And you're lucky to get two or three bites on schools where you could have caught 20 pounds out of. Wow. Wild. Wow. <laughs> We could, you know, wow. So, so th there's a conversation. Is panoptics going to change fish behavior now that they're really easy to find and see? You know, who knows? I don't know. Smallmouth may it, be a different animal. I think it I will. Know. I think it will in, in certain bodies of water. Definitely. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So I, I don't yeah. know about all of them. I don't think we're there yet. We're far. Yeah. I think we're, I think we have years before that happens. Yeah. Like I, I was on Kerr. And I was fishing with a pretty, pretty, pretty stout dude. And he had panoptics. And Travis, he, he didn't have panoptics on his motor. He had it on a hand mount that he made himself before they came out with that little thing you can swivel and shine. You know, you know the uh, accessory that you probably have coming this year. He made his own. And he'd been doing that because he's a big, crappy fisherman. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we would run up to a dock, put the trolling motor down. And believe me, we weren't like running up to the dock on plane. He got off plane very far away. So, the, you know, you wanted to come up gently. Yeah. And literally, these fish have been so beat up in this general area. And I think enough people are having live scope. They hear the ping and they're gone. Wow. We watched them. So I wonder, can fish, and this is shallow water, by the way. I'm not in 30 feet. The dock's in seven. Are they, do they hear that? A lot do they of feel people, it? I mean, a lot of people... They, a lot of people believe they do. Yeah. So I don't know. Are you, mm -hmm. uh, have you seen any changes like that with smallies or no? I mean, I've been in areas where it was frustrating. They went bite. Yeah. But that, I've that never, would I've never seen them leave. Not. Yeah. Have you noticed that on, on large mouth, you know, when you're, when you're shining under docks or anything like that, did they become uncatchable? So I don't, I don't get to mess around with that too much. Okay, that's fair. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm just curious yeah. what your opinion is because you, you're. Hey guys, uh, in the comments, we're getting a lot of good feedback. Let me know if you're new. Love to hear from the newbies as well. To the Smallmouth Crush live show. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to be doing every Monday. Hey, Bo Judd, man, you're welcome, man. Thanks for saying so, Bo. Bo Judd, I appreciate that, man. Yes, sir. Happy to help, brother. 
I don't want to go down the electronics loophole, but there's so many. Uh, I mean, because as those fish get conditioned to it, that technology is going to, I mean, I mean, I'd be willing to bet Garmin's not just going to sit back and rest their feet up on this technology. They want to make it even better. They want to make it even clearer. I mean, at some point, it's got to, it's got to reach the point of you can see the what kind of fish it is. You can see. I mean, it's, it's got to reach a point at some yeah. time in the future where it's just like, too easy. Like that's a three pounder. This is yeah. a four. That's a well. One. It's already there if you have it really dialed in under the right conditions. Um, Wait a minute. You can look at a fish and go, "That's a four pounder. That's a one pounder. That's a two pounder." Yeah, you can. No, do I'm saying, it. I'm saying where they list it next to the fish oh. swimming. There's a <laughs> there's a two pound dot running on this guy. There's a four pounder over here. Yes, and then it tells you where that what that fish had for breakfast yep. and where is he going next. Yeah, it shows you his heart rate. And he's always getting too excited. <laughs> he's about to, uh, you know, like, what I always wanted to do was put a chip in a fish and see where those schools go throughout the day. That's what and there's cool. got to yeah. be that technology. Like, yeah. if we could figure out a way to put a little chip in their back fin with GPS tracker, mm -hmm. make it commercially available. Now you, you, you catch a big four or five pounder that's chilling with a bunch of them. And you know how those schools just disappear? Well, now you can track that thing. That would be. But is that taking the magic out of fishing? I like to get bites, dude. I yeah, told you that I before. Mean, but at the end of the day, doesn't that like take the magic out of what's going on? Yeah, I would definitely try. I it. could see that. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be more of an interesting science experiment than a commercial opportunity. Because I agree with that, Eric said. I mean, you're going to have people literally just tracking schools of five pounders running around the lake and these fish are going to have 20 holes in their mouth and not be able to eat real food. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, would you rather be the, would you rather be the John Cox that, you know, gets away from the group and fish shallow and, you know, no electronics stealth turns it all off. And I mean, you can't say you know, he doesn't use electronics. Water. I don't think that's no, what I'm saying statement. is, is even when he was smallmouth fishing, I don't think I remember him having panoptics in his crest liner up there, and he did pretty good just fishing visible cover. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think he's just such a natural angler that that works yeah. for him, and that's his style. There's other people that you take their electronics off their boat; they're gonna be they're gonna be lost. They don't have no clue what to do. But I mean, there's just something. I mean, he's just one of those anglers that. He might not just need that stuff. I mean, he obviously has a pretty clear. I mean, he's, yeah. he's in the top, he caught the big bass and he's top five in their tournament at Smith Lake today. I mean, the guy just he does it everywhere. It's unconventional, but it works for him. And I think that's a lot of fishing. It just you got to go back to what works for you. It's like we were just talking about Scooter. He knows those cypress knees. Yeah. He knows those knuckles. Yeah. That works for him, and it obviously works well. So why change? Yeah, no, I mean, he, he's, he's fished more than just those cypress. I mean, you know, he's fished all over the country. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, but no, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I just wonder, look, man, I mean, you know, when I saw Travis catching those fish on the jerk bait the first time he showed me live scope, and look, I put a live scope on Scooter's boat, and, you know, we went to Hartwell, and it said fish structure. There was a buoy. It said fish structure. So we're breaking in his Triton before the national championship. We're dialing in the panoptics. I'd watched a YouTube video. Because, of course, Travis wasn't going to help me. So I had all the settings that I needed, right? What the hell does and, that uh, mean? You know what that means. So, no, um, I don't. It, you know, I texted you know him the other day, asked him a question. He says, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's, it's just it's just you get you get limited response from him, man. He didn't want to give up the secrets to his buddies. Anyway, so literally, Alex, we see this thing says fish, fish structure. Yeah. I'm like, well, fuck, let's go over there, man. So we literally went over there. I, I dropped, and I watched my drop shot going down on the screen, and Scooter was drop shotting too, which was incredible that he actually had a spin around his hand. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so much fun. And they weren't big spots, but it was on Russell. And, man, I was just like, that's the craziest thing I think I've ever seen. Watching fish eat it. It's so Seeing cool. your little, you know, shad-shaped worm, which is about that big. Yeah. I watched the fish swim over to it, and I'm like, I think he's got it. And, you know, the tension's there, and you pull him up. And I'm like, no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way. you got to be careful, too, because I remember Travis saying one time that he would, he'd see the fish swimming towards it, and he'd set the hook for it. They even got over there because he knew they were going to go and get it. And <laughs> I, I, I had that same conversation with him, actually, after the term. I go, dude, man, I think you're setting the hook too early. 
<laughs> I was. It's hard. I would yeah, I mean, it. you kind of got to feel it first, right? But yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's that. Yeah. Whole thing. Ideally, yes. Well, yeah, and I know sometimes fish can bite and you don't feel it, you know, the way they're swimming with the bait or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. They spit it, you know. That was on uh, Lake Cumberson when I really. Cumberson? Cumberland. When I <laughs> you, you, you just said Cumberson. It was well, I was listening to Seven you're... Mary Three before the podcast, and one of their songs uh, is, is Cumberson, so maybe that's why. Uh, it's um, on your mind. Cumberson on the brain. Seven Mary Three is a great band, by the way. It's just they're so – they never made it big. They got a lot of great songs. Yeah, what's the one I really like? There's seven Mary Three songs. Probably Hold Cumbersome. On. Water's Edge. My, my. All right, man, you're all over it, dude. Yeah, dude, I love them. Let me look. 1998, seven. Brohim. Seven Mary Three. <laughs> I know I got one in my... Um, I got one in my thing. Artist. There we go. Oh, there's Cumbersome. I have to Google a Seven Mary Three even as I've never heard of it. No, nah, it's before your time, dude. I figured. I'll tell you what's on my playlist. Let's let's just go there. Why why won't we? Screw it. What do you got? Copyright. So for my uh, tournament day music, I got Cumberson, <laughs> Dracula by Rob Zombie. Oh my god. <laughs> Try what? I know. I didn't even think of that until now. Yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God smack, uh, keep away, living dead girl, my my seven Mary three, never gonna stop. Rob Zombie, taste by Tega. Tega. Die co angular die. God smack whatever. Oh. Renegade head pe. Oh yeah, you were surprised when I played Renegade on my uh, yes. Corn yeah, freak yeah. on a leash, falling away. Got the life, blind, system of a down, chop suey, toxicity, sugar, killing in the name of rage, lit up buck cherry, crazy bitch, buck cherry, man in the box, rise above this seether, tool, sober, <clears throat> five finger death punch, wash it all away, Dan Zig, mother, mother. Tell your children not to walk my way. Anyways. And then the best ever right here. Ooh, what do you got? Monster Magnet Space Lord. I mean, what a name for a song. Keep playing that. That's I want right. to examine it. You oh. digging it? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. All right. There we go. So, there Travis, go. Jared Sheldon had a great question for you. He wants to know, when you make the classic one of these days, what's going to be your intro song going in the way in? Uh, if they let me renegade, because I grew up with the renegade song going to every tournament. It's awesome. But there's some questionable lyrics in there. I mean, I mean they play rap songs every year, and I guarantee you there's a, they just – Probably play the clean version or something. It might not be as entertaining. So Sean goes Lil Wayne or Eminem. Neither of these mainstream rappers. I'm Tom McDonald all the way through and through forever. There's no other rapper out there. If you like rap, which I don't, but if you listen to it, it's Tom McDonald, period. <laughs> Who is Tom McDonald? Come Educated. on, bro. Get, out. Don't get, into it. Don't get, get the hell out of here, Alex. Number one rapper in the country right now. Eric, I'm favorite. sorry. Eric. I'm sorry that people are waking up and you're mad about it. Jeez. I look mad. I'm sorry. It wrecked your day, Eric, that people are actually waking up. Sorry. Travis, don't be a lemming, bro. Don't be the lemming. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't follow the crowd, bro. That would give me reason not to listen to it. Number one rapper in the country, number one quarterback in the nation, number one bass fisherman. Those are the people I don't watch ah. just because. Yeah. Yeah. I run counter, man. <laughs> listen to that noise.
Oh my god. <laughs> I'll listen to Tom McDonald on the way to the ramp tomorrow. See if he brings some better spots uh, for me. Yeah, don't. You, it, it, it'll make you feel like Travis just outbursted. Like the angst it's going to cause you of things you can do nothing about. Go ahead and listen to it, and just consume it, and just rage inside, and then turn the YouTube channels on that he loves to feed and rage inside a little more. It's the outrage society right don't. now. Everybody's oh. outraged because outrage sells, right? That's what Tom oh McDonald God. tells. See, that's, that's what, what you need to tells. stop, Eric. You think everybody sounds sounds jeez? Oh, they are, dude. No question about it. making money off of you and everybody else, bro. Tune in to your local news station. Outrage sells. It's so outrage are these politics. It's outrage. You're a sucker for it, and that's you don't a think fact. the Super Bowl appearance with the weekend wasn't about selling? It. it was about selling propaganda. It was about selling uh, devil worship. It was about I selling drinking it. baby's blood is what it was selling. <laughs> you're lost. Yeah. The weekend? You're, you're those so costumes lost. and bullshit? He was... Geez. I don't even know what you're talking about. You would. I, don't, I honestly don't even know you what you're would. talking about. Of course I wouldn't. What are you saying? What's that word? Wouldn't? <laughs> what are you... What planet are you from, dude? Literally, when you talk like that, I just wonder what planet you're from. I don't even know who you are when you talk like that. It's so crazy to me. But clearly, you watch the Super Bowl, which is weird because you're not a football guy. I don't. And I was, oh, I was you, just, my, you were forced into okay, watching. I went to my buddy Yoji's house Sunday night and they had a Yoji! football. They had they were watching the football game, which I don't watch. And I just so happened to be there having a couple freaking white claws, okay? And the white so claws started your brain doing this. No, and I just saw that I and witnessed. You it to, I, what did you just say? I witnessed the again. diapers on again. people's faces don't, don't during the again. halftime show and was shocked at what's really going on out there. <laughs> what are you talking and about? And it blew my mind. <laughs> again. Dude, you're blowing everybody's mind by talking crazy. Literally, you're talking crazy again. I thought you were over that stuff. You're so All focused right. on crush. You're doing so good in outbursts. Clearly, you have to smack. Yeah, you're, you're you're still addicted. Sorry, you got to work on that, man. Go get deprogrammed somewhere. Check yourself in. It'll help cleanse your brain. <laughs> Go back up to upstate New York. Spend three days out there. It's like a reset. Oh yeah, March fourth passed. Fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Here we go. Uh, your last prediction's over. Now you don't have to repeat yourself, but you were wrong again. And so we'll wait right again until May or some other date that they've concocted, right? So again, this is like the sixth time you made predictions and nothing happened. <sighs> See what's at it. We really need to start recording before and after the show because I remember Travis saying, if, if this March 4th thing doesn't happen, I'm done with it. I'm checking yep. out. Um, yep. Did we, you? We need the proof to hold him to it. Did you we check out? Dude? Did you check out? I'm checking out right now. It looks oh, like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, no, you looks didn't. Like you started. I would never have done any of this rant in the last 10 minutes if you did not. If you're, you so were just easy, you're so easy to trigger, though. You know I'm just pulling your chain. So anyway, listen, man. You promised everybody you'd check out. You promised me directly you'd check out. Have you checked out? You have to Annis, You honestly have to answer the question. You said it was going to call everything you ever thought of into doubt. This is a big moment. It's very stressful in my life right now, Eric. I, okay. that, I, I don't even know what that means. It just means that we Listen, want things to move and happen faster. You mean it's small mouth they crush. are. It's small no, mouth crush. With what we're talking about. Oh, we want to. Like the people that you the, we, you're the like people you're, that are awake you understand what's going on in this country are a little uh, frustrated. No, no Tra Travis, Travis, Travis. Listen. You've been following sources and trusting them. Everything that you've predicted has not happened and been wrong, right? And so you said if it didn't come to fruition, you were done. You made an emphatic statement to me after hours with Alex as my witness. You said you were done and you promised. Now, you can I break remember. your promise and you can change your mind. You have that right. So just hey, By the, the way, question. Charles makes up brings up a good point. I did call a big okay. power dark outage and texas did go dark it wasn't you gotta give anything credit. to do with the ice storm you don't know that 
<laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. You don't think they know how to manipulate the weather, Eric, and cause that ice storm? <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. You're crazy. They can make it snow tomorrow if they wanted to. Mm, look at they you, wanna, man. If they want to sell more shovels on Amazon and, and collect that tax revenue, they'll make it snow. But first, the news is going to say a big snowstorm's coming. Go grab your stuff. Go grab your milk, your bread, your shovels. Never happens. But guess what? We collected a bunch of tax revenue fooling you, telling you it was coming. Don't do not do it. Don't do it. You're melting down again. I asked you a simple question. Okay. You won't give me the answer. So I, apparently, you're all bought in still. So that's fine. Oh, that's, fine. that's fine. You're still all in on it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You've been brainwashed. I feel bad for you. Anyway, it is what it is. No more debates. I'm not going to hold you to anymore because clearly it doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Nothing can change uh, your mind, dude. You're in too deep, listen, bro. You're in too deep. Like, you're in too deep. <laughs> you're in you're too telling deep. me I'm unsavable? Uh, apparently, yeah, I've is, literally uh, had like long conversations just talking about it, trying to be logical about it, giving you counterfacts. Asking you to question your sources, you know, what's their motivation behind what they're feeding you? The one guy you really respected, uh, he goes, If you don't see it with your own eyes, how can you trust it? And I said, Travis, have you seen this with your own eyes? And you're like, No, I haven't. You're making me think about this. Was that all just bullshit? Or was mm -hmm. I convincing you in the moment and then you got sucked back in? I will tell you this I did go up to Lake Ontario uh, this past week and ice fish with my buddy Matt Stasiak. And yeah. on the way, I was listening to a podcast and I kind of have a theory. Uh, this is non bad conspiracy stuff, but this is in relation to uh, in regards to Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Yes. And okay. I feel that these these entities can travel interdimensional. And that's why. They allow people to see them at times, but other times like there's no sign of them. It's because they're able to enter this parallel universe or interdimension and show themselves. And so I'm fully, I fully believe that's the reason why uh, some people can see them. You know, there's hot spots around the country. Uh, I mean, there had, there was some people that, I mean, uh, military people that were out in the mountains of Arizona and have seen this thing on thermal imaging following them. They're, their leader uh, at base camp, wherever they were looking over the field with thermal engineering was like, guys, you have a predator behind you and it's closing in and it's literally 20 yards behind you. And these dudes could not see it. He just wanted their Jack Link's beef jerky. No problem, Dude, bro. <laughs> that thing was interdimensional. The thing's interdimensional. Why can't people understand this? That's why they couldn't see it on thermal. Uh, they could see it on thermal engineering, but not with your own eyes. And so <laughs> hey, when I heard that, from a highly respected leader in the military, I was like, damn, bro. I'm just going to throw my crawl. That's the answer. And listen, if, if Sasquatch mm. wants to visit me one day while I'm fishing interdimensionally, I'll be happy to see him. I'm a little and nervous if, now walking around out there because what happens is when you think about these things, you attract them. And so I'm ooh. looking behind my shoulder constantly when I'm out by myself or I'm oh, on a hike. Honey. Yeah, all that stuff, dude. I'm always thinking. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm attracting these things into my life, you know what I mean? They feel that, that you're thinking about. Them, I though. think about a lot of crankbaits. Is that why they come into my life so that's, crazy? That's it, dude. Okay. No, I, you know, law of attraction. Yeah, I hear you, bro. I've been eating too many power. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do with you anymore, bro. But I mean, that's fascinating. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Interdimensional. So my my new stance on Bigfoot, I used to think they weren't real because we'd see them on trail cameras. Mm -hmm. More off, it's not that they're interdimensional. They they travel be between parallel universes, and that's just what happens. Just like the little elves and things, or the gnomes yeah. that people see from time to time. Or if you really focus on like uh some shrubbery uh and, and start meditating, you'll start seeing these. You're like you don't have to take hiawasa and acid or any of that stuff. To come in contact with these interdimensional beings. It's crazy, dude. Crazy. <laughs> you lost me at stare at the shrubbery and see the little creatures. I, I don't know about yeah. that one, but 
Hey, I'm this a, is this is day. after hours, guys. I want to thank you for hanging out. We're trying to keep you entertained. Just going through some thoughts in my head every once in a while. I like to ramble on and uh, just share with you what I'm thinking from time to time. Eric's computers froze. Kane in the house. That was a great cause that he's supporting. That's all. I mean, it is. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. a great thing. Definitely a great cause to be a part of. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing, I mean, a lot of people, obviously, they're saying, you know, don't eat the power of it, yada, yada, whatever. <laughs> we learned a lot from Scott last week about the after hours, about how you don't yeah. want to be biting off those Senkos. You don't really want to. There's a lot that a lot of people probably don't think about just doing that. Yeah, they that's. Think twice about it. It did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did you travel to another dimension, Eric? Where did you go? <laughs> Big foot. Yeah, you you guys went know. off the rails. Are you serious about what you said, or was that just for the audience to think you're? Uh, pretty serious, Eric. And there he goes into yeah. another dimension. Um, <laughs> no, you did that for the fans, right? I'm going to go on record. I believe Sasquatch Bigfoot can travel interdimensionally. Okay? Got it. No, I'm, ser no, I'm serious. Time, no, you guys really, really be serious with me right now. Explain when I went to New York, Eric, and wound up on Cayuga Lake when I was heading to Ontario with my buddy Kevin. In 15 minutes, we were on Cayuga and lost track of time for two hours. Explain that. <laughs> I want to talk to the guy that was with you with you Kevin. one night yeah no i want to talk to him can we get him on one night yes i, I want to hear just how it happened and i that would be cool not that i don't believe you because i know you're serious when you talk about that that is weird so it's kind of like when you're driving down the highway and then all of a sudden you're just like i don't remember driving for the last 20 minutes it feels <laughs> like it, it feels like that Yes. Right, Travis, you need to talk to Matt from BTL about that because I, I just always stuck in my head. He was like late to the show one day, and it was like the first day he'd ever been late. And you know, he was going through the reasons of why he might have been late. And he goes, This is what I think it is. It was like it's something called like international time dementia, where basically you just lose an hour that you don't even realize. <laughs> Some people think aliens abduct you for an hour. I mean, there's I looked into it because it interested me, and there was a lot of, I mean. There's, you might just lose 20, 30 minutes every once in a while and not realize it. You got to yeah. be careful. Hey, getting back to the uh, – I can't say that I've ever actually <laughs> – Carl, it was um, it Wait, was are we Z bait are we, are, we still, are we still live? Yeah, we are. I thought this was – I thought we were just me, you, and Alex. No, dude. <laughs> People are watching still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, goes, my God. Oh man, you know, epic. your, your boy done watching. flipped out. He definitely did, man. That's why I was actually trying to come at him like really serious. Like, did you just do that to like <laughs> give the fans a laugh, or were you serious? He truly believes everybody. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. No, I know you're not gonna lie, but I will I, say I'm not this saying about I believe you. It. You, you, I, you are actually you're very I, gullible. I you're very gu you're very gullible when it comes to space travel, aliens, interdimensional mm -hmm. things weather events uh conspiracy theories you're gullible like you consume it you <laughs> you you love it man i gotta put some of these comments up this is too funny <laughs> 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 oh, oh man gosh, this, is, this is good ah oh, great show man we covered a lot tonight a lot. from from you know Swim baits with different tails and kicking, you know, to the do nothing drop shot bait to some awesome bucktail fishing. Of course, Ken Duke was on the show, and now we're talking about Bigfoot. I mean, where are you going to get that anywhere else? Never uh -uh. anywhere. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, man. Color commentary is rich tonight. Great stuff. Ooh. I think someday we just we need to sit Ken and Eric down next to each other, just turn the camera on and hit record. And yeah. walk away. I mean, they they might talk for twenty four hours straight. It could it's happen. Just, Probably. It could happen. It, that yeah. would be a good mm -hmm. video right there. Mm -hmm. That would be huge. 
That would be huge, man. Well, I mean, I hope we get to do it in person with him and fish and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he seemed to be interested in the legendary lakes tour, so you know, he would be a I mean, oh for sure. What, what a guy to like bring yeah. into the fold. Oh my gosh, Travis. I mean, you know, so um, yeah. if you're serious about it, it's kind of gaining steam, bro. It's like I can't I can't stop it kind of thing. So hey Jared, uh BTC did mention that we need to get Dave on here. Uh, just Dave and myself. Well, if Eric, Eric's welcomed, but I don't know if he would, uh, if he'd be able to stick around for our talks, but I'd love to talk to Dave about. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean that part? Well, they want us, they want to, Dave's big into some of the same beliefs that I have, especially when it comes to Bigfoot and stuff. Well, I don't know if he thinks they're interdimensional, but that's the only thing that makes sense to me. I didn't say uh, I didn't believe in Bigfoot, but interdimensional threw another whole another layer and level on it. So that would be fun. That? that would be fun to watch you and Dave talk about the interdimensional if you could sell them so, on it. Like, like I where thought you, you kind of had. I thought you had a little bit of belief about the afterlife, Eric, and 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 ghosts and stuff. I thought you had a little belief in that. Did I say I didn't? Well, then that's we're, we're talking about ghosts. Inter, and, that's sort of interdimensional parallel universe stuff. Uh, um. Just like where them leprechauns come from, bro. And it ain't the Lucky Charms leprechaun. These are mean-ass leprechauns, dude. Really? Did I say I believed in leprechauns? I didn't say I believe in leprechauns. But what do you think about that little head through the grass on that little nice guy What book, is dude? that? I, I think it's going to be something you haven't seen. You you only know about those big big football ball heads. But this is a – look at look at the eighth ounce, man. You got to go to Russia to get this. Dude. Russia. <laughs> I swear to God, I bought them from the, the – yeah, man. This little ball head freaking chartreuse one, that's going to be on the Finesse Patreon special. Oh, yeah, it's coming. I got stuff you don't even know about. Ooh. It'll be on your shopping list. I mean, look at the free swing in motion that could provide. Can you imagine? Just like a high float bait flipping around like it's a centipede, but damn. Mm. Thinking crazy stuff. Um, Add that order to the spreadsheet. Yeah, update the spreadsheet. Fire it up, man. What was your February total, dude? For Bates? Tra Travis, where are you, man? You were someplace for else for a moment. Yes. <sighs> okay. February. I'm just going to. All right. I'm just going to add it up. You kind of turned into me. Yeah. It's weird. As I begin to sell my baits, you're buying baits. This is weird, man. It's like a roll. Are you ready? Yeah. 2700 Oh, wow. At that rate, you're spending 25 Gs a year. <laughs> <laughs> but keep yeah, in but, mind. But, but some of uh, that's for guiding, right? Not last month's. I have all my stuff I technically need. For guiding. Uh, yes. And so those derby. auctions. So a lot of this money, guys, uh, those auctions that you guys help support through the years uh, or through the last year, you know, I've done 15, 18, $2,000 in these auctions. So this money that you guys, you know, recycled baits, a lot of these baits that I sold, this is what I'm using my money for are new baits that are coming. So I'm not taking this money on my pocket. I just, I shuffle stuff around to obtain new stuff you know i'm not spending 2700 bucks that just came in yeah mm -hmm. on new baits i'm selling stuff accumulating and then buying that, new dude. stuff I, I, I think you're if you look at the over under you're over i know but we, i don't like to i look at that. i know you but you can tell yourself that story it's okay you're entitled to it it's your mm -hmm. job no this is what you do for a living yeah you're entitled to it you should it's more it's more fodder for the stream. This is the point I was trying to tell you, you know, a year ago when you were like, Oh, I need is a DT6 and a Ned Rig and this then I'm like, fuck you, then the stream's over, dude. And now all of a sudden it's <laughs> like 52 pop baits and techniques, and I'm gonna go buy a bunch of them. Welcome, well, welcome. Hey, finally, so welcome. I, hey, uh, real hey, quick. Hey, hey, you finally woke up. I did. Ryder goes, can you talk <laughs> talk us how you use your spreadsheets? I, I, I am really proud of this spreadsheet. And so I just want to hit real quick. So up on the top, I have my, I have every rod, every spinning rod I own. So St. Croix Legend Extreme, I have the model number. Then I have what reels paired with it. 
Then I have what line should be paired with that. So for instance, I have codes. So this says eight B Y, which means eight pound braid yellow. Okay. And so if I have like a, a spy bait, I'm not going to have yellow line. I'm going to have five pound braid B F B B five pound braid black. Uh, yo Zuri is just 12 yo. And then fluorocarbon would be like 17 F. And so then I know all the different lines that are associated with each rod and reel that I have. And then on, on this, and then I have use. So uh, drop shot use. straight down, Ned, crack in a tube, hair jig, uh, DT6 smaller crankbaits, Series 6, Series 8, jerk baits, pop bar, chatter baits and grass, <clears throat> uh, Carolina rig, flipping light jigs, punch, flipping half ounce, three quarter, open water, big spinner bait. Glide bait, Alabama rig, light Alabama rig, heavy, light Texas rig, light football. So then I have a use for each rod. And then over here, I have what I still need. So I still need a handful of spinning rods to match up with all this uh, spinning reels to match up with my spinning rods. Uh, <laughs> was that funny? I'm sorry, man. It just hit me. I'm sorry. Okay. And then I need... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys the dr krankenstein stickers are on sale if you got tired of hearing that i can't take it anymore but okay, i also we know get, like we get no we get the point okay put that fucking spreadsheet away look if you buy a dr krankenstein sticker i'm i'm giving you a legendary lakes small sticker free. so in this folder is all the spreadsheets <laughs> i keep of everything <laughs> Okay, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is impressive, dude. But damn, did you have to go through every rod and reel combination? My brain was hurt. Travis, what were the highlighted green lines? What did those mean? Oh, uh, so green means that I actually... Uh, Alex, oh, why did you ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're I had them off it. Those are ones that I need uh, reel still for. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Jeez, people oh, are like, what the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I thought people would be impressed with that. I'm proud of it. No, I, yeah, I do something. I mean, I sat around the, I, I do a lot of spreadsheet <laughs> every day. I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> I, How long was I talking about my spreadsheet? It felt like 10 <laughs> seconds. I don't know. I this was in my... another dimension. <laughs> I felt like it was an hour. I looked up and all of a sudden it was one o'clock in the morning. But then I realized it was only 1148. That reminded me of the scenario when Eric had like the most epic exit of all time when <laughs> Oliver and I was on and Travis was like, okay, Eric, we get it. It has a rattle in it. The swim bait shakes back and forth. whoop de doo <laughs> That's exactly what that was. Eric was <laughs> Travis about spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was I was shutting you down like you shut me down, but you didn't make an epic exit like I did. Nope. I fucking dropped I'm that. I'm not mad about it. I love it. Uh, <laughs> oh, we know you love it, dude. We know you love your spreadsheets and your vacuum. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. I'm sorry. How many spinning rods do you need, dude? 22. Uh, let me look. No, don't, don't, don't bring oh. that back out. <laughs> I don't want to hear 26, it. 26, 26, but if you add in the, the two trout rods and the two <laughs> panfish rods, mm -hmm. 31. 31 spinning rods. It's extraordinary. And 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 how many uh how many uh, how many uh electronic screens do you have on your boat? Five. It's getting a little ridiculous at this point. I think that's the max. I don't think you'll see me with six, Eric. Okay. Why not five and an iPad? Well, console? hold on. I did talk to a gentleman by uh, from Geiger Tech uh, from Canada. What's Geiger and, Tech? Uh, so they make uh, like a Geiger counter for for um, no, dude. Radiation they really. This could explain some, a lot. They make some kick-ass mounts. Uh, they have wow. a transom saver. They're from Canada. Uh, some of the best products I've ever seen in the fishing industry when it comes to stuff like that. They make, and I had a conversation with them the other day. It, oh man! So where were we going with this? I don't even know anymore. Man. Yeah, Eric was I'm just, talking I'm about just five screens, here. and then you said that's the max. But hold on, oh, wait. I Geiger Tech. So he's running a live scope at 
the transom as well now for certain situations. Hmm. And so you have to have a screen back there just like the walleye guys do. Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of kind of makes sense. So what right happens when your co anger in the open on the James River dinks a eight ounce sinker right off and cracks know. in half? There's there's oh. a oh. yeah. That'd be the end of okay. uh Ryder wants to know if I spreadsheet my baits. I do. Um I'm not going to bore you guys, but I have a folder here with that. So you said Geiger Tech was out of Canada? I never heard of them before. Yeah, if you guys <clears> want, <throat> I, I really should. Um, if you will allow do me, to just, a, do they sell a Geiger counter? If you allow me to go out to my truck, I'll show you their transom saver, which is amazing. Go for it. All right. We need to put them on that list, the Google Sheet. Heck yeah, man. I'm working with them. Bring yeah. them in, man. Geiger counter. I can't stop thinking about Geiger counter. You know what a Geiger counter is, right? It's one nope. of those things. It's a handheld thing that they bring into uh, 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 check radiation. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a yellow box that, yeah, and it goes, hmm. and it starts to like rattle off and like this little yeah. needle. Mm. Geiger counter. Anyway, so what do you think yeah. about that? Five pieces of electronics. I mean, when you think about your future in bass fishing, do you kind of get depressed going, damn, I'd have to spend 100 Gs on a bass boat to, like, compete at that level? I think, I mean, I certainly think a lot of that. I mean, if you look at a $75,000 boat, probably 30 to 35 of that is going to be in electronics, especially <clears> if you, I mean, Okay. Um, it's a lot of money just in those electronics right there. Yeah. All right. Geiger. Interesting. Geiger Tech Marine makes this is the transom saver that they make for the new Mercury Pro XS four strokes. That's a really solid nice, man. That's a solid it? block of aluminum. That is solid, actually. That's a that's very, a slick piece of equipment. Very you nice. Second one for self-defense. How much was it? <laughs> Uh, they're pricey. How much? But how much? I'm afraid to say. Uh, we'll just say it. Well, I'm like two fifty, maybe. Okay. Yeah, like I said, they're. I mean, but but you you know you take it from boat to boat to boat, right? I mean, why is that better than like the plastic things Yamaha give you? Uh, now that I like. How much is that? That I buy. That comes with it, and and what oh. I don't like about the ones I currently have. And he said yeah. that this isn't going to do it. Uh, when I go out fishing and it's cold in the morning, like 40 degrees or less, I cannot. I break my knuckles trying to pull my plastic out, uh, you know, oh, for yeah. the, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't get them out. And see, he, he says that this won't this won't happen with this, this material. Um, and when it gets hot, sometimes it gets squishy. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're. You know, it's going to tilt that the, the the wheel will turn a little bit. Uh, that won't happen with this, and it's just a solid. They just make beautiful stuff. I mean, they yeah, are pricey, no, it's but yeah. it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Absolutely. So, what's different about that material than the regular steer stuff that you have that makes it less of pain? That I don't know. Extreme? That okay. I really don't know, Alex. Um, that's just what he claims. So we'll we're going to give it a try this year. Uh, Bob Azumi was on the podcast and he's the one that mentioned, uh, Geiger tech to me cause I never heard of them. And he's like, dude, you gotta go check out some of their stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I went on their website and I was like, I was on the phone the next morning with this guy, you know? Yeah. I was like, damn, that's cool, stuff dude. Pretty cool. always nice to find. I mean, would you say it's fair that you've probably learned about more baits and companies in the past three months that you've done this podcast and in the past three years, just from getting to talk to all these different people? Oh yeah. It's That's definitely, cool. uh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the the stuff I'm learning. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing, man. It is. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm purchasing all this stuff, you know, those steel shads from Fonzie. Am I going to throw them up? Man, I'm going to try my best dude. but if it doesn't get in my routine or I'm not jiving with it, it goes on the auction block, you know? Sure. 
Nothing wrong with that. You got to find your style and what works. Absolutely. Well, it's not like you haven't thrown a blade and don't know how to fish with one. I mean, I don't know if he's doing something completely different, but shit, dude. I mean, you know, blade baits work on school and fish too. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can catch them on a blade. I've seen you do it. Yeah. How different can it be for smallmouth? I mean, I know you don't want to like tip the hat early, but Dan, I mean, is it the bait or the technique or both? It's it's what you have. I mean, what you have to go through. It's what you no, have. No, no, in. no, no. I'm talking about the way he throws the steel shad versus the way you and I blade bait fish, and the way I watched you blade. Oh bait yeah, fish. yeah. There's a little That's some different. Saying. There's some difference. Of course, but not that much. It's not like you know you're cranking. You know, it's not like oh my god, you got to well, pick up a big fucking swim bait and learn it all over. I again, know a right? guy that throw that <clears> swims <throat> steel shads back to the boat as well. But how hard that can can that be? It's in the water column somewhere. It's either close to the bottom, off the bottom, mid column. Mm-hmm. You know, burn it on the surface. Like, that's what I'm saying. So you you heard it. It, it. it doesn't sound like a super complex technique, right? No. And if he gave you the rundown of when the application applies, you got your steel shads. You know, you got the right colors. He turned you on to that. And so my know, biggest concern is with with it, all these, uh, you know, I don't have I don't have boxes ready for everything. Yeah. You know, all these like Nico, I'm going to have a bunch of those baits coming in. I don't particularly have thrown in the past, but I want to. So I have to create a whole new system to carry all these new baits around mm-hmm. because I literally have all my, all my bread and butter baits that I use on a regular basis already take up the compartments in the boat. There's already a, a, a box labeled Senkos, brush hogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And so that's my challenge right now is carrying this stuff. And transporting gotcha. it. Uh, mm-hmm. That's my biggest headache. So I'm going to try to use utilize those Bass Mafia bags a little bit. And I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I mean, look at now we need some Michael Simonton swim baits. You know, how how are you going to carry those around? You're going to put them in another bin, another bag, I guess, and just stuff them in the yeah. port rod locker or the starboard rod locker. And hope you're like there's just not enough room because for me mm-hmm. with videoing, you know, one of my compartments. Dude, in my boat, I, I I hear you, man. I mean, where are you gonna for put camera. it? Off? Yeah, I got it. I mean, and I, I know you know I keep a compartment back for guests in my uh, boat as well as guy I, 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 duty. I I dude, I totally travel with you, man. I I know the the amount of gear you bring is unbelievable. I mean, you film, you edit, you run it, you run it, you run a channel. We need I to totally have a better the fact s- that, system. Well, I mean, maybe, you know, you don't have to travel. Well, how do you do it, Eric? Many. I mean, so look, dude, I mean, I'm a co at this point, right? I, I, I you know, I, 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 that's what I do. I sit in the back of people's boats. I mean, you I have a it. nice bag set up with everything's yeah. perfect when you come on yeah. my boat. Yeah. And that's something I would like to redo another video of. We keep talking about your, yeah. your SUV and that, that new <clears> system. I, I think. By spring here, we need to figure out a time where we can yeah. really show people how we how you set that up because you do have an efficient system. But I know at the same time, Eric, I'm when I call you on the phone before a yeah. tournament or before a trip, yeah. you're devoted to like working Getting on ready. trying to figure out yeah. how to do all that where I don't have the time to pick and choose. Like when I went, I'll just take like Joe Raymond when he invites me to go on the Susquehanna. And I go right. on his boat. You know, I have all these ideas, but now I'm throwing Rapalas and, you know, shad wraps and this and this sure. all in this little box. So I'm not bringing everything. And that's what you're doing. Right. I use those slim side Plano's, right? And, yeah. you know, I have things organized. Like I've got a tournament with Scooter on Sunday on Kerr. We're going to jump in because Angler's Choice canceled the first two. So, you know, we might kick around Kerr for a few hours. It, look, it's, it's Scooter's water. He knows what to do. Um, you know, so I've got an idea of what I'm going to be throwing and, um, you know, to complement what he's throwing in the front of the boat. So I've already got boxes set up for bodies of water and for, for different times of the year. I'm not going to be throwing top water, right? I'm not going to be throwing a frog, right? I'm not going to be throwing a lot of non-moving baits because scooter moves the boat, right? I'll have a drop shot rod for sure. I'll have a shaky head rod for sure. Right. Yeah. 
we're, we're going to be throwing moving baits. The boat's going to be moving. So I will be ready to slow down if I have the opportunity. Um, and he sees fit, you know, and we're not finding active fish. And we've done that before. So, mm-hmm. no, I, I know what to bring. So I've already got my rods out. I'm going to change some line. And uh, I've got my tackle system in my truck ready to go. And so I can just load that speed bag. And, you know, on the outside, I only need for a one day tournament, you know, is the bags of plastics are going to be very obvious to me and I'll be ready with them to go, you know, but everything else is going to be moving bait, you know, multiple crankbait rods, a flat side rod, right? A shad wrap rod, you know, speed trap, square bill, DT6, maybe a series five if they're a little bit deeper. Yeah. Rattle trap. Yep. Spinner bait, chatter bait. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, we're going to go find some fish, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Jeremy, to the show. The guy in the blue hat is named Epic Eric, and he certainly knows what he's talking about when it comes to <laughs> tackle collections and everything else, guys. A um, lot of feedback here. People are getting their Nico uh, baits from last week in the mail. They're checking them out. Let me know in the comments here if you guys uh, ordered and what you what you think, what you ordered. Love to hear some feedback here. We're going to shut this mm-hmm. show down pretty soon. Uh, we are getting a little late. Uh, I, I want to apologize for anyone that I may have offended. I hope I didn't uh, when I went on my little rant. Uh, there's some things I'm passionate about. Uh, do I believe in interdimensional? Bigfoot travel? Maybe. You know, I'm open. So just I'm open-minded when it comes to that stuff. It's It fascinates me what's really going on in the universe, things that we can't, you know, explain. Uh, I think that would fascinate anybody. And I, so I'm I, sorry. You, sometimes you, I go off on a little tangent at times. It's always self-induced or it's not self-induced. It's always Eric always makes me get dope. I, I, you know, in the last couple months, Eric, I've been real straight and narrow when it comes to this stuff. Mm-hmm. And the only time I come off track is when you egg me on. Uh, okay. Fair enough. I'll, I'll try not to do that. anymore. <laughs> but I at least wanted to see if you were down for the commitment you made. And you yes. weren't, and that's okay. okay. And I do respect the fact, and I want to acknowledge that you have really been focused on the business, and it shows. And I think the the crowd is proud of you, and I know Alex <laughs> is. And, and yeah. honestly, so am I. You've done a great job. Yeah, I mean, this is a business now. Congratulations! I congratulate on prior streams, and I'll do it again, man. You're heading the right okay, direction. You. <laughs> you should be very no, seriously, you should be very proud of that, man. It takes a lot of work. And you're after yes, it. Stay you. focused, man. Use every available hour to invest have in been. yourself. Been crazy. I know. It's good. It's good, man. Mm. Keep it rolling, bro. Keep it rolling, man. Uh, side note. Let's make a disclaimer. Yeah. Because I'm honest with everybody, right? Yes. So my new boat showed up two weeks ago. <laughs> yep. And I went to Bowers to drop off some some parts for it, right? I had all my stuff. Multiple times. I go up there, drop it off. I saw the boat. I was like, damn, that looks pretty. Doesn't have a black power-coated jack plate. It's silver. I ordered black. Right. Okay? That bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Really really bothers me. Uh, I think we're going to get that fixed, but then I'm like, all right, I'm out. I didn't take the cover off. I didn't look at it. You know, it comes in a white cover. Yeah. Sure. For transporting. Yep. So two days ago, I go there and uh, I'm working on my boat that's up there now, making sure the batteries are charged, all that. And I'm like, it's nice out, dude. It's like 65, sunny, no wind. I'm like, let me go take that cover off. It's a little bit of work getting it off, you know. And I was all by myself in the back 40 there and just. Took the cover. Beautiful, beautiful boat. Silver and blue. Mm. Uh, I've been darker black and blue with my other boats. So this is kind yep. of a new deal. I'm like, God, that is sexy in the sun, dude. It was just gorgeous. So then I'm like, oh, I'll look around the compartments. And, uh, so I look on the floor and I see I ordered the boat uh, with some electronics. Some electronics I bought, you know, after market at other places. But right. I ordered it with two Helix 12-inch units. Well, in the box in the boat are two Hummingbird uh, Solexes. Okay. So there's no Helix. There's just two Solexes. Well, now I freak out because uh, 
you know, I have my bass boat technology mounts that are made for a helix. I have oh, my boy. gimbal mounts that he created for me made for helix. I have my transducer saver and shield made for the transducer of a helix. Jesus. I have all these, uh, you know, your ethernet cables, or I'm sure they're all the same, but there's other Y cables and shit for all the yeah. transducers. And I bought everything months ahead. So I have it ready to go when they're ready to rig on a spreadsheet with directions. Not good. Dude. It was like, it was a three hour ordeal to get all my questions answered and see what the next move was. So first instinct, I go back in there. I go, yo, there's, where's my electronics. I need those helixes so then i start looking online you can't buy helix anywhere gen 4 oh sure and so i call russell marine products i called wacky riggers i called everybody i know and nobody's got them and so uh roy at wacky riggers said dude what's what you so worried about man those solixes are actually better than a helix and i know they are but I thought in the past that Solix has had a little bit more glitches. And so that's why I always went Helix. Sure. And, okay. Keep going. And, and so he said, you're going to love it. He says, you're going to love it. I'm like, okay, great. So I had to call Bass Boat Technologies. Guess what? The Long story short, the mounts work. Gimbals don't. And then the transducer saving shield will work. And then I had to order a couple extra connections, but it, I made it work. So we got through that. But then I go, then there's a folding seat in the back. Well, I don't order folding seats. I order two butt seats. Sure. And I got a big ass chair. That's wrong. <laughs> so there's three things. So I, all I ask. Oh, I hear you, man. I go oh, to my God. dealer. I go, where's that little guy there that sits there when your boat starts to drive away? Like right before they put that cover on, where's that sheet that goes check, check, check. check. Yeah, yeah, check. right. Black yeah, jack plate, yeah, check. Yeah. Oh, it that's seems silver. Pretty, it seems pretty uh, simple, doesn't it? Let's wait before we send that out. Oh, uh, folding chair check. Oh, two Onyx. Uh, those are those aren't Helix. Uh, you know, where's that guy? Nowhere to be found. Been home that day, I guess. I Apparently, you th it's you a simple work process. That your boat. <laughs> checklist. That's crazy. Damn. What the hell? Well, I like the comments. They're saying no glitches on the Solix, better high vis screens. Good. But it was just a headache, something you wouldn't expect to have to deal yeah. with. And I'm glad. Yeah. Listen, what would have happened? They're going to work on my boat Monday. I mean, what if I didn't take that cover off two days ago? Oh. You know what I mean? And just found out <laughs> next week and, and be behind even more. Yeah. So yeah. moral of the story is when that boat comes in, you check it over right away. That is a good lesson right there. True. And if you order a black jack plate and it comes silver, they'll give you a hundred dollar Bass Pro gifts gift card, you know, for your headache. <laughs> that ain't flying with me. I'm sorry. When when TH Marine gets the when you get those uh black powder coated jack plates in in two months from now, you're gonna have it at my dealer. I'm gonna come over there and the dealer's gonna install it because it's it's their problem. You know what I mean? Customer service, right? right? And yeah. Doug from Bowers is great. He, that's probably what's going to happen. He was actually very, uh, he's very good. It wasn't any of his fault. It was just, uh, I mean, that's just ha what happens. All these companies are cutting back. If you guys don't realize, I was talking to George at Susquehanna Fishing Tackle two days ago. Um, if you guys want to buy your reels, rods and reels for this year, or any bait that you can find, now's the time to do it because there's going to be a major shortage yeah. of that stuff. And wow. it's true. We're seeing that already. Yeah. I cannot. Uh, I had to go buy my Vanfords at full price the other day. Damn. Because I found a place that has them. Uh, so I bought 15 of them. Wow. Whoa. You know, because I wasn't going to wait. And I went on eBay today, dude. To look for those old Stratic CI4s. And? Dude, 230, 240, 250, 280. Oh, I'm selling all mine. I knew. I, I didn't know you had any because I would have bought them. Really? I'll buy every 
Stratic CI4 3000 series you have for 240 with the new reels, yeah, or the the new handle, the newer model one, yes. I don't think I have the new handle one. Mm -hmm. I got the old handle. I may or may not have one, but I do have to use it. I'm just saying, just everyone's ahead up. You guys got to get this. You got to get your stuff in. It's crazy. I mean, it makes sense. There's already a lot of stuff I've been looking at. I mean, I mean, it's been out of stock since last year. They haven't been able to just get stuff in. It sucks, but I guess that's part of what we're dealing with nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Man. I mean, I think we had a pretty good stream tonight. We got some Bigfoot talk. We had Ken Duke. Michael was great. You guys got into a good argument. I mean, that's like all the that's ingredients what, that's you need. Everything right you there. need. Yeah. But that's what that. people they, they count on, man. Uh, Absolutely. Alex, the only clip I need from you tomorrow, I time stamped it here, like 25 minutes in. Uh, Ken Duke said something funny or cool or interesting for some reason. I'll find that. We'll try to grab that. 25 minutes in. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I forgot what he said. It was just like, oh, that'd be cool to have a clip. Get people Probably motivated. his email address. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. All right, guys. Eric cashed out. I did. Alex, ready to go to bed? No, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just looking for like a... Uh, See, if I'm it was me for, down in Kentucky, I'd be at, that, I'd be at the local right tavern now. until about 2.30 in the morning, get up at 4, fish my butt off, and do it all over again the next day. <laughs> and I'm twice your age, Brohim. So what's wrong? I got. I can't go to the tavern. I got to cut all these clips all night long. So oh. I'll have to take care of that first. <laughs> <sighs> Woo! Man. Well, that's a wrap. All right, guys. Great stuff. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And as always, until next time, we'll see you on the water. Get your Dr. Crank and Hey. <laughs>